coming up in the middle of the uh, the oval facing towards the grandstand area here we go to have a welcome to country we'll wait for Hey, welcome everybody to the, uh, the, the North as well. for the 2019 Green Final. Um, first game of the day we have the ladies lead tag between the undefeated North Emirates Bears and the uh, Dungown Cowboys. Uh, for the Dungown side, um, actually I'll just let you know, I'm joined here today by Jeff Faint, um, old boy rugby league player, um, Australian representative Oztag player been around, actually coached on Gallon men's side a few years ago, and uh, going to join me for the uh, ladies league tag in the second half of the men's first game. Looking Somebody, forward to it. Good morning. Somebody Thank you for the down, introduction. A bit of a hurry up. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, footy together, haven't we, my friend? Yeah, back, we go way back to 1992. 1992 at, at, the, at the Robins. Uh, West Tamworth Robins, West most certainly. Robins and they uh, changed from there. Just waiting for the Dungown side to come out. They're going to do a, um, a welcome to country. Um, so while that's on, we'll, we'll pay our respects and be, be quiet, and then we'll talk about the uh, the teams. But I'll get Faini to read out the Dungown side as uh, we're waiting for them to come out. Okay, for Dungown, number one, Brianna Trickett. Number two, Ellie New. Number three, Alina Swan. Number four, the centre partner, Paris Max. On the wing, Chloe Shanley, number five. Number six, Emma Carrigan. At number seven, Sarah Taylor. Number eight, Hope Martin. Number nine, Sarah Stackman. Ten, Erica Williams. Eleven, Jamie Blackler. Number twelve, Lisa Jenner. Thirteen, Emma Cummins. And on the bench, we have number 16, Sammy Judd. Number 17, Georgia Holcomb. 18, Libby Welsh. 19, Taylor Holcomb. Number 20, Tian Nordy. And number 23, Jada Taylor. Oh, and they are coached by our old friend Luke Taylor. Good luck to the Dungown girls today. Okay, the Dungown side's just uh, taken the field, so I'll try and get this side through as quick as I can for North Tamworth. Number one is Kimmy Resch. Number two is Alex Rogers. Number three is Holly Bin. Number four is Talia Tabiri. Number five is Lucia LeBrock. Number six is Steph Forward. Number seven is Ange Trickett. Number eight is Kate Ferguson. Number nine is Bronte Harris. Number ten is Steph. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jack Wars today for the New South Wales Grand Final. George Hornman. The group four rugby league. Fourteen is Rachel Schmiedel. We uh, wait for the girls to say to each other. Uh, number fifteen, Sophie Hardcastle. Number seventeen is Katie Tuttle. Like to to number eighteen, Carissa Lyons Kane. Number twenty is Jess Brown. What's in your body? Co-coached by James. Will before a James Cooper, a welcome to country. Thank you so much for being we'll here. We're here for four great games of rugby league and congratulations to the under-16s from stats for the day Junior Rugby. So got a bit of an idea of great game earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, Watson to your butt. I'd just like to welcome everyone here today on the land of the Gomorrah Teagle. So I'd just like to start with saying Yama, which means hello and welcome. So Yama, Yamande, Gomorrah, Wulabaga, Yani, Bulangala, Yulambu, Murray, Maru, Miley, Nale, Dave. It means hello and welcome. We're on Gumroy country. We must pay respect to the traditional owners, both past and present, that have kept this land. Thank you, and good luck today, guys. Go on, well, I'll just send out a cheer out to Kelly Rogers. Thank you for watching. Kelly good luck, Rose Lambs. Enjoy the that's, day. Uh, Rachel Schmiedel. That's um, my daughter-in-law. Uh, her mother is couldn't get up for the grand final. Two teams so today. The North Tamworth Bears, number, number one, 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 Kimberly Rich. Number two, Alex Rogers. Three, Holly Bing. Three, Holly Holly Bing. Bing. Number four, Talia Tiri. Number five, Lisa LeBrock. Six, Steph Wilson. Seven, Andrew Trickett. Number eight, Dave Ferguson. Number nine, Bronte Harris. Number ten, Steph Halpin. Number eleven, Yann Taylor. Number twelve, Alina Swan. Number thirteen, Sarah Taylor. Number fourteen, Ellie New. Number fifteen, Sarah Taylor. Number sixteen, Ellie Williams. Number seventeen, Jamie Blackler. Number eighteen, Sarah Taylor. Number nineteen, Sarah Taylor. Number twenty, Sarah Taylor. Number twenty-one, Sarah Taylor. Number twenty-two, Sarah Taylor. Number twenty-three, Sarah Taylor. Number twenty-four, Sarah Taylor. Number five, Chloe Shanley. Number six, Emma Carrigan. Seven, Sarah Taylor. Number eight, Hope Martin. Nine, Sarah Number Seven, Sarah Taylor. Number eight, Hope Martin. Number eight, Hope Martin. Number eight, Hope Martin. Number eight, Hope Martin. Nine, Sarah Stackman. Ten, Erica Williams. Eleven, Jamie Blackler. Number twelve, Lisa Jenner. Number thirteen, Emma Cummins. Number sixteen, Sammy Judd. Seventeen, Georgia Holcomb. Eighteen, Libby Welsh. Nineteen, Taylor Holcomb. And number twenty-three, Jada Taylor. Please, today, B. Barry. 
sideline. Uh, Jess Hall from Pudi, uh, 17 points from 15 games. Good game, ladies. Toby Devine, 16 points from 18 games. So, um, good good stuff there for Kimmy and quite a few of those girls out here today. Uh, about to kick off. North Tamworth is elected to kick off. Kimmy Rush has the ball and away we go. Welcome to 2019 Grand Final at North Tamworth Oval. Paris Knox is the first one to have a run. Tag by no, so, uh, Voted the first one. Good swiveling hips. Uh, Tag by Steph. No, again. <laughs> missed it again. Uh, Toby Martin at dummy half. Up Emma Carrigan, little dummy inside. Ellie Mills dropped the ball. It'll be a turnover here. Uh, referee today is Brodie Cummings. Um, and I think the uh, Bruce Falloon and Brady Sylvester. Let me just double check that. Yeah, so the two touch judges. North Tamworth on the attack here now. Good start. The first couple of rucks by Dungeon unfortunately dropped the ball on the third tackle. So North Tamworth pressing the line here deep into Dungowan's third of the field. Alicia LeBrock turns the ball back inside to Alicia. That's a step out and he goes out to um, Bronte Harris. And on to looks like Alex Rogers. And that's Tian Bayless tagged on the wing. Uh, we've got the ball to Bronte Harris out to Alicia LeBrock. Probably won't find too many girls pass the ball better than Alicia LeBrock. That'll be a penalty for contact. A bit of contact there, there Michael. Oh, 50-50. 50-50. <laughs> yes, it's yeah, hard to tell from here, but uh, referee letting them know how it's going to be ref today. So look, Young Brady's a good young referee. He was harsh on the contact last week, so they, they know that, the girls. At least they know what they're up for. They, and they know what they're in for. There was an opportunity just missed in a by uh, North Tamworth, the link. Uh, Bronnie Harris at, uh, Harris at first receiver. She goes back down the blind side. Probably, uh, Alex Rogers there at number two. Alicia LeBrock and Steph Halpin from, uh, again with the ball. We go to Talia Kabiri, I imagine. Yes. And then we'll get out to Kimmy Rest, the highest point scorer and try scorer for 2019. Um, bit of a natural touch in the field. I think she scored 37 tries. Quite um, remarkable, isn't it, Michael? Yes, she's Jess, going to have to be watching her all game. Jess Brown there with Jess, uh, Jess Everett now. She's the winners. Uh, fifth and last. Rest it for a kick for herself. Well picked up. She's going to get to now, Taylor. Jada Taylor, sorry, gets out from in goal. Uh, not a bit of a poor chase there, not a real good kick chase, but uh, tackle one, tag one, I should say. Dungown looking to get out of the their red zone here after making an early mistake in the game, so just rucking it out. We'll just run through the ruck there, which I won't, won't want to do too often. Want to get the quick play of the balls here, here. We're going to go kick early. The option's good of kicking early, but they're probably hoping for a little bit better kick. But that's come up nicely for Paris Knox. Good chase by Kimmy Rush. Good cover so tag there, Kim Rush. And good, good chase. Yeah, Sorry, Michael. That's probably just a prime example of you know, putting that little bit of hurt in Because it wasn't a great kick, but Paris had a good kick. Good and we, we would kick. say the wind would favour Dan Gowan in this first half. Full charge it's down there. It's going to be six to go. Yes, he's got six to go. Thought she might have actually been offside, but uh, the touch judge Braden Sylvester was in good position. That's going to be a contact again on Steph Halpin. Doesn't mind a bit of contact. Steph Halpin, some people may or may not know, a, a very big touch football back there. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Player. Um, finally got her to convert across to Jada Taylor. Um, Jada Taylor made a debut last week. Because he's already got time. Ooh, out. ref's called someone out already here, Michael. I'd, I'd like to hear what's going to be said. This will be about the contact, same as last week. He, uh, he warned them. And the next one went into the bin submission. We'll see what happens here. It uh, looks like Jada Taylor's up for the contest. She, you know, she's having a bit to say. She's having a bit to say. A big addition to the uh, Dungown team. I'd say the team will take a lot of confidence her coming into the team, into the. Uh, she, she made her debut last week against Gunnar and scored three tries. So this is into, it was her first run. At, uh, oh, that could have went the other way then. Um, it, it was interesting to see how she made the transition from Oz tag to League tag because they are a slightly different game. And we've got Hope Martin, that was Ellie, I'm uh, sorry, Alana Swan getting tackled 10 metres from the try line. Emma Carrigan takes it to the line, kicks for herself. Not sure what was going on there. Not going out to Probably kicked a bit early there, Michael. They had uh, North Tamworth under a bit of pressure and it was only on the third. Here we go, North rucking out, out off their line. Dungown are getting up quick off their line. You can hear them all talking in defence, really putting the pressure on. We have three tags already. Steph Halpin takes a good drive down through the middle. Talia Kabiri at dummy half out to Jess Everett. She turns it back, or dummy back inside. North Tim would like to come inside. Only made about 20 metres on that set of six. So, uh, Kimmy Rush has got a decent boot. Nice kick. Jada Taylor catches on the full, on the 40. Comes back at pace. Swiveling hips for four minutes, four and a half minutes into the game without a score yet. 
Uh, very exciting here. Dungowns had all the pressure in the last two or three minutes inside the North Timber line. Emma Carrigan looking for runners, but they're not there. Hope Marnet dummy half. Alana Swan takes another fast right. They probably need to get those balls down a little bit quicker. It's um, probably yeah, losing running through the hands. tags early. Ooh, Ooh, forward from here, yes. Michael. Yes, and they pick right it up. In line with it. <laughs> well, certainly a good start there by Dungowan. Uh, after sustaining the pressure of the first couple of minutes, they've come back and really had North Hamath under the pump. So we've got North Hamath with a roll ball here on their 22 metre line. And they take the first ruck out through Jesse Everett. Pushing forward here, nice yards there by North Tamworth. Tag two, they made it to their 40 metre line already. We're in a good tight ton contest at the moment. Jeffrey, defence has probably been the key here. There hasn't been a great deal of ball movement. North Tamworth are known for the ball movement and turning it sort of back inside. Millie Wollaston now dummy half out to Steph Halpin. It uh, goes at pace at the line, gets through. Good tag by Alana Swan. Um, Fifth and last and on about 45 from her own try line. Leisha will put this down into the corner. That's tough. Touched, Michael. They're onside. Uh, oh, missed Pitch opportunity. Yeah, Pat, yeah, Could have been interesting foot break between her and Jada. Both well, we've got this little break in play. I want to thank Amps Rural and the Blanche family for the allow, you know, for the, the sponsorship for today's games and uh, for the use of their box. So it's, uh, they sponsored today's broadcast. Thank you, Scotty and Terry and the Blanche family and Amps Rural. And we do appreciate all our sponsors because without them this game wouldn't happen. Uh, good game so far, Michael. What do you think? Yeah, look, you can see the you know, the quality of both sides in the, in the rep players are standing up. Paris Knox is heavily involved. Emma Carrigan's heavily involved. Alana Swan, heavily involved for Dungown. And you come over to the North Tenmore side at the moment. You know, Steph Halpin you know, has had a mountain of work. You know, Kimmy Rash has done some good things already. Running six and a half minutes in and all have had you know, some good input. Uh, Sarah Taylor, Luke's uh, lovely wife, kicks the ball down. Kimmy Rash gets it on the 30 metres from her own line, takes it back. Um, want to send out a congratulations to Kimmy Rash and Jake McManus too. Found out during the week that they're going to have a little bub, so another oh, young really? bear coming along. What a week for those two. Yeah, Cleaned up at the awards, not I heard. Remember Mill, it's going to be called Bradley. Bradley McManus, another one. <laughs> Jess Brown at Dummy Half, Jess Everett at Dummy Half, Steph Halpin turns out, then this is Alicia LeBrock, she goes oh, through. She's through. Here's a first try scoring opportunity, turns inside to Halpin, great play. Halpin's oh. going to go through and score on the post. Jada will not be happy with herself, she was in position. She was in a great Jade. position to yeah. make that, and yes, she will be. Uh, it's, was it actually Jada, or there's someone on the ground yeah, there, Michael, no, was, I can't was, pick I think it, it out. Jada, you can see Jada just hovering to the background there, yeah. she, she won't be happy with that miss. She read the play, uh, and for, yeah. well, yeah. fortunately, unfortunately, it depends which side you're on. She got in position to make the tag, but just couldn't make it. Yeah, and it a nice little play, sorry. Nice little play from Beautiful. Alicia yeah, Alicia yeah. drifted across field, dropped someone under, and, um, yeah, Dungown will be disappointed because in tag, if you're in the position to make the tag, you want to be getting them, and you um, sometimes yeah. they just slip through your fingers, but uh, first try of the day. First try to Steph Halbin. She was part of the group four uh, league tag side this year and the Greater Melbourne league tag side, part of the successful group four side that's um, won the championship this year and got the Jane Wormsley Cup, wow. so which is good. And Ex look, it's a good transition for Jess, uh, for, for Steph, sorry. She's played a lot, a lot of tag, and this is the first year to come back to, you know, well, first year at league tag, so she's taken it on well. Okay, Kim Resch, looks like she's just popped that goal over from straight in front, so we've got a lead here early on to North Tamworth, and the Bears have made an early change. Talia Tiberi's come off, and... Number eight, Kate Ferguson has taken the field. And, uh, with just Kimmy Resch, um, I know you probably hear her name a few times a day. Uh, this season she was the highest point scorer of the with 65 points, I think it is, with 59 goals and 37 tries. So, uh, very, very talented young lady. And like I said, she's played out of the top five players this year. She's played three or four less games, so that sort of probably... Really so emphasises how good Yeah, 37 tries in 13 matches. Uh, you think... It should be on the cards to get another try today, so the de um, defence are going to have to watch. It's still not the record. The record is 45. And season. who would that be, no, Michael? I'm not going to say. No, nah, we'll keep that. Well, it's not a secret, but I'll sound like a big a proud, dad. A proud dad. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're back into the action here. Alicia LeBrock here seems to be taking control of the game a little bit. Good tag by Emma Carrigan. And um, Bronnie Harris on the inside. Steph Halpin again. I like how Steph he goes up the line at pace. Good, uh, good switch here, Michael. Good they have numbers. It's a pet play, they, they like to catch out on, on the... On Good little play there between the sisters too. A nice little wrap from the two LeBrock girls. 
Ferguson, Kate Ferguson married to uh, uh, under apologies. 18's coach Sean Ferguson. Yes. Ex North Tamworth player. Ex North Tamworth legend. Legend. A good kick here from Kimi Russell. Oh, it's going to be hard under the wind. This and she's missed be, it. Is this going to be another try? No, nah, good clean up good. by Paris Knox there. Paris is having a bit of a, a, bit of a She's on. She's on. Go, but she's, she's certainly putting herself in the game. That's twice now. She's shown just a little bit of effort. Yep, um, she's in for a big game. But it'll that be, it'll what be interesting to see how this affects Jada. She wouldn't be used to. Well, she's played rugby. Yes. And, um, yeah, she would have been getting used to these kicks, but uh, it's very windy out there, and I think that was that was Jada kicking that to Leisha Good Lebron. drop out. It's gone 40 metres. That's not a bad kick for a little girl. That's excellent kick. 16 year old to, uh, to get the ball 40 metres on a drop out is quite impressive. Now we go to Bronte Harris, first receiver. Looks to go back inside. North Timmers love going back in behind the A defender and behind the markers. Make sure they make a lot of ground. That'll be a turnover. Ooh, turnover got a drop ball back. there. It's, um, the referees have been pretty harsh on that this year, so it's a fair call. It's a consistent call. But uh, Alana Swan at dummy half. That's where he played the ball. Jada Taylor comes in, has a scoop. Gets away from the first marker. We have contact. Which way is this one going to go? Ooh! Again, it's those 50. But that's the worst thing with contact. It's not always... A Good tap boy. Oh, the Kimmy Bears. Was Kimmy was nearly in. Lucky there was a couple of Dungown girls ready and waiting. But a couple had switched off. Got another change here for the Bears. Steph Forward coming on by the look of it. Yeah, Steph Forward replacing Millie Wollaston. Uh, Millie Wollaston and Scott Blanche got themselves engaged only a couple of weeks ago. Wow. So we got lots of celebrations in the Bear Town. It's all happening in Bear Town, isn't it? Yeah. Eh? Okay, back, back to the footy. Kimmy Rash is a dummy half. She goes to the short side to, Lucia, uh, to Kate Ferguson. Dummy go and a half load. Oh, nice, nice hands. That was uh, good for Beautiful hands by forward. Kim. Kim Rash there, a little tip onto the winger. They are, they're very good at those little short plays and, and interrupt um, those passes between each other. Yeah. Uh, bringing the defender up. Nice little offload from Kate um, to Kimmy and then Kimmy draw a pass on the wing. Yeah. You know, and the, well executed. The Dungowan really had no chance there. They had to num they had to come in, they had the oval up on them, but uh, really good play by the Bears. Just stripped them of numbers down that little short blind side and now we've got um, Kim Resh is gonna have to have a difficult kick from the sideline to convert the try. Well, yeah, we're just ticking over 12 minutes into the first half. Uh, North Tamworth side uh, are very good at making you pay for your errors. That's two errors that the Dungowan girls have made, and now we've uh, you know, had two tries scored, you know, scored on them. So you, know, you, you can't afford to miss tags or, and give up opportunities without a miss tag and a drop ball. Paney's just informed me for the last five minutes he's had his mic off and he was trying to be secret. That was about. one. I'll dob him in pretty quickly. One of some of my best work too that you all missed. <laughs> Apologies for that. Uh, and what I was saying was that Kim Resch has a difficult kick from the sideline here. She's got the wind coming across her. She's on the left-hand side of the field. Pretty good kick, eh? Let's see if she can convert here. She did it pretty well. No, just cross the face of the goal. So the score will remain at North Tamworth 10, Dungowan nil. Yeah, just going to tick into the 13 minutes into the game. So, been a good game so far. Uh, Dungowan in the first early stage, his early kick. Um, had some pressure but didn't turn into points. Uh, the North Tamworth have had two opportunities and um, turned both of them into points. Rachel Schmid or Rachel Cullen um, has just come onto the field. I'm not sure who she replaced. Uh, Hopey Martin kicks off again. A, a not a bad kick. Lands on the on the 20. Uh, Alex Rogers, uh, Holly Bin, sorry, picks the ball up. Comes back and gets tagged on the 20 by Georgia Holcomb. Leashes the dummy half. Her turn. Steph Halpin again looks to go inside. Makes some good yards. A good easy 10 yards. Holding the ball out in front. Little knock on the dummy half. Throughout the play the ball. Now, Dungown, 30 metres out, they've got to turn over, they've got to go to the 10 metres. It'll be, uh, they've got to make this count. We've got Ali, Alana, Swan at dummy half. We go off to Ellie New. Ellie New's got a, a, an athletics background, so it'll be good to see her in a bit of open paddock. Good tag by Kate Ferguson. Hope Martin at dummy half. Jada Taylor's getting herself in the game. Can't argue with Jada's involvement. And been, to get involved. been very high so far. I'd like to see yeah. her get a little bit wider. She's just in around that ruck, but they, they seem to be picking her off at this stage of the game. 
I'd like no, to see her with a bit more room. I totally agree, mate. I think she needs to get a bit wider and work one-on-one -on -one with people. She'll yes. beat nine out of ten people one-on-one. -on -one. Good tag by Jess Everett at dummy half. It's the last hope, man, at dummy half. She'll kick herself. Is it a knock-on? Is it a kick? It's a knock-on there by North Tamworth. Another good chance here for Dungowan. I think that's uh, Alex Rogers, is it? Yeah, Alex Rogers knocked on, so it'll go out to the ten. So Dungowan's got a... You know, <laughs> I won't say the game rides on this set, but it's an important set for them. We're about 10 minutes from half time. This will be the third or fourth time they've been down. This will be a repeat set in the, on the North Timberth line, so they need to come up with something. Maybe not a try, but at least another repeat set and keep the pressure on. The ball goes out to Emma Carey against the dummies inside. Goes out to Paris Knox. Paris gets outside. Good tag. Great tag. Kate Sullivan, good tag on the wing. She did good not to, to leave her winger then. That was a good ball. Paris knocks the dummy off. A couple of dummies, but made no ground. And we've got Ellie Nuke, M. Carrigan, Georgia Holcomb, Hopi Martin. The ball's just doing a lot of moving and, and losing ground. Jada Taylor's got it now. She's come back to make to go forward. She's gone backwards to go forward. Good tag by Rachel Schmid. Another Collin. good tag. It was a great tag. Last, fifth and last. We come out to Hopi Martin. Nice little kick. Steph oh, good take. Is there. Good defence by the North Tembo side. And you can see why they're the undefeated minor premiers and in, la in, in you know, leading this game at the moment. Um, again, some people may or may not know that uh, last season North Timor went through undefeated until grand final day and lost the grand final to Katingu. We just had another change. Jess Everett, Jess Brown has come off the field and Kimmy Rash has gone back on, so only a short rest for Kimmy. Uh, North Timor are loving that inside ball. Yeah, they seem to be turning it back to the blind side here and, and finding a fair bit of space, so uh, Dungiana have got to be aware of that and just number off a little bit better. Fifth and last here. Uh, North's going to be kicking from their 40 metre line into the wind. We'll see what sort of purchase she gets on this kick. Oh, they've decided to run it. Now Kim puts in a little kick. Chases are coming through. It's bouncing awkwardly. North Tamworth have got it. Got a change over there on the 40 metre line. Halfway. It's, uh, that's not a bad defensive set for them. Yeah. North Tamworth only made about 15, 20 metres. It was. Poor kick from Kimmy under a lot of pressure. Good chase by Alex Rodgers. Got the ball back, but Jada Taylor defended it. Now there's going to be another penalty for throwing the tag away. Yeah. Now, Michael, what are the results of the earlier games between these two teams this year? Uh, the very well, first, the first one of the year, I think, was 44 to 4. So it's an all out there at Dungown. Uh, I think it was a similar scoreline at here, but it was um, pretty even at half time. And then a major semi final was 10 6 at half time. I saw that game. Oh, sorry, 10 4 at half time. The North Tamworth ran away with it in the second half, 30 to, to 10 or something like that. So, look, you know, the, the scoreline suggests that they've been easy victories, but they haven't been. They've been tight. Like this one, this is still tight. It's only 10 0. And, you know, we're under eight minutes from half time. Gunnada, Gunnada, Dungown have had a lot of pressure down here that they've got to try and turn something into it. That's going to run dead, I'd imagine. Ooh. Um, probably, you know, Sarah, Again. Sarah Taylor. Uh, Luke won't be happy. Coach won't be happy. No, Coach okay, won't be happy. You know, she might have been better off either putting it really high and making a contest or keeping it low on the ground and, again, making a bit of a contest is with it, it on the ground. Is this a tactic Dungown now have kicked? kicked early twice in the game. I think they should uh, keep the ball in hand and try and put a bit more pressure on. Yeah, so North Timberth come up with a seven tackle set. Kimmy Rash takes the first play. Well, it's the second play, but it'll be the first tag. Um, good driving run. Steph Help and then comes in and takes it again at, line, at pace at the line. That's Ooh, contact, contact again. again. Which way is it going to go against no, the Cowboys? Go against the Cowboys. They close the gap. That'll be that signal. Oh, no. We just got a contact. But, um, I'd like to know what his conversation with the, the players down here earlier were, uh, or when there's going to be another warning come. There's been a bit of contact in the game when it shouldn't be, but there is. And Bronnie Harris scoots down the short side, good eyes up football. And she's uh, put Steph, Holt, uh, sorry, Steph forward away through half a little back, uh, bit of gap. Nice tag by Hopi Martin. We come back to Steph Halpin in absolutely everything at the moment. A nice little play there again by Leisha LeBrock. Steph Halpin, Rachel Cullen, Schmiedel is going to score. Is she? Yes, no. Good little run, good little interchanging of passes between Steph, Kimmy and Leisha. Dungowan made a nice desperate tag on the line there. North Hamlet's pressuring here. And we've got a forward pass. So we've got a change over Dungowan. I've got to work it out from their 20 metre line. They're going to have to have a really good set here and get to their kick. Uh, they've been under a bit of pressure at late. Coming up towards half time. Yeah, roughly six minutes to half time. Uh, North Timber, what they're doing at the moment is getting the players to you know, the defending side to stand flat footed. That's why they're turning the ball back on and watching those defenders and two lines what to do. Um, good game of Oz tag at the well, lead tag, sorry, at the moment. Uh, Dungown Dung coming off their line. Good run. 
by Chloe Shanley, I think that might be. Um, well, Jeff and Shanley and Kylie Taylor. I think it's Shanley now. Um, very good cricketer, young Jeffrey. Is that right? Yes. Worked at the Leeds Club, played for West. Um, good wicket keeper he was, and not a bad batter. We've got North Hamworth back on the attack here. Dungown made another mistake, kicking him out of their end. So, Dungown have got to really aim up here and try and keep North out. If North score here just before half time, it's going to be very deflating. We've got another penalty in the game here. Referee's got time out. He's going to call the captains out. I'd say this would be about contact here. What do you think, Michael? Well, I think down here earlier where he called out um, Jess Brown, Jess Everett, there was a, a warning about the contact. This will be a similar thing. So you'll find that either side, next contact. Will be in, in the bin, bin you think? Yeah. Well, that's wow. What happened, that's what happened last week down at Dwarris Creek. With, you, you don't um, want to be leaving your team short no, not on the grand final day, day, do you? And that's what hurt North Hemworth last year. They had two players in the bin at the back end and, you know, Cutie come home and won. So will we'll the Bears make this a... Uh, a third try and convert another Dungown error into points. Lisa LeBrock at dummy arse, she goes herself. Uh, what a was tag. It no. She had been called back. Back to the play of the ball. Well, she must have got tag. Oh, I had one tag on. Steph Halpin skips out, gets away from the first marker, swivels the hips, goes through. No, she was tagged by... When gets, uh, Hope Martin. Hope Martin or Taylor Holcomb, one of them. Alex Rogers at dummy half, out to Steph forward, along to Lisa LeBrock, long ball to Kimmy Rest. Stubbs and Stutters, Ali good tackle by no, tag by Ellie New. Come to Rachel Cullen Schmiedel, goes herself. Good tag by I think uh, Ellie New again, and it's the fifth and last. Not many meters made on that set. Rachel Cullen, sorry. Um, Sophie Hardcastle at dummy half, kicked by St uh, Alicia LeBrock. Not played out. The last, he didn't, uh, wasn't touched, wasn't played out. That's a play out. That'll oh. be six to go. It's six to go. Now we got a uh, we got a penalty. A touch judges call. Bit of contact, someone held back there trying to get the ball there, Michael. Uh, so I think he's got inside the 10 touch. Oh, has he? Yes. Okay. Uh, Bruce Falloon's made that call on the far side. Good call, Brucey. Now we've got Brianna Triggett's going to take the tap. No and kick for touch there. Don't want to make four minutes till half any mistakes. Let's see how they go bringing the ball out here. They've gone a bit wide early, which is good to see. Oh, she's through. She's broken through. Dungown's broken through. Kim Rest chasing. And tag. Great run, both girls. Good run from uh, Chloe Shanley. Opportunity well done, Chloe. well done, Gown. Need to turn this into points. Ellie New takes a hit up. Swivels, good tag by Rachel Schmiedel. We've got Hope Martin at um, dummy half. Goes out to Emma Carrigan. Sammy Judd there in support. Dummies inside to Sarah Taylor. But the no runners. Well runners weren't pushing up. Good tag by Alicia LeBrock. Taylor Holcomb has a run from dummy half. Missed by Alicia LeBrock. One of her few missed tags. That's the fifth and last. Again, they need to make something of this, get it in and get a repeat set. Ten metres out, little kick. That's played That's out. played it, I'd say. He's, uh, he's called yes, it he's called it. Six again. He goes Paris. Paris knocks She's through. Again. Good tag by Alicia LeBlock at the last line of defence. We're about five metres out from the North Timberth line. Taylor Holcomb at dummy half. Chloe Shanley comes in for another run. Tagged by Steph Forward. Still five metres out. Hobie Martin at dummy half. Ball comes out to Taylor Holcomb. On to Sarah Taylor. Inside ball again. Good tag, Steffi Halpin. Eight metres out. Dungan, I've got to try and get points here. If not, a repeat set. We've still got time. We've got time in this half. Lined out deep to the right. Going for a block play. Oh, oh. Emma's going herself. Little drops on the foot. Has she scored? I think he's... Oh, he's going to say very up close. Up Over the line there. Nice little grubber there by yeah. Emma Carrigan. Nice little play by Emma Carrigan. Yeah, she, she threw the double. I think it was a set play. They had you know, four or five players off the ball, and I think she was waiting for a sweeper to come through. She was. She, great, but she didn't come there quick enough. Well, and she had options there, Michael, which is the defence held off her. That allowed her to, to probe forward a bit, put a little kick in, and just missed out grounding the ball. Nice drop kick. And, um, Hope Martin, great the, take. The good thing from that, they got a repeat set, um, and now they're back on the. Absolutely. They're, they're 28 metres out. Sarah Taylor, dummy half, off to Paris Knox. Uh, for me, Paris has probably been the best on the, on the field for Dungown at this stage. Most certainly. Involved in everything. Doing the one percenters, as most players would understand that is. He's doing the little things right. Good tag by Sophie Hardcastle. Hope Martin at dummy half out there. Emma Carrigan turns back. Dummies inside. Goes herself. Swivels. Again, the lack of support. The outside runner's not pushing him either. Uh, that'll be something that Luke might address at half time is the support play. He's not quite there. Sarah Taylor. Oh, that'll be a penalty again. And maybe, no, no bin. 
They're going to keep closing that gap all day mm, on Jada. They're really on to Jada, aren't they? The oh, absolutely. She's the danger. They're, they're, that's the one that they've got to hold out. And they've really been on to her today. Short. Eight metres oh, out. there she goes. Straight she's through. Straight through. Oh, we just spoke about Miss her being a danger girl, and she's under, gone through. Under the post. And it was, um, it was just a missed tag. Um, well, again, it wasn't anything fantastic, but... Yeah. She put herself in the moment. Well, what she does, Mog, she goes at the line with pace. And and when she goes at pace, just that one miss and she's gone. So hard to tag an elite athlete and a good try to bring down Dungown back into the game here. Well, it, it looks, I've, on, on the unofficial clock, I will say, unofficial clock, we've got about 30 seconds to half wow. time. So How timely Coach was that? Taylor, Coach Luki Taylor will be very, very happy with that, that on the stroke of half time, they get on the board. It should be 10-6. Um, on the flip side, James Cooper and Jake McManus probably be overly happy with conceding a point right on half time. Yeah, well, North Tamworth have defended Jada very well, but uh, just a man of possession. I think she had a little bit of a rest on the sideline before coming on, and she got been heavily involved again. But she's probably their number one strike weapon, although they have got a, a, a good sprinkling of uh, rep players throughout their team. Half time sirens gone in the background. We've got Emma Carrigan lining up to take the kick in front. It uh, hasn't been a bad half of league tag. Um, both sides have had their opportunities. It was nice to see that Dungown actually turn pressure into points. Uh, I think that was their third repeat set, penalty and, and dropout. Yes. But they actually turned it into points. So 10-6 at half time, probably right a bad result for them. Um, more time with the and Hay on two of the yes. occasions in that Makes a half time score. Uh, we could say game on, but. Yeah, well, no, no, certainly the second half. Strong reminder about the We'll have the win in the second half. Yes. Yes. And that's probably one big point that North Cameron has made. Even though there's a lot of um, tension today with Grand Bowl, any language should be something Grandma would like to hear. So let's have a great day. Enjoy the finals, but particularly now if you're in the It's probably one of the advantages North Cameron has. Also, reminded Jack Wilson Oval is a non smoking venue. Yes. And, JB yes. Kick, Steph and, and they can kick long. Uh, Sarah on, on the flip side, Sarah, um, Sarah Taylor and Emma Carrigan are pretty much short kickers. And yep. Paris Knox is, a, is a, an exceptional short kicker. But they don't have a long kicker out of trouble. So this half might be a tough one into the wind. Um, just before we have a little break, um, if, you're, if you're Luke Taylor, what are you saying about the team at half well, I'm saying, girls, you're right in this. I'm saying you just got to limit your mistakes coming out of your end, stick to what you're doing, and it's grand final day, and anything can happen. North Hamlet are undefeated so far. They're here by four points. Just interestingly, Michael here, we just look at body language. We've got all the North Tamworth having a seat, just relax, listen to their coaches, what they've got to deliver. However, we've got the Dungown girls in a huddle arm to arm. They look pretty pumped. It's, it's very contrasting. It is very contrasting. Demeanor, isn't it? Yes. It's, uh, both sides look reasonably relaxed. You know, Luke, Luke will be very happy with that result, but he will be reminding his girls what a, you know, that in the major semi it was 10-4 at half time. Yep, good and point. And ran away with it. So, But what we'll do, we'll give you a little bit of a rest from us and um, enjoy the second half when it comes up. Thanks everybody.
Okay, we're about to get the second half underway. Dungown will be kicking off. Um, wouldn't mind it being a fly on the wall. I suppose you wouldn't be on the wall in the halftime huddle, would you? Interesting yeah. halftime huddles there, yeah. Michael. And they were very contrast. He's, oh, that's a harsh pen. Well, I shouldn't Ooh. say harsh because we can't see from the box, but it's it's not a good penalty. That's to start a terrible, the terrible half. start to the second half, yeah, especially after you finish on such a strong as a coach, note. You'd be so filthy, like you just got yourself back in the game at 10-6, and you give a, a penalty away at the kick. So Dungown, what are they offside? Was offside the call? off the kick off. So yep. now they're giving the ball back on the 50 rather than on the, so the 20 yep. or the 30. Ronnie Harris takes the first hit up off the tough. Steph Halpin is at Dungeon half. Alicia LeBrock turns back inside. Their pet play comes to Steph Halpin. They got contact. It's going to go oh, against go the Bears. Oh, again, that could have gone either way. It's, it's a 50-50 again. Um, interesting. Interesting. I, I won't say he's wrong because that's the referee's discretion the referee's on the contact. Always right. But, um, I didn't think it was contact in the first place, but that's not me refereeing. Hubby Martin takes a penalty. Bronte, her good friend Bronte Harris tags her. We got uh, Alana Swan at dummy half. Steph, uh, Steph, I'm oh, sorry. Sarah Taylor turns back inside to Georgia Holcomb. Taylor. J Holcomb. Uh, Jada ta uh, Taylor, sorry. Taylor. Jada Taylor at dummy half. Nice little play there by. Ooh, good hole run there, Alina. Inside defender. Hope out to Emma Carrigan. and she's been their main ball, main ball player. Paris gets one on one with Talia to be. Good tag, Talia. Talia. Made, made. Oh, he's, he's called it's gone. The ball gone, gone out. So if Ellie knew how to uh, held on to that, was uh, you'd probably call that another chance gone because he stripped him of numbers. Yes, and, and we know that outside. Ellie's got that pace, so uh, would have been interesting. Now Bronnie Harris takes a set up. We've got Alex Rogers, I think, at dummy half. And he goes back to Jess Brown, dummy to Taylor, Talia to Beery. Talia's at dummy half. Now to Bronte Harris. Again at pace at the line with the ball out in front. Makes the defenders think about what's going on. Leisha LeBrock comes in at dummy half. Comes to Steph Halpin. Goes back in behind nice the Nice switch. First play. Jess Brown. And again and again. Set move Another there. Another nice little set plays where they go back at the lazy defenders. Talia to Beery plays the ball. Oh, penalty. another penalty in possession. Not, I think uh, not being square. On a bee, yes. We've got three penalties in the first couple of minutes. <laughs> Referees <laughs> certainly want to do uh, set the authority yes. again. Uh, that one's a fair one. That would have to go with that. She wasn't. Uh, she was sideline to sideline. Jada Taylor takes another hit up. Good tag by Bronte Harris. Hopey Martin at dummy half. Out to Emma Carrigan. We'll go back to Alana Swan. Good tag by Georgia Horneman. Now we've got uh, Emma Carrigan at dummy half. Sarah Taylor out the back to Georgia Holcomb. Taylor Holcomb, I should say. Good tag by Millie Woolow. Hopey Martin goes to dummy half. The ball goes to Sarah Taylor. She's going to kick. That's a better kick into the wind. That's going to land in no man's land. Oh, they've let it bounce. Good chase from Paris Knox. She's uh, certainly put herself in the game. Paris oh, chased it. every kick. She's had cleaned a big up game, one. Paris. She, uh, for me, she's been Dungown's best. Uh, Ellie New has another little run. It's a fifth and last. On their line to They bears. need to turn this into points or ball back. Decided no, to run it. So they've got numbers there. If Hot Taylor Holcomb had to kept running it. Play on. Ooh. That's going to be a knock got on. So what do we got here? Knock on North Temer. Knock all the on. North I think if Taylor Holcomb had a look to her left yeah, and kept the ball did. going. She just couldn't get it there, I don't think. She just kind of put a bit of pressure on the outside shoulder. It's, um, it's only early into the, the first, uh, the second half, but this could be a, 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 a match defining set if North Temer can hold this out. Uh, it sets up for the back end of the game, but. Uh, at the moment, Dungown, they've, they've got to turn into points or in, into more pressure. Jada Taylor, good tag nice by tag. Kimi Resch. Uh, a lot of inside runners. Hobie Martin at dummy half. Sarah Taylor will be the first receiver. Now it's going to Alana Swan. She goes out to Taylor Holcomb. She's been tagged by Millie Williston. I think that's the third tag. And we've got Alana Swan at dummy half. Hobie Martin at first receiver. Kicks Another early herself. kick. That's going to run oh, dead. Gives up seven. Yeah. I still yeah. think they should be trying to get through a couple more tags. I think yeah. that's tag three again. Well, tag three that or four. Tag, it was early in the tackle count. Well, Maybe three. they're trying to catch them by surprise. Might be a that's tactic um, from Coach Taylor. It's a, a good defensive set by North Tenworth. Um, that was, I think, their second repeat set by Dungown, so to hold them yep. out. Yeah, good defence. Um, there's plenty of girls having, having a decent dig. Paris Knox um, for the Dungown side has been in everything, being the, the one percenter. Emma Carrigan. I think Emma's been strong, and uh, she looks very fit, Michael. I believe she's done some work with the uh, Tingle first grade coach Jeff Sharp. Oh, okay, well she's yeah, it's showing. Is. She's um, got she's her into some good shape there. And then on the, when you look at the North Temo side, oh, you've nice got, run, um, nice hard Alicia run. Alicia LeBrock and Kate Ferguson working well together. Kimmy Resch does what Kimmy Resch does. 
Steady helping's been very good. They another switch. They do this Ooh, well. That's a they had another un uncharacteristic error by Steph Helping. She won't be happy with that. So, but uh, they love turning the ball back inside. They've had some good One of their strengths, isn't it, Michael? Yeah. Found, look, they've been rewarded quite well with it. But uh, the ball now goes out to Chloe Shanley. Oh, I thought that might have been another mm. contact. That lucky Bronte Harris at marker. Hope Martin at first uh, dummy half. Jada Taylor takes it up the first off the ruck. Good tag. Oh, that's a harsh call. Here we go. The big captains have been called out again. This More will contact. Be a send in here. You think so? Yes. Early in the second half. Yes. Let's see if he backs there it up. There was a warning earlier. There was a warning earlier. I'll be surprised. He's calling both captains out. That might, that might save this might be the first warning in the second this, half. This might be. This might be a, an official warning oh. to both sides. JB's remonstrating. He's, watching, he's, he's laying down the law to them. He's told them how it's going to be. Closing the gap. Closing the gap. All right. Dungowan on the attack. 40 so metres out. Jada Taylor will take the tap. But, uh, the girls will be a little bit uh, edgy now with the, the, the warning. Good little short side raid. Brianna Trickett, uh, good tag by, I think, Alex Rogers. No, Holly Binge, sorry. It was a good tag by Holly Binge. Uh, Brianna Trickett to play the ball. Hope Martin, that dummy half, goes to Sarah Taylor. Again, Dungown find themselves in a good position to be attacking. They've got to turn this pressure into points at some stage, you'd think. Hope Martin at dummy half goes out to Chloe Shanley, Emma Carrigan. A little play here, a little short ball. Alana Swan didn't quite hit that right hole. No. You see the little gap they were yep. trying to create, and we she just can. didn't quite find it. Hopey Martin goes around the short side, turns back inside, and a carry. Oh, touched. Six uh, to go. Was, um, she was touched, tagged by her sister, Jess Everett. Oh, there goes Paris, Paris Knox. Oh, very close there. That? Nice tag by Talia Tabiri. Talia Tabiri, well done, Talia. to get on the ground and Going get back to blind. Going back to blind, Paris, again by Talia. Very good tag. Talia's played a lot of Australian Oz tag representative. Yeah, talented Very player. good tagger. Very good tagger. It comes from a great family of sports people. Uh, Sarah Taylor had no option there but to take the run. George uh, Horneman makes a tag. Alana Swan at dummy half. Emma Carrigan comes around to the long side. Long oh, ball. Good hands. Anna Trickett. This is one on one here. Oh, good tag. Nice tag on the line. I think that was uh, Holly Binge again. We've got to be getting into the tackle count near Taylor Holcomb takes a run. Tag by Millie Williston. That's got to be tackle four, I'd imagine. Jada goes a short side herself. And I think she's going to have scored that try. What have we got here? A try. Jada Taylor scores down the short side. Oh. Scores are locked up. Well, Michael, we have got a game There's on our hands. Again. Not sure what there's going to be time out for now. Um, he's, he's called time What's he out. doing here? He's calling the captains out again, or is it just the Bears captains? Just the Bears girls. Two co-captains. Jada's. Oh, here we go. This is interesting. We've got someone in the bin. Is that Leisha? Yeah, Leisha. And I dare say it was for the contact on Jada. Once she scored the try. Uh, okay. Maybe... Uh, Maybe a bit harsh. I is don't know. I'm not, I'm not prepared to make a call. We can, couldn't see it from here, but oh, this yeah. is going to leave North under a bit of pressure for the next 10 minutes. Personally, I didn't see much wrong with it, but I'm not the referee. Yeah. You know, Was it, it for looked, contact or descent? It's hard to say, mate. It's hard to we say. Can't, I know we he, he called both captains out and had a chat to them not long ago. Yeah. So you'd have to think that it was something to do with that. Um, we've got Luke Taylor yelling at his girls from the sideline, pretty pumped, keeping them on a roll. So we're now locked up at uh, 10 points all. Uh, we missed the start of the game, Hope, so we're, we're Hope probably... Martin here, kick, trying to convert from out wide. Nice nudge. Across the face. Across the face. Bad luck. We're, we're about five minutes into the second half, but we could be a bit behind time, so please don't take that as we set time. So Jada, Taylor and Luke Taylor in, in a deep conversation, let's say, on the sideline. Yeah, line. deep conversation with the coach. I don't know if that's the right Is way to put it, deep, but... Is she what, injured or just having a rest? No, look, I think after that try, the, the contact, he limped off a little bit. So she's limping a little bit there. Yeah. It's, um, but she's, you know, she scored two of their tries and kept them in the game. It's now 10 all. 10 all game on here. Game on. Um, Kim rest to kick off, win behind her. She should get this deep. Without leisure on the paddock, you, you'd expect that Kimmy will step up. Um, Steffi Halpern will step up. JB will step up. Jess Brown, I should say, will step up. Uh, it'll be an interesting 10 minutes without um, Leisha there inspirational leader on the field. Ellie New gets tagged from dummy half. Hope Martin out to Emma Carrigan. On to Paris Knox. 
It's tagged by Steffi Halpin. No dummy half. That'll be Ooh, a tag. Easy tag. For Steph Halpin. Uh, out to Emma Carrigan. First receiver on to uh, Georgia Holcomb. And that is tagged by Tarlo Tabiri, I think. Emma Carrigan gets a deep kick in. Not a bad kick into the wind. Kimmy takes on the full, though, on, on her own footy. So North Timmerth will be in a good position. To, oh, she's chipped early. And she's got it. Oh, oh she's yeah. dropped. She it's just a, got a fingertip to it and dropped it. Chip and chase chance there. Would have been yeah, through. It's, it's an interesting play. On, on it was. It was an all or nothing play. All or nothing play. Hey, um, she is a leading try scorer, so we can't Kimmy, doubt Kimmy her. can come up with those plays, but only drama is like they've got the ball now on the 50 and puts her own team under yep. a little bit of pressure. But player down. Will Dungown change their tactics with the player down for the Bears? Let's uh, see what happens. Are they going to spin it or are they just going to keep probing away here? It'll be interesting to see if they try to spread it wide or just, you know, they, the for me, they just need to keep doing what they're doing. Oh, they here's another early kick from Paris Snob. We talked about it at half time. You know, the, the little short kick she does for herself. Comes up with the, some good yardage again. North Timber under all kinds of pressure in the second half. That'll be called a knockback. Georgia Holcomb on to Jamie Black there. Tagged by Talia to period. It's on the fifth and last. Emma needs to get this in goal and get a repeat set. Nice little kick that'll roll. That'll sit good nicely. Kick. That won't run dead. Steph Halpin's got to play at it. A good oh, tag, nice tag by Brianna Triggett. North Timmouth on their try line. That comes out to Holly Binge. That's a contact penalty there. On That's uh, a Taylor much Holden. much needed penalty for the Bears. Yeah. They've been under the pump. I guess if I'm James Player Cooper, if I'm James Cooper, I'm asking why that's not a sin bin when the other one was. What's the difference? Mm. But I'm not James Cooper. You're not. <laughs> I see that Rachel Schmiedel, Rachel Cullum, is moving to the sideline. She's um, not sure who she's going to be interchanging with. We've got a couple of uh, Dungown players ready to take the field too. So. Oh, that's Ooh. another penalty. Got more contact here. Lost ball. Ref's call play on. Oh, I got. Uh, okay. Shall Good we, run, Chloe. Chloe. Across Straight across the field. field straightens up. Good tag by Kate Ferguson. They're in the middle of the field. They've got two options. All the players are on the right hand side. The ball goes to Sarah Taylor. She's going to come back inside to Alana Swan. No, she's not. She had a set there for an open paddock. Hope you mind at dummy half. North Timmouth again under pressure. I'd like to have a kick. Oh. 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 That'll be a knock on by Dungown. Chance, a very, very it's tough a, chance missed by yeah. Dungown. Went along the ground. Kim Resch kicked it, went into the hands of Dungown player. It was it was going to be a hard a take. Fortunate for Dung, um, North Tamworth and unfortunate for Dungown. There. It was. But, um, North Tamworth have barely been out of their half this 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 half. I think what they'd be looking to do is... Good run, Bronte. Make some yards a, there. Get to a kick and kick it deep and stay down. They have to. That's what they have to do. Both, both teams have got to play territory. Strong win behind the Bears. Let's see if they use it this set. At what stage do you think, I know this will sound funny because we've still got something like 15-odd you know, minutes, uh, let one of them look at a few. Oh, there's a great kick here. Look at this, Michael. It's going to be pinned right it's down a, the corner. It's 40, 20. It's a good chase. It's going to go in the in goal. It's going to pull up. It is going to sit up. Lovely. Oh, what a kick. And now great chase. Who was that chasing there? I think it was. The North Tamworth winger. Rogers. Yeah, great chase, He's Alex. He's sure pinned him in goal. That could be a very important play that, in the context that, of this game. That is a massive play because that kick was from 30 metres out. Well, we said were they going to use the wind, and they, they, did. they did. 30. It was a 30. It was Kimmy kicked that from a 30, I think. And um, four, I think five Dungowan chasing and only one North Tamworth. Yeah. To come up with that play. Beautiful. To have the ball pull up half a metre from the dead ball line is just uh, outstanding. Great skill. Dungown look under the pump here. A few girls got their hands on their they're hips, sucking tired, in the big they? ones. They do. Let's see how they go here defending. It's relatively short. It's only 20 metres, so North Tamworth. It'll be interesting. They've still got uh, a fair bit of time without JB. No, sorry, without Leisha LeBrock. But they've got enough class and skill on that paddock there with Steph Halp and Katie Ferguson. Oh, oh. I think she missed an opportunity there. Holly Binge was unmarked. Did. Steph had a pass. Good Holly. run. Could Just couldn't get the ball to her. That's not a knock on. Okay, we've got a sloppy over. play of the ball sloppy. there. He's got an incorrect play of the ball. A little bit harsh, maybe. I don't know. But um, the pressure's been taking off. But the good thing is they're down here and they've got the wind at their backs, North Tamworth. So it's going to be hard for Dungown to get out and get a good kick in. And see if the Bears get off their line here and really pressure Dungown. No marker there. That's not good enough. There's easy yards there for the Cowgirls. Good tag by Holly Binge. 
North Tenmo 25 metres out on tag number two. Sarah Tyler gets the ball, turns Chloe Shanley on side, then goes to Alana Swan, tackle three. Hope Martin at dummy half goes to Ellie New. Good quote run, good tag by Rachel Schmiedel. It'll be tag four on the 30 metre line. Kicking early into the wind. It's not a bad kick. We've got Might Jamie find Blatter, touch. big chase. That's not a bad hit. North Tenworth won't be too disappointed with that. It gives them another player in the bin. Give them a little rest. Yeah, absolutely. Off the clock, so yep. For them, you know, if I'm Luke, I'm telling my girls to kick the ball and play as much as I can. But uh, I think she was just trying to actually get it down the other end. She was. Tian Bayless ba has just taken the field for Norse on this right wing. She's got quite a bit of pace. We've had a bit to do with her in the rep Oz tag. So look for her to get in the clear. And we've got uh, tag two on Blondie Harris. Steph helping at dummy half. Rachel Schmiedel has a hit up. Uh, good tag by Hopi Martin. Steph helping at dummy half. She'll go back to short side to Kimmy Resch. Nice. Again, at line at pace. And a little half a gap. Good tag by Emma Carrigan. Kimmy Resch at dummy half. Blondie Harris will be at first receiver. Goes back in behind the marks, in behind the ruck. Good yards again, another 10 feet. Is that five tackles already? That was awful. It quick. was going quick, hasn't it? Let's see um, what they do here last play. Rest, so she put it high and hope for the best. Field goal. Oh, she's gone for the field goal. Didn't it. connect. You did call it. Called it. We're one of them gonna get Went along the Paris. ground. Good pick up by Paris. And she's made a great run. She's Look at this. It. She's back to where she's, she's they've kicked it. Back to where Kimmy kicked it. Was it a bad option for Kimmy? She just didn't strike it. In a, in a game this tight, take what you can when you're a man down. So we're about 14 minutes through the second and a half. Jada Taylor takes the second tag. Game poised here at 10 all. It'd be funny if the first grand final goes to Golden Point. It would be. It Wouldn't that be exciting? Time. We will get paid overtime, Michael. <laughs> That'll be contact. No, he's let that go. He's got to be lenient on the contact lately after the sin binning. Interesting. Good yards here, cowgirls. Oh, yeah, Chloe missed the first good tag. tag. Good well, tag. It's the last one. We've got to get a good kick in here. Into the wind, it's going to be tough. So you've got a block play that gives her a bit of time and a nice contact, but straight into Kimmy Resch's hands. She dummies the open, goes back to blind, takes the tag. Dummy half run here by the Bears. Nice run, can't see who that is. Number 17. Uh, Katie Sutherland. Katie Sutherland, nice run. Two. Back in behind the ruck. Alex Rogers, that place, that'll be contact on Dungout. No, Ooh. he's going on North Tamworth. I don't know what that was for. I thought for sure that was contact on Dungout. But he's the man in the middle. That's what he's called. This will be uh, tag number one. This will be penalty to Doug Down. We've got Steph Halpin tag and Emma Carrigan tag one. Hobie Martin goes to Ellie New. Good tag by uh, Steph Halpin again. Hobie Martin at dummy half. Emma Carrigan. Short little ball to Alana Swan. Good tag, Georgia tag. Hor um, Horniman. Hobie Martin a dummy half. It'll go to the left side to Paris Knox. She'll turn Emma Cummings under. Goes out to Jada Taylor. Good tag by whoever that was. It looks like Norse are playing without a marker while they're one down. Long ball. Brianna Trickett. Tag. We get, uh, this will go to Jada. And I guess she'll kick for herself. No thought of a field goal. There we go. Oh, great pick up. Kimi Look Resch. at that footwork from Kimmy Resch. Could have been, would have been caught in, in goal if she uh, was tagged. Tag two by Hobie Tag Martin and Rachel Schmiedel. We've got Georgia Horneman. Pressure on the Bears here, here deep. Comes Steph Halpin, Sophie Hardcastle. That'll be a contact penalty. No, nope. arms wrapping around, no penalty. Interesting. Okay, here goes be Georgia Horneman. Good run. Oh, she, she lost that? Has she lost that? Ref's ruled she's lost it. Okay, do they set up for the field goal, Michael? We've got still about 12 minutes to go. Or do they push for the try? Oh, uh, look, my, for me, North Tenworth are down. I'd be going for the try. Um, I know Kimmy went for the field goal earlier, but they're the ones that are down. They play it. Um, if they don't score, they need to, to get try and get a repeat set. They've got an extra man, but not not panic. Hopi Martin to Alana Swan. Goes past Alana, goes to Jada Taylor. Good tag by Rachel Schmiedel. Hopi Martin at dummy half. It'll go to Alana Swan. Good tag again by Rachel. That's tag number three. Jada Taylor will go to dummy half. Out to Alana Swan. Sorry, goes past Lana to M. Carrigan. That'll be a turnover. It'll be North Tenmouth ball. Kimmy Resch, is it? Yes. That wasn't a great set by the Cowgirls there. They had all the chances there, and they just... Got a little bit lost. They did. I don't know what now happened. Look, oh. Oh, well now we've got another North Tenmouth uh, again. Bronte Harris, I think. Don't quote me on anything. Bronte Harris, um, a forward pass. Forward pass. To winger. Okay, so chance back with the Cowgirls. About 20 metres out. On the attack. Ellie New takes a run from dummy half. 
And then you've got uh, Emma Carrigan at dummy half off the Hope Martin, first receiver. Oh, she's kicked on the She's first. kicked on, on the second tag herself. That's all right. She's Luke, got him pinned down the, there. The coach Taylor is not and happy she's, here on the side. She's made line. up for that with a nice tag, diving tag from dummy she'll from be Marker. She's there. Good run by Alicia LeBrock's back on the pad. Oh, she split him. It's she's got a player on her outside. Oh, great tag. Taylor Holcomb in cover. Believe this will be 10 in the bin. No. We've got contact got on contact the cover. Contact and still not 10 in the bin for Dungown. I wonder what the formal warning was up earlier. Good footy all round. Nice break Leisha by the Bears. Comes, Leisha LeBrock comes straight back on and the she, paddock and makes a break. And certainly made up to her teammates, didn't she? That, uh, now we've got Georgia Horneman going back through the middle of the ruck. Good yards, good tag by Hopi Martin. Leisha LeBrock at dummy half. Off to Rachel Schmoodle, first receiver. Has a good hit up. There'll be a penalty fair for a short scrap. Okay, penalty. here we go again. The ref's called timeout. He's going to call out. This is this going to be, be a sin bin? Is this going to be a square I'll have, up? I'll have a $2 scratch if this is a sin bin. Okay, let's see. We've got number 13 being called out for the Cowgirls, Emma Cummins. If I'm, if, do you take the two or do you go? I'd take the two. I'd take the two. Here we are. You're right, Michael. Oh, you're scratchy. Ten in the bin for the Cowgirls. So this, this might Emma Cummins. The thinking now, do we go for the, the try or do we go for the goal? I'd still go no, for well, the they've called the goal, so yeah, we're both I'd, in agreement there. I'd still go for the goal. Now get yourself in front. Back your defence. No, what are we about? Twenty-two out. Harsh with these, these sin binnies, but he's been consistent. He has it. been consistent. Um, my only gripe with, with young Brady is a good young referee, but the only gripe that I've had with him, you know, this half, there was a, it seemed to be a formal warning earlier for the contact, and there's been a fair bit of it before both the sin bin. So, but yeah, you know, maybe he gave him a bit of a chance. You know, at his grand final, have though, been consistent. we don't want to see. Been, Huh? It's, People it's missing out. It, it is it, exactly. It, it, we're you not know, in the tackle game yet. We're in leg tag. But, um, you know, he um, didn't warn him, and, and he's followed through with his his warnings. Um, I have roughly eight minutes to go, maybe nine, but that's unofficially because we missed the, the start. But um, Kimmy will still. Uh, it's a good result. He said, choose down the, the time. She's and missed it. Unfortunate there for the Bears. It's a tough 20, kick in this wind. Meter drop out to, I think Dungowan thought they were getting a... They did too. They thought they were getting a tap, but it's a drop out. See, so that's why I say it's, not a, it's still not a bad result. They get the ball back anyway. Yep. Yeah. But, um, it was pretty much in front of um, being, you know, kicking something like 60 goals for the season. You'd think that would be like Shell and Peace for young Kimmy. Yeah, but... As I said, Michael, there's a, a bit of wind, wind blustering around out here today, so and grand final day, tough. Fifty nine goals for the season. Oh, we've still got time. Well there's still you know, probably eight right minutes, up. seven minutes to go in the game, so it'll be interesting um, how this game finishes up. There's still a chance that it's gonna finish up ten all at full time, but I don't think so. One of them will score, Jeffrey. It's just a matter of who And here's a chance for the Bears coming down the short Good side. Good yards by Steffi Halpin. All right, we've got the Bears on the attack. Pass or first off the ruck. JB on the step forward at dummy half. Taking it forward there. Nice run. Had a chance to offload there. Talia Tabiri. Pushing to the left. 30 metres out. Cut calls from the coast to left on to Kim Resch. Passes it off and there's a try by the Bears. That could be it, Michael. Nice ball movement. I can't see who that scorer was. Who was it? Uh, Georgia Horneman. And the... Dungown yeah. Cowgirls are dejected, but great try by the Bears. Le Leisha LeBrock has come back on the on the field with a point to prove. She has, certainly has. We, we were in perfect position to watch that try unfold, and yes. it was up here. It was just re really, really well executed. Don't know if it was a set play put together by James Cooper, because I don't think he's that intelligent. <laughs> 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 but watching here from the box, mate, that was just really, really well executed. And it was. A great, well put together And try. what, what great skill. Way. Kimmy Resch. Could have overplayed a hand, but she didn't. She did everything right. Great no skills by the girls. And uh, the, certainly the passing has been on point today, even in these conditions. But, yeah, really balls out in front. Girls running onto it. Had the overlap. Score in the corner. Tough kick. Can uh, can Kim put this one over? Well, I think she will now, now that they've scored. I think I won't say there was pressure on that one in front, but there was. To yes. A point. You know, like now that they've got that try, they're up by four. They'll back their defence. So this kick, there is no pressure. Just watching Jamie Blackley come from the field. Mm, she like doesn't I look thought well. 
she's um, sucking in the big ones. I don't know if she's in a little bit of pain or she not. She does look so she's limping look a bit. I know she has had some... She's going to be replaced some... by Georgia Holcomb. Jamie, I've had a little bit to do with her with uh, Oztag as well. A tremendous amount of pace and unfortunately hasn't seen any open space today. Another another one from the Little Athletics okay. upcomings. Yes. Um, used to be very, very fast. Haven't seen her run for a while. Yeah, she's still fast. At one stage she's beat you, Michael, easily. <laughs> It depends how far it was over. It was like two or three metres. I might, nah. <laughs> you might fall Until over. Kimmy Rash's line is up. She comes in, strikes it nicely. Doesn't sound good. Nope. And it's uh, waved it's away. Right now, on the unofficial clock that we've got here, Jeffrey, I've got five minutes right, remaining. Right, so we're in around the... We're two minutes 43 till full time. North okay, there we go, people. We were well out. We've got two minutes 33 to go. Two minutes 33. So two minutes 30. Um, did Dungowan go long or shorty off the kick off Hope Martin set it up they're going long well not really long it's midfield from North Timber they'll just make sure that I get through the sets very limited passes Kimi Resch experience runs an extra 15 yes. minutes after the tag that's where you want to Can't run through the tag for it. Nope. Um, intelligent play, and if I'm North Timberth, I'm just getting my sets completed. Ooh, got some yeah, contact I think, here. Uh, that's contact, but I think Leisha brought that quite well. I think she's she might have milked it a bit. You think more <laughs> experience there from the yes, senior players? One hundred percent. But you get away with it. You get away with it. That's tag one. Tag two. North. You can just see the North have changed their demeanour here. They're just going yeah. to get through the set. This is their experience. I'll guarantee the ball goes in the touch at the end of the set. This will be tag number three. Steph Halpin. Now Jade is trying to milk a penalty, and she's got and it. She's got it. He's right. Uh, Here's the last chance. There's going to be some gamemanship here. This will be. Uh, this will test Brody's experience. Bit over a minute um, to go. They've got a one full bit of, set. A little bit of gamemanship from both sides. Then uh, Alicia got one. Jada got one. Yeah. Here we go. Tag one. Here we go. Chloe Shanley. It's a big set for Good North run. North. They've got to defend this set to pretty much win the game. I'd imagine that's tag two. Hope Martin goes the dummy half. We're getting close to the end. Emma Carrigan, at first receiver, goes to Taylor Holcomb. Tag three. Two tackles to go, and I have roughly one minute to go. Won't be the last set for North Tamworth. They should die with the ball, depending what happens here. That's tackle four. Uh, ball goes to Emma Carrigan, then on to Hopi Martin. Then draw and pass to Taylor Holcomb. Tag five and last. You've got to get the ball to Taylor. She's out wide. Two, three it's passes it. wide left. They're going to kick. Oh, and they're going to get Holcomb. a result. Bad luck there. Oh, little kick knocked here. on. We have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. The clock. Ref Huda could go any minute. The, the Bears. Ask, couldn't have asked for a better start of the day than a 4 Oh, what a great final. day. The, look at, have a look at the, the North Town of Bears bench there. They're just beside themselves. Wanting them to hold it. Oh, we've got go. contact it's here. Got no, he's going to call play on. He's let that go. Come in the blind side. Tag two, we've got 15 seconds on the other North holding field. on grimly. Paris Knox pushing the line, just going herself. Ooh. Ooh. Seen her go well, through those gaps well, before. I feel for James Cooper and the guys, it, two years in a row. Here's Jada, short pass. Oh my goodness, go my there. goodness. They've squared it up, they've squared it up. Can you believe this? With well, under 30 kick, seconds to the go, to the win. Cowgirls have squared it up. There's and the there goes the siren. So we have got extra time. If she misses the kick, if she misses the kick, which is it? Let's point out, she, it's a tough one. It's going to be into the wind, virtually one meter in from the sideline. Who was that score there, Michael? It was a good little short pass from uh, Brianna uh, Trickett. Brianna Trick, good little short pass there from Jada Taylor, I believe. And we've got Hope Martin. Oh, good luck, Hope. You've got a a difficult, difficult kick here. Grand finals do funny things to people. Uh, it's a different it's day. Two years in a row, North Tamworth have been undefeated all year. Two years in a row, grand final day, they've stumbled. They have. Um, they haven't lost this one yet. No. They haven't won this one yet. Um, Dungown, it's, at the moment, it's 14 all. Dungown have the kick to come. If Hope can get this over, it is over. If it's not, it goes to five minutes each way of extra time. Golden point. And then the golden point. Okay. To right extra on. time first. So the fitness of these girls is going to be tested. Oh, okay. What a great game of league tag. Well, what a way to start a grand final. What a, what a grand final I have. 14 all. Here comes Hope. She's lined up. We'll, uh, we'll talk it's you through this the best kick. we can. A tough kick. Who'd want to be Hope Martin right now? Is to win it. It's silent around the ground. 
Nice Ooh, looks like just a bit uh, short bad luck. Direction was fine. So now we go to... Well, lots of scores up at the uh, end of regulation time. Girls are now toss a coin. Five minutes each way. Well, if you paid $10 to come in and watch, I just got your money's way. worth here. Still locked up after that. We got to go. Most no, certainly have. We'll give Who's the pressure on here, Michael? Oh, for me, North Tamworth. Um, they went through this last year where they were undefeated and lost the grand final. They've been undefeated and absolutely dominated everybody this year. Yep. And now they're at 14 all going into to extra time. Um, you, you would have thought when they scored that last try that would have been enough to win. But um, again, Well, you know, just proves it's, it's never over till it's over. A little, couple of little errors at the back end. They, they failed to get out of their half um, and the pressure's been on them. But I suspect that um, you know, Lisa LeBlock will, will stand up in this 10 minutes. Well, she she certainly did when she came back on the field there earlier after a stint in the sin bin. Um, have to commend both teams. Oh, Fantastic well, lead tag. For, for me, the, you know, we've got Lisa LeBrock. And That's why we've got a break. Uh, Steph Hopper and Kenny Rush. For them, uh, for North Tamworth, and you come across the other day outside. There's Paris Knox, Emma Carrigan, and Jada Curry. Jada uh, yep. scored two and set up one. Plenty of experience on both teams. That's where they're going to be going. Okay, so I wonder what the tactics are. Uh, now again, we see the Dungowan Cowgirls arm in arm in a huddle. Coach Taylor laying down the law, telling them they can do it. You see the North Tamworth girls there bringing it in closer. They've got to erase the memories of that, that upset loss last year. They're going to give it everything they've got. So the uh, ground announcer just clarifying then five minutes each way before we go to Golden Point yes that's if it's a draw um, been a massive effort from Dungown um, the only games they've lost all year have been to North Timworth um, so again we've got the two best sides and you can see by the display of Ozta League Tag sorry again they've been displayed here but <laughs> can't play favourites when you're in the commentary box but I feel for North Timworth yeah, yes. Last year, lose the grand well, point. don't feel for him yet because this year, now they've won a they could right, still get the glory. So don't feel for him yet. It's, um, right, this will. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited too, and I hope <laughs> everyone here watching is. And, I, hope, and I hope we're not boring you too much with our commentary. We're doing our best. We're a couple of nuff nuffs that are having a bit of a crack. <laughs> Most certainly nuff nuffs. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Dungy and I are going to have the wind in the first half. Yeah, Let's hope it's not a. A mistake by anyone that now, costs them the game. You know, what do you do? What do you do? You, if you win the toss, do you receive or do you kick? And I, kick. You I kick. I kick. Um, See, I know Dungown, I take. Dungown will have to win the first half. Yeah. Yep. I think. Love it the second half. So I, I think I would have taken it the second half because it's not golden point. Yeah, that's a good point, Michael. If it's golden point, I take it this half. If it's um, extra time, I take it the second dig. But they mightn't have got the choice either. So Norse. <laughs> Coach Taylor, he's in them already, yep. and we're underway. Five minutes each way, Hope Martin. Ooh. Interesting miss kick. Slips over there. Still doesn't end up too bad. Ooh. We've got, uh, I think that's Alex Rogers, is it? Yes, Alex Rogers is away. Nice run. And still Good running ground. out to the 20, out to the 30. Good first run. Good start of the set. Hope off to Bronte Harris. It's uh, taped by Hopey Martin and Alicia. Pushed it back no. to the mark there. Just overstepped it, Bronte, when she played it. Rock at uh, dummy half. Out to Steph Halpin. Turn back Another shift side. to the blind. Oh, oh. had numbers. Well, it's, uh, M, M, uh, Carrigan did good there to get in between. Nice he run from Steph dummy Halpin half. Puts her input on that oh, great ground. tag. Out Hope to Martin. Halfway. Hope he got up a bit injured I don't think there. Hope's had a break. She's a very fit girl. She comes I to the gym, does think, a lot of training, she's and she's very fit. There. Alex Rogers, dummies inside to Bronte Harris. Out to Kimmy Resch. Long board of just got there. numbers, Michael. We've got numbers here. Good draw and pass. How good is that skill? That's a that Talia. A oh, small nice fundamental of the game. Draw and pass, and now they're down onto the uh, the 30 meter line for the fifth and last. Kimi Resch puts a cross field kick. It's going across. Picked Ferguson up by the Bears. It, kicks again. Oh, watch this! Watch this! Going to be close here. Ooh. Oh, we've got Steph Halpin's up and up and down as a try. We've got Kate Ferguson thought it was a try, but the referee... So Kate actually didn't. regained that, but he's, he's penalised for something. Yeah, he, he's got uh, Kate for pushing out of the way. A bit hard to see from where yeah, we're the Yeah, that's the furthest corner away from her. 
Nice kick there by Paris. But it was a good first set from your team. Very good first set. They got the ball on their, yes. on their turn and they ended up on, on the pylon. Rucked it out early, then pushed it wide, found some spaces. Now Dungown's chance. They're starting deep in their quarter. They're at uh, 20 metres out. Paris Knox takes the tap. Tagged by Kate Ferguson. We have Hopi Martin, sorry. Ellie New comes in and dummy half scoots out, gets away from the marker, but he's tagged by the marker, Kate Ferguson. Probably one of the best, if not the best, defender in the competition. Emma Carrigan on to Alana Swan. Uh, yeah, Alana Swan was one of the, the finalists for the best and fairest for the really? year. Really? Good work, Alana. Uh, I think she ran uh, third in the end. Taylor Holcomb turns back inside to Brandon nice Figgett on to Hope Martin. The girls are doing Ooh, a lot of switch plays. Good look over. Sides. Here we go. Well, uh, lock on. Drop ball, Hit bad luck there. Little, little pressure on a young girl. It's, uh, that could be the difference. Plenty of experience in the North Timber side compared to Dungowan's young uns. Few, few of the experienced girls in there, Brianna Trickett and Emma Carrigan, uh, have played a little bit. Nice short ball for Kate Ferguson. Ooh, Alicia Labrogadami half will go to Monty Harris. They'll come back, but they've played all day so far, back in behind the ruck. That's tag two, I think, Jeffrey. Sure Kate is, Ferguson Michael. a dummy half. Out to Alex Rogers. Oh, slips over. Now, it's not like Oz tag if you hit at the deck with somebody around you. It's a tag. You've actually got to be tagged in league tag. So you can still be on the ground and pass the ball. Uh, which is quite legal. And we've come back into the ruck again. Alex Rogers is away. There was a missed tag by Emma Carrigan. Good yards. Kate Ferguson at dummy half goes to Alicia LeBrock. She'll go long. Oh, great ball. Good great try. By Steph Halpern. Alicia LeBrock, we caught it, would inject herself into yes. the game. Beautiful pass. Then she's gone at the line at pace and made the, the defenders make a decision. Steph Halpern in support. Still had a bit of work to do. Oh, Steph did Looked beautifully. Like she did a Superman dive. She, that was a beautiful <laughs> try. Accelerated. Dove from about a metre out and a well-deserved try. Good football. That's, um, now, they've, they've, this will be a big kick for Kimmy um, into the wind. She needs to push it to the left side post and hope the wind brings it back. Yep. Now that you've got the lead, Jeffrey, what do you do? If you're well, the you still got another five-minute period. Do you keep playing or you just defend your lead? No, no, you keep playing. You don't shut up shop yet. It's too early to shut up shop. You've got to just keep pushing it. I don't think you should ever shut up shop. Yeah, good point. you just got to really ask questions of the, the Cowgirls' defence. Keep them under pressure so that when there is a turnover, they're under a bit of fatigue. You don't want to give them an easy set in defence so they can therefore come around and hit you with everything in an attack. Now if, I, if I'm coach James Cooper, I'm having a look at the clock and saying there's 30 seconds to go if we get the set. Just play it out. Yep. Just no kicks, no, no passes. Play the set out. I know Kim Resch from a similar position that um, Hope Martin had to win the game on the left-hand touchline, probably a metre closer. Oh, she hasn't hit that well. Well, she did no. push it to the left, but too far, and the wind didn't bring that back. So I've got 15 seconds Second on an official three, clock. I'd be surprised if they get the kick, but Dungown's coming back with a bit of pace. Um, who do you look at for Dungown in this second period? You know, do you try and get the ball to... You know, Jada's caused all kind of havoc. Do we try and get the ball to her as much as we can? Jada. Jada's the well, I think the she needs to get away from the middle. I think she needs yeah. to get one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, most no, certainly. And, and Paris has certainly been dangerous in attack as well. Now, just so people know, there's no half-time break. It's a straight swap straight over. Straight changeover. So yeah, we've got another five minutes. There's, there's no there's no talk. It's a straight swap over. Could be interesting in the in the uh, NRL office on Monday morning. James and uh, Luke, the two coaches, work side by side. Ooh. <laughs> Let's hope there's no fisticuffs. Nah, they're pretty good mates. Good uh, stuff. They, they both, both winners, both want to win, both competitive, but they understand it's a game. And uh, they'll have some jibes and jibs and little yeah. each other. Someone already. will have the... It's been happening already. The upper hand for a long time, right. won't so they? So I'd imagine I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go another $2 scratchy that Kimmy Rush puts his dead. Uh, okay, I think it's a chance for me to win back my scratch from earlier. <laughs> Although, saying that, the Cowgirls haven't got that... Dead goal line she defended very well. They're all up on the 20. 18 yeah. 14. Right, she hasn't got it dead. So they're all, oh, but she might have got it out. She has got it out. Yeah, what a great kick. No, it's not, Michael. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but on, more pressure for the Dungowan Cowgirls. I, There's I the experience. Kick -off. I know it's only a kickoff, but in big games, big players step up. That's two uh, now. Alicia LeBrock and then Kimmy Rash. Now we well, come out to Steph Halpin. That first receiver just takes the hit. Sesh Brown at dummy half. We've come out to uh, Bronte Harris. We've got uh, North Tamworth girls getting a little bit cranky. Sorry, Dungeon girls getting cranky with each other. A little bit of anger coming into the game. A little pressure building. Just Brown 
off to Bronte Harris, pushed with the ball out to Kimmy Rash. Maybe should have kept the ball coming, but swivels. And we got uh, Bronte Harris at dummy half. We we're not sure which way to go then. A little bit undecided by the North, unfamiliar, non uncharacteristic by the North Timber side. A little bit lost at the moment. Uh, comes Alicia LeBrock, she'll settle the play down out to Kimmy Rash. Good short hands. Good hands, hands here, they've got the numbers. numbers. They're going to score, they're going to score. Good try by Holly Binns again. I know we talked about it early in the game about simple draw and pass, but that's all that was in the end. You're right again, there, we Michael. Good vision of that. Uh, Jada Taylor's not happy with her team. And she's having a bit to say to some of the North Tamworth girls, I think, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. But it was just a good a good try. There was nothing special about it. It was just draw, pass, draw, pass, draw, pass. Hit the nail on the head there, Michael. They just Fundamental football. Had, had the numbers there. Just nice skills. Draw and pass. Drag the defender in. Had the overlap. Probably didn't need to deliver that last pass. Could have scored herself, but uh, nice and safe into the corner. All right. How long, how long do you think Kimmy can wind the clock down? I know she's well, experienced, but she's gone for the drink. Two and a half minutes. She's gone. She's opted for the drink. Oh, the ref spotted that and gone for timeout. Okay, so but she's about three metres in from touch. It's going to be on her wrong side, being a right footer. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put another two dollar scratchy. That she'll get this one. Okay. She's just got to put it out to that left post, and hopefully that wind takes it. But I uh, wonder if her partner, Jakey McManus, give her any tips. And she was lining up because Jake was the uh, highest point scorer for the year for the uh, for the oh. first grade side. Nice kick. Look go. at this. There's oh, stretchy. Straight through the post. What a great kick. Oh. That puts him 10 in front. It's, uh, that's For me, that's the ball game. I, I can't. Dungown are going to have to go short here. Number three, Holly uh, I can't see them pulling back 10 one. points in two, from the No. But it's been close so far and they've pulled out some miracle try. So let's see if they go short here. Luke Taylor has brought his daughter Jada off and put his wife on with two Ooh. minutes, two and a half minutes to go. Interesting okay. move. It is interesting. So I hope you, Martin. I thought they might have tried a short kickoff, but they haven't. They've gone long again. Um, not really long, no. It's on the 30 metres north Tamu. They'll just play this set out, surely. I oh, know they're going to still play expansive, but well, they're still going to move the ball around. I've got two minutes on the unofficial clock. Alicia LeBrock at dummy half. Steph Halpin at first receiver. Turns under, then goes out. Talia Tabiri's away. Talia's away. Full back to beat. Here goes oh, great Steph ball. Halpin. Steph's away. Good she chase for Ellie. Ellie New. And oh, she her. couldn't get her. Oh, unlucky Ellie New. Oh. Great reward her. for Steph there. She's had a massive game. It's, um, she scored two tries in goal in, in extra time. Yeah, so, big. Um, North Tamworth will be happy now with this result. They uh, probably got the result they were expecting, and I say that respectfully. Feel a little bit for Ellie New. It was a great chase, and Good you can chase, see that Ellie. she's. Um, she got to her. She just quite, couldn't quite pull that tag off. Now let's give uh, credit to Tatalia to Tabiri. She made that break, probably on the halfway line. Yes, yes. Delivered a really good inside pass there. Good support play. Well, good footy all around. to put her away. Again, just a little okay. short, short, yeah. short draw and pass. Uh, you can up. see the relief on the North Tamworth girls' faces here as they walk back to halfway. Kim Rash to put it over. You'd think so in front. Cowgirls have been strong in a huddle again behind the line. They've, no, they've had a massive tilt at this premiership here. They've nearly pulled off a massive upset. It's um, unfortunate for, for Dungown. It was you know, 14 all at full time. Uh, now it's blown up to. Yeah. Successful by number one, Kimberly Resch. Takes a score with less than a minute until full time. Uh, good sportsmanship all around here. Yeah. Lots of pats on the back. So so teammates looking after each other. 30 to 4, 14 in 10 minutes. Yeah. And, you know, so I feel for Dungown. When people see the score, they're going to think the Norse have dominated. But 14 all at full time. Oh. And then to score 16 points in 10 minutes extra time is phenomenal. It is. It's been a ripper of a game. Short kick off there and it's oh. taken. Oh, a bit of contact there. We're going to play on. Good That's all good. That was yeah, good referee. Me, me, the player, is at fault there. I, I still don't understand that Dungown haven't gone for a short kick off at any stage in this, this nice run, Bronte. Time. Bronte Harris, good yards. Ran about 40 metres from the uh, yeah, there's a time there. Steph Halpin will just get tagged. No, they're going to play it out. They're going to play to the end. Oh, the ref's called, and the... 
That's full time. Bad to have won it. Run out victors, 30 points to 14. After it was locked, at 14 all in full time. A fantastic game of league tag. Um, the two coaches come together. Good mates off the field. No friends on the field. They come together as many as they have raced and had a hug. Yeah, and it's good to see. Good mates, as you said, both very skillful players are in their own right. Well, congratulations to North Tamworth. They've gone through an undefeated season. That doesn't happen very often. Yes. I think it's only happened once before for the league tag. But, um, look, we've, we've got to commend the Dungowan side. The only games they've lost here have been North Tamworth. They took the grand final to goal at extra time. They made a game um, of it, didn't they? Oh, made more of a game of it. They had their chances to win. Um, both sides had their chances to win and finish the game early on what it did. But, you know... It's grand final day. It, it does funny things to teams. It does funny things to players. Yeah, And now does. the girls and are starting to all embrace in each other, which is good to see at the end of yeah, a, good a tough sportsmanship. A lot of them are friends. As yeah, they know. are. A lot of them played uh, league uh, Oztag together, rep Oztag and other sports together. And uh, we're, we're friends. Let's go even further, Michael. A, lot of, a couple of them are sisters. Yes. Yeah, Emma against and, each and other. Emma Carrigan and Jess Everett and sisters. Yeah. Um, you know, Taylor, uh, Jada, Jada Taylor and you know, Georgia Horneman and... Yeah, uh, those kind of players have played a lot of rep Oz tag together and stuff like that through the junior ranks. So there's there's a lot of friends on either side. Well, I'd like um, to say that was a great game for both teams. They uh, they really showed their skills and determination and redemption for the Bears after last year. And you must say that would have been in the back of their minds. Do you think I, when I, they were <laughs> squared up? I've got no doubt it was in the back of their minds. So to time. exercise those demons. Yeah. Uh, they'll be happy girls. But, and Dungown can hold their heads high. They played um, magnificent. Who's, who's your player of the match? Oh, I, I'm going to have to say my player of the match. It would have been between um, uh, Alicia and... Well, Alicia can't get it. She's got 10 in the bin. She's got 10 in well, the bin. Get it, but they won't give it to her. Well, I think number 10 is Steph Halvin. Steph Halvin. That'll yeah, be my selection. She, she was always asking questions of the defence. Really good in attack, scored a couple of good tries. So I, I give her my man of the match. And in, in that 10 minutes of extra time, she scored two and laid on one. Yeah. So well, she stepped up, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Well, like, you know, we said you know, in previously in the broadcast that in big games, big players step up. Yep. And, and, you know, and they did. And Lisa and, and Steph all stepped up in they the did. last 10 minutes. Yeah. Well done to the, to the uh, North Tamworth Bears, an undefeated season. Um, it's tough to do. Um, especially when you come from a, a season that you had the previous year where you lost the grand final from a possible another undefeated season. Yeah. So, um, well done to the girls, to the Dungown girls. Commiserations uh, from a spectator's point of view. Couldn't have asked for a better grand final and a better way to start the day. Great start to the day. Uh, congratulations to Luke and your girls on a, on a great year and better luck next year. Thanks, Jeffy, for your time. Thank and you, I'll Michael. See you at Second half of the first grade. Looking forward to it. When Pete Stevens heads off to his Warrior Out of Wombats presentation night where he's talking about drinking out of cups <laughs> and stuff. Gotcha. Uh, thanks, buddy.
like to welcome everybody here today to Jack Wilson Oval, home of the North Tamworth Bears. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors, particularly the big group board, uh, Wayne Catman and Associates, and Cooey's Brewing, or Lion uh, Nathan Brewing, and uh, of course the Funk, the North Tamworth Bears, and Tagri Business, Olsoft Signs, Party, Tees Agriculture, Metro Better Building Supplies, Pen Dutton Electric Force Professions, Professionals Real Estate, ADF Services, F45 Training, Celebrations, Liquor, and of course, the Courthouse Hotel and the Albert Hotel, where we invite everybody, North Tamworth supporters, Dungown and Katingle, uh, to the Albert Hotel, celebrate a great year of rugby league in 2019. Okay, Good welcome everybody. We, uh, uh, exciting game there in the, the uh, 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 sorry, in the ladies' league tag. Good luck with saying that one. Um, great game. Ad end up going to uh, extra time. Now it's uh, 30 to 14. You got mixed meal again. Sorry about that, everyone. Uh, you got to deal with me for another another game. But I'm joined by Peter Stevens, the great Northern Tigers Academy coach, uh, for the under 18s and 16s. Yeah. And Timmy Walsh, uh, who was a cutie under 18s coach this year. Uh, welcome, boys. Yeah, thanks, Mick. You this can take turns in talking. Um, Rolls, just quickly on you before we get into the name of the sides. You recently got named the Pathways Manager for the for the region. Um, without going too much into detail, because we've got to get another go. Have you enjoying that role so far? Yeah, it's been good, Mick, but something different. I'm just trying to plan um, moving forward with our 16s and 18s and girls uh, tackle sides at, um, for our championships next year. But, yeah, it's exciting for me and hopefully um, gives our region a bit of a plug. Good, mate. Uh, and Timmy, your coach, uh, the Kuda under 18s, this is second year coaching, I know. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was really good. I enjoy coaching these young kids. I sort of, you know, there's some good young football coming through the Farris um, system and, and we're lucky to coach them out there at Kirby. Uh, what I'll do, I'll get you to name them out in North Tamworth side for us. They were uh, the minor premiers um, and Dungown finished second. So if you can read out the side while the boys kick off. Yeah. Number one, Braden Reed. Two, Amachi Roberts. Three, Hudson Shaw. Four, Dylan Walker. Five, Janara Roberts. Six, Kobe Bones. Seven, Zach Coleman. Eight, Jack Bennett, nine, Liam Ball, ten, Timmy Gordon, number eleven, Dan Kelly, number twelve, Jacob Ellis, thirteen, Kobe Potts, fourteen, Malachi Johnson, fifteen, Jack Ellis, sixteen, Watson Kabadi, seventeen, Sam Haywood, and eighteen, Tom Sharman, number nineteen, Ashton Constable, and twenty-two, Javiva Tavai, coach Tommy Lerillaz. Mr. Pathways Manager Man, Pete Stevens, if you can read out the Dungown side. Yeah, Mick, we've got uh, Trent Taylor at the back at fullback. We have Mitch Bowen and Blair Maloney on the wings. Senna's Harrison Freeman and Cooper Harris. Um, in the halves, Jed Butler, Brad Mail. Um, front row, Ned Zell and Brad Finance. Hooker, Clay Frendon. Second row, Blake Ginman and Kyle Johnson. And Big Jack Todd will lock the scrum up. On the bench, we have James Marshman, Kelby McLean, Angus Tung. Number 17, I've got no idea, Mick, how to pronounce that name. Zane Woods, number 18. Reese Davis, Sam Dristrell, Zach Layson, Flynn Bauer. Sean Ferguson, the coach. Okay, more ten worth of pressing a line. Braden Reed out. We've got Ashton Constable at number one taking a hit up. <coughs> Excuse me, about nine metres from the Dungallon line. Let's see the fifth and last, Liam Ball, the, the son of the legendary Steve Ball from North Tamworth. Nice cross field kick by Braden Reed. Good jump by Harrison. This is going to be a try by North Tamworth. Good contest in the air. In the number number five for the uh, North Tamworth side gets the first try of the game. Young Jariah Roberts. A great start for the North Tamworth boys. Um, today's officials for this game, sorry, will be Ryan Schmidl in the middle with a, where are we? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Stephen Pleffer and Michael Corvo on the rings with Brody Barry and Bruce Falloon in goal. Sorry, Braden Sylvester and Bruce Falloon in goal. Good start for the North Timber side, Bone. Uh, rolls. It was. Um, Dungown had first use of the footy, made a tackle, uh, made a mistake on the second tackle, and um, we see at the end of the set, Bear, uh, Braden Reed, a great kick crossfield and um, plucked out of the air by the winger. It was a good start for North Tamworth. They, they converted a, um, a chance into points, and what I mean, there was a knock on early in the play by Dungown, I think, and North turned it into a. And, you know, it's an under-18s game. You've got to make the most of your opportunities when they come. 
what I really liked, Mick, was they um, they played a little bit of shape to the left edge of the football field, um, worked it back to the middle, and um, Braden got a great kick into the corner and um, a real good steady set for Norse, and they're up 4-0. A good way to start a grand final. Um, young Hudson Shaw misses the conversion from the team. Just doing some uh, awarding the other night. Um, uh, Hudson uh, Shaw was that runner-up in the points. Score one of the leading, goal. Goal. leading goal. goal kickers. Uh, oh, sorry, no, uh, Braden Reid from North Tamworth picked up the highest points for the year. Oh, sorry, he ran second, uh, but he was the leading try scorer. But young Braden, uh, the 5 8 for North Tamworth, they was voted as the best player in the under 18s competition. Dungowan kick off again. Big Timmy Gordon takes the first hit up. Um, handful Big Timmy, he's taken three or four defenders to bring him down there. Yeah, good carry forward. They go down the short side to Dan Kelly. Um, Norse will be looking at Dan he's um, come out of the 18s this year and really stepped up he, he can carry the footy and he's earned his side a penalty um, just uh, on some of the kids playing out here today we've got uh, young Trent, Trent Taylor his father Luke coached the league tag side early but also captain coached North Tamworth first grade side for many years um, Sammy Driscoll will have a run later for the uh, Dungowan side and on the North Tamworth side you've got Liam Ball a, uh, the, the son of Steve Ball that played at North Tamworth for many years. Dan Kelly, his father, also played at North Tamworth. Craig Kendall for, for many, many years. Um, so it's good to see some of these young fellas coming through. And uh, in saying that, Mick, there, all them players mentioned are all um, going to be have to step up today for their teams. As we see the big front rower in uh, Gordon cut, cut the ball forward, brought down 40 out. Put my sonny's on and off. Oh, they're about 30 metres out, North Tamworth pushing the line again from the, the back of a penalty. Another error by uh, Dungown. Good front on tackle by Clay Frieden. And uh, can't quite see who that is. We've got Liam Ball has a scoop from Dummy Al, picks up an, a cheeky 10 metres. Cabby Bone goes into. We've got a penalty. You'd imagine I'll take the two points here. We've got a flop in by young uh, Liam Zell. That was a great play by the hooker, Mick. They were one marker, one player, one of the Dungown boys were left on the ground and Ball picked it up and took it forward and earned himself, earned his title. A real good, cheap penalty. OK, I've got a couple of coaches sitting in the box with me there. Would have you have taken the two points and gone to six or do you push on? No, I would have tapped and went just like Norse did. They, all It's been all Norse early. Yeah, no, I would have taken the two, I think, just to settle things down. The glory of coaching. Cubby Bone has up a dip the short side by himself. Good tackle by Harrison Freeman and Blake Ginman. We go out the back to Braden Reed, and then on to uh, Coleman. Brady, uh, out the ball. Of, oh, Braden Reed knocks on a little bit of pressure, and well, no pressure there. No, he won't be happy with that with Braden. Big, a lot of pressure from Big Jack Todd. Norse look good early there. Um, they set up both sides of the field. The halves. Um, uh, really organised in behind. You know, they had players in front then, and they look like they're going to play out the back and play to the edges of Dungown and really stretch them. North Tamworth side probably fairly lucky with who their, their coach and water boys. They've got Tommy Leroy Lars as their coach, play Test for Australia, play State of Origin, a lot of NRL with, with a couple of different clubs. And then you've got Nathan Blacklock running their water, so they've got some experience. Jet Butler turns the ball inside of Harrison from great tackle there, I think, from Braden Reed. Uh, good dominant tackle. With Dan Kelly coming in to assist Clay Friedman, then uh, has a, a run, good struggling run out of trouble. Blake Ginman comes in the dummy half, has a little, sh you know, picks up 10 metres down the short side, more than 10, 15 metres down the short side, good run by Blake. Clay Friedland goes in the dummy half, played a fair bit of first grade this year, Blake. Trent Taylor's put a nice deep kick in, gets over the fullback's head. He's, he's kicked it from his own 40, and Ashton Constable will return it from his own 20. Good take by Dungown. Yeah, that's a good set for Dungown. They've um, been under the pump um, since the kick off the first mistake. Now Norse have got up, played it between his legs, um, no foot. So this is going to um, give Dungown their first opportunity to attack the line. Yeah, Mick, uh, the, the sixth, Braden Reed struggling in back play there. Sorry, guys, I'm just trying to convince Timmy Walsh that he's not actually up in the box just to get a free look at the game. He's actually got to do a bit of commentary where he's, uh, he's enjoying the, the position that we have now. Clay Frieden dips out from Dummy R, goes to Young Zelly, had Jet Butler on his outside, didn't use him, maybe a missed opportunity there. They're going to come to short side again. Clay's trying to sell the goal now, but they come short to Jet. 
Zets more known as a centre, but made a nice transition into the 5 8 position roles. He has done a good job, um, that Farrer and um, for the Dungown side. Um, he's fitted into the, the position very well. Um, as big Jack Todd gets the ball, uh, Mick uh, Brad Fernand, sorry, got in his road, so he just had to take the tackle. Ah, that's where I was trying to get Brad Fernand's. Look, Jet Butler's been around now as a young kid. You'd probably say that he's got a fair bit of experience. He's played country for a couple of years um, as, as a centre, and he's doing a good job at the number six. Not a your traditional six, but he's a good little footballer. Plays with um, plays with a lot of organisation, Mick. I mean, a very very good communicator is Jet. Um, so he'll push the side around real good, especially with Trent Taylor out the back. He'll help him out in that direction. Yeah, it was great defence there from from um, the Dungown side. They put a grubber through. I, I think it was Trent, young Trent Taylor, um, nicely cleaned up by Constable. But it was, uh, Jack, I think it was Jack Todd. <laughs> Jack Todd. He made a good tackle and pushed him back in. Rolls has come unplugged, so now we've got uh, Braden Reed dropping out. Uh, Trent will catch on the 40, goes to Young Zelly. Yeah, uh, good tackle there, front on. You can't quite see who it is. Yeah, Braden, young Braden Reed's coming off the field there. Oh, that's he interesting the move. Earlier on, but, um, losing him, and he's not he's not in a good position. He doesn't look very comfortable, Brado, to lose him. Say roughly 10 minutes into your game is a big loss, but young, young Liam Zell takes a hit up here. Uh, Liam Ball, front on tackle, Clay Friedland's a dummy half. The can't come out. No, they're going to go to the opposite side to the young halfback, which is Bradley Mayo. They got him here to the left, Dungown, I reckon, if they put it through their hands. They're coming this way now. They're 10 out here on the attack. Jed Butler tackled on the last. They'll keep coming short side to Trent Taylor. He dummies goes back in. Good defence there. Is that... Not sure who that is, Mick, but that was a good ball and all good, tackle then. Good under, under the, Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly, yep, should have. About earlier. Nash was. and Constable was there as well, but good ball and all tackle by Dan. Probably, um, I think if Trenny played a little bit more eyes up, uh, put the hands through the ball, I think the winger might have scored there. But yeah, they, he, created a, first. he created a three on two and decided to step off the left foot and go back in. And got to give Norse defence a real good um, credit there. They defended the line there the last two sets. And to be honest, they didn't look like they were under pressure at all. They kept working from the inside and it was good work as they work out of trouble now, Norse. Oh, touch nearly there, a dangerous tackle. While we're running, doing the runner commentary, I'll just ask Timmy Walsh, mate, you, you coached the QD under, six, uh, under 18 side this year. You've played both two sides. Um, who do you think's going to win and who do you, who would have you wanted to play if you made the grand final? Oh, I don't know about who I wanted to play. They're both, they're both well, well drilled sides. Um, you'd be looking to Trent Taylor and more solely that Jack Todd. I think he's a really good player. And then on the north side, well, Braden Reed's going to be a massive loss if he can't get back out. And Timmy Gordon on the back of that, the little halfback for North Tamworth. Zachy uh, Coleman. Yeah, I think he's a really good little player. He organises well. Um, yeah, I don't know who I'd want to play. It's just they're both well-drilled sides. Yeah. As we see, big Jack Todd takes it forward. Just um, looking at the sideline, Braden Reed sort of, don't know whether it'll be a cork or a knee, Mick, but I reckon he'll probably come back. I think Kobe Bone has slipped into the 5-8 spot for Norse if you look at their um, attack there in the last set. Clay Freeman comes out to Jet Butler, out to Trent Taylor. Little cross, nice cross for your kick. we got uh, Miley. Oh! Fantastic offload there, back inside to Blair, Blair Maloney onto Harrison Freeman. Strong run from Harrison Freeman on the last. Good thing is it's a turnover and it looks like it's about a metre from the North Tamworth try line. That was a good scramble again for Norse. Yeah, that was well done by Blair Maloney. Um, jumped above the opposite winger and uh, turned the ball back into Harrison Freeman. A lot of these kids' roles were part of your Academy 18 squad this year and you know, Blair Maloney is probably more noted as a fullback, but um, some people might not think there's a lot of difference between fullback and fullback, uh, wing. But um, at the moment, he's doing a fantastic job as a winger. Yeah, he spent a lot of time on the wing. Um, Blair, he's uh, not an overly big kid, but very tough. Um, he does a lot of the 1% work, as you see here, Dan Kelly. That's a good run and good tackle by Harrison Freeman there, ball and all. <laughs> Cubby Bone comes down the short side, makes a break. <coughs> he gets, comes to Trent Taylor, real good tackle, 20 out, Norse on the attack. Probably missed uh, Braden Reed there. He would have been one kid that would have been pushing up there to probably turn that into something. Yeah, they've got to turn those hard. That'll run dead too big, way too big. That was not look. That, the option was probably right because he, he you know, good eyes up footy from young Jackie Com. Noticed that Trent was that first marker. Um, so obviously he's not at fullback. Puts a kick in, but just a bit too big. 
you got to turn those points, those opportunities into points. You know, Cody Lane makes that break and nobody's pushing with him. Um, and look, there was an opportunity then to, to get a bit more from it than that. Now, the, uh, the other difference is Mick Nungown have been down there twice and both their kicks have pulled up. They've tackled Norse right on the line where um, Coleman's kick then found dead, gives Dungown, which releases the pressure and gives them seven tackles. So it, it's a big difference when you want to mount pressure in that sort of situation. Yeah, I, I, I see in a different side here in the, in the Dungowns side today they look very lethargic and um, I think that the tough game last week has, has taken a bit out of them although there's a good little run from the 11 what's black. I do know the big lock is um, playing with a broken bone in his foot and as you were if you do watch him getting around he's noticeable limp that's Jack Todd so and he's one bloke that done down would um, look to cart him forward so and play on the back of that if you heard me coughing and spluttering. So uh, North Tenworth pick up a penalty for the kick chase being inside the 10. Um, Shawnee Ferguson, again another established first grade football captain coach at North Tenworth, had a bit of time in, in a few systems in the NRL. Um, a lot of coaching experience and a lot of football knowledge. He won't be happy with that little fundamental. You know, you, you've sort of got yourself down in there, you get a good kick in and then your chasers uh, let you down by being inside the 10. Yeah, it's a thing that probably shouldn't happen, Mick, especially in these days. Um, you know, the ball was put high. Um, one, to be offside, but two, then to get inside the 10s. You know, it's just a, it's a no-no, isn't it? You know, it, it doesn't help your mount pressure. <coughs> Can't see who that is taking that first. Yep, that's front on. But we got lean ball at dummy half. Jake Ellis it is with the ball. Um, he's tackled about 40 out, middle of the football field, ball at dummy half. Goes on to Kobe Bone. They, uh, they look like they're missing Braden a little bit. I don't know if it's organisational. Or as you say that... Like they lost a little bit of spark at the moment in North Timworth. As you say that, he's just come back on, Braden. So. <laughs> and gets a, a nice kick in. I don't think it'll be a 40-20, but it's a good deep kick. Young, uh, young Boa... Young uh, Matty Bowen, is it? Not Matty Bowen, Mitch Bowen. Matty Bowen. I, nice bet you Ferg, Bowen. I bet you Ferg wished it was Matty Bowen. And again, uh, an, another fundamental. We just talked about it. Um, kick chase inside the 10. Um, you know, tackled 8 metres, 7 metres from your own try line, and you give away a penalty. Well, you know, North Tenworth tackled Dungown 10 metres inside the 10 on, on their own try line, gives away a penalty. Kind of release that, you know, that, that, that pressure valve a bit, doesn't it? Massively, because while she touched on before how Dungown looked like they're playing, you know, n not a lot of enthusiasm. And when um, Ryan Smeadle, the referee, gave that penalty, there were still 11 or 12 blokes all offside, um, struggling to get back onside for Dungown. So that was really relieving. That's Kyle Johnson playing the ball now. He gets it on to Cooper Harris. Harris cuts the ball forward. Um, Cooper is a centre. He will come in and do a lot of the dirty work, which we see then on the finance. Finance cuts the ball forward. He's caught a couple of metres before. Halfway plays it back to Freeman. He gets on the Ned Zell. That's a good carry. Cuts the ball forward. But, uh, just on Kyle Johnson, uh, again, Roz, he's in the academy, but was a centre and uh, made that transition. It's only one in from the edge. Nice big bomb by Trenty Taylor. Well done by Ashton Cunstable. Had a lot of pressure coming down, but didn't uh, didn't fold it, took it. Uh, now, North Tim with the tackle on their 20 metre line. But uh, interesting that Kyle's come from centres into the back row. It's only one in, but it, defensively, there's a little bit of pressure. North Tim have just made a change. Uh, I think Jakey, let me find his name... Yeah, Jake Bennett. Jake Bennett's just come off uh, and Big Timmy Gordon's gone back on. But just on Kyle Johnson, that transition from back row, uh, from centre to back row, it's only one in, but defensively it's a, a fair bit more different work, isn't it? It is. It's um, different reads and um, them sort of things. But with Kyle, Kyle is probably one of the best line runners um, and will put his body into the So probably understand that um, why Kyle has been moved to the second row, um, especially when you've got Harrison Freeman, Cooper Harris that can both play in the centre. So the best fit for... Uh, the Dungown side, as Fergus seen, is putting Kyle a dummy half. Braden Reen's been back on a couple of minutes and he's showed his hand. He's dummy and gone himself a couple of times and looked dangerous. So um, they're a different football side with Braden out there for sure, Mick. Uh, an error in my call then. I think I thought it was Timmy Gordon that came on, and I'm fairly sure it's Tavita Tavo that's come on. Uh, Kobe Bone just put up a good bomb. Trent Taylor, uh, good take. Now we've got Mitchie Bowen coming from the opposite side wing. That should be a penalty. Thought very lucky to get away with that on Braden. Uh, thought that was a flop. Brave free. 
Clay Friendon picked it up. It was a bit of a show and go, but uh, made no metres. Um, yeah, he was lucky there, Braden. He had a second had a second effort in that. Good carry by Jinman back on the jet. Go, Blake, the jet, jet Butler. Butler. Thought he was going to kick then for his winger, but took the right option. Yes, I thought he was going to get a... Um, the fullback for Norse has done a couple of good things, hasn't he, in the last couple of minutes? Took a, a very difficult bomb in the wind, and then that was a great tackle on um, Jet Butler then to shut the play down. Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm fairly sure young Ashton Constable, um, his family are Werris Creek people, but I'm sure that Ashton might have been part of one of the uh, nice um, six stuff, sort of 14s, 15s that did some touring not long ago. Could be wrong, so don't quote me on it, but I'm, I'm sure that he was. Now we've got Harrison Freeman takes a hit up. Uh, he's a good tackle front on by Dan Kelly um, and Tavito. We've got Clay Friendland at dummy half. He's going to go to Trenny Taylor and he'll turn back inside to Bradley for an answer. No, he dummied and went outside himself. Trent's not the biggest man on the paddy, but geez, he's tough, isn't he? Like, he? He gets whacked, he still hits. Now we've got, we just talked about Kyle Johnson and we just talked about that line there, Rolls. Yeah, that was. Um I know that was a good line, Mick, but that was probably pretty poor defence there by Norse, and I've been really impressed with their, their line defence. But, um, yeah, Kyle got off his left foot and pushed into space on his outside, and that was a good try. It's um, Trenny Taylor, not, it was, uh, what is it, second, third week back from having his knee reconstructed? No, he... Um, Did he have it reconstructed? No, he, 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 went, he went in and had a clean-out, uh, Mick, oh, okay. I think, um, so... He, no, he's probably been, he, I think he's had a couple of school games and um, I know he didn't play last uh, fortnight ago with Dungown. He was, um, I think he got hurt and was supposed, it was go, supposed to go away um, with his rugby union. But um, no, for Trent, for Dungown to win today, they're going to look at Trent to um, to spark some things for him. And like you said before, Trent will put his body in there and, um, you know, he'll, he'll do the tough work for sure. It's an interesting game. I know, Timmy, that you mentioned at Dungown look a little bit flat at the moment um, and they do you know, for what one reason or not but they've come up with a good try to get themselves you know I won't say into the game because they're not really out of it at, at four all but Norse look like they've been sort of from, from where we sit and it looks North, Norse have been dominating and um, probably unlucky not to come up with a few more points yeah yeah it's, it's, they're just hanging in there down at the right, moment but yeah, yeah, go back to Trent Rob Taylor Robson, I think it comes that try come off the back of a quick play the ball from Trent Taylor right. um, just game looking at the body language of North Tamworth here they're walking the back and they're uh, uh, couple were sitting down behind the goal uh, it's, uh, the tide might have turned a bit for under 18's game it's um, it's relatively quick it's not a slow game I think it's a little bit end to end both sides relatively mistake free when you get that you get for two yeah, and um, the referee, Ryan Smeal, has made sure that, you know, if you want to get in and have a second effort in the play the ball, he's penalised a couple of times. So he's um he wants a quick game himself, which, yeah, it's going from end to end here. And Harrison Freeman on the from the kickoff and Dan Kelly, Kobe Bone um, into the tackle. Here's another bloke is Blake Jinman, um, probably more known as probably a hooker. Um, playing in the back row too, and he's very tough, um, small, not a very big statue, Blake Mick, but very tough as well. This is Dungown probably at their best when you see, you know, they go forward, Trent's nice little feet got back in behind to play the ball with a, a quick play of the ball there again. Trent, I know Trent's playing fullback, but you can sort of see him just sort of pushing them, pushing the boys around where they need to go. He's a good little organiser. He is, a, a, I won't say an ex-halfback, but he's played a lot of his football career. Kyle Johnson looked like he's going to go in for a try number two. Good tackle. A little a uh, um, Gabardi on the wing, I think it might have been. Uh, Mate, that was a great run by Jack Toddy. He beat three players. Right. Found Sorry, he was the one that made that tackle on draw, Kyle Johnson on that wing. Yeah, great run by Jack Toddy. Beat three players, got to his feet and went again and got a real good offload to Kyle Johnson that nearly went in the corner. Now, Rolls, do you think this win's going to play a big part in the second half? Oh, it's a big win. Yeah, we can see the balloons. Real funny. They had all the run early in the play. Now, you know, Dungown looked at the, the lethargic side. Now it's North Tamworth um, that looked at the lethargic and, you know, like just hanging in there at the moment, struggling to get the ball outside their own 15. That, uh, that try seems to have brought the Dungown boys alive, hasn't it? They're, you know, tackling in, in gangs, 3-4 in the tackle, pushing them back. North Timber, they're going to be kicking. You know, that's the 20-metre there, 30-metre line there, with one tackle to go. So they're going to... It looks like we've got an injured player. Now he's going to get up. 
I think Timmy Gordon has, has been a big loss since he's been off the pad paddock. He only lasted two minutes. I don't know what happened to him, but um, has a good run from back row. Here's Braden Reed kicking from inside the 40. It's a good kick too. He's used the wind well there, Mick. I think he'll let that run dead, young uh, yep. Blair Maloney. He got too much on it. It'll be a seven tackle set here for Norse. And I, I really think for Norse to win this game, I think they're the sort of things that they can't allow um, Dungown away with. They've just got to make Dungown work real hard and um, earn everything that they they need to get. He had enough time to probably push that a bit more to the sideline and at least get it into touch if you weren't. We're going to get Blair Maloney comes in. Good tackle by Braden Reed and Zaki uh, Benedict. Dan Kelly, sorry. Uh, Trent Taylor. Probably not what you want your fullback doing. You've got forwards that can do that, but that's Trent in it. Uh, now we've got Lung you got Craig, Clay Friedman at dummy half looking to Jack Todd, but he goes to Kyle Johnson. Having a monster of a game at the moment, I think Jack, between Jack and, and Kyle, they're probably the two best for Dungown at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Um, he's big Jack, Jack Todd winding up. He's a handful when he carts the footy. Every time he goes forward too, Jet Butler's trying to get on that, that push with him, and that was a good offload by Jack. Young, young Zelly now, who's just taken that hit and gone straight through. I was just going to say, he's probably an unsung hero for the Dungowan side. He's probably a, uh, an unsung hero for the, the Dungowan side because he, he does a lot of the hard stuff and he's not a big front rower. He's not. He's got good feet, good leg speed and good feet. But Mick, um, at the line there, yeah, that was um, probably uncharacteristic for the Norse defence. He went through ball and the front rower in um, uh, Bennett. And yeah, it was a good carry by Zell. Uh, on the unofficial clock, because I, I, I did miss the start, it's around about 25 minutes in uh, the 18s play 30 minutes. Um, I just see big Sammy Driscoll on the sideline winding up there. The son of the f of the legendary Peter Driscoll, uh, again, who had a bit of time with South Sydney and North Tamworth, uh, Crindai, I think he originally from. Um, again, these young kids coming through. But after that run by Le uh, young Zelly, he, uh, he knocked on in the tackle and North Tamworth got the scrum feed coming off the try line 30 metres out Braden Reed takes it off the first hit up that's young young bloke of Ellis Jockey Ellis I think it is Jacob yep Jacob here comes Ellis. here comes uh, Timmy Gordon back on the paddock I think get, they'll get some go yeah, for him now yeah, just replaced there. Kavita and that's Zachy Coleman taking a hit up I'd like to see some of these forwards do these hit ups that we've seen the, you know, the halves and the 5 eights and the full backs having Timmy Gordon now with the ball good front on goal oh, missed by Fernando a uh, good tackle by Clay Friedland down low Good like dominant play the ball by Timmy Gordon. Ball out to uh, Dan Kelly. Good solid run. Another tackle by Blakey Gimmon down around the legs. Clay Friedland up, 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 up top again. Timmy um, was making a good point. Without Gordon on there, they're not a big forward pack, Norse, are they? So, you know, like um, with him out there, their go forward is going to be made a lot easier. Yeah, a good chase, a good kick from Braden Reed. They made sure they're onside this time. North Tamworth the ball. Second tackle will be played on the 20. No. Cooper Harris <laughs> offloads to Trent. It. Trent Taylor, Trent. Yeah. Uh, probably wasn't needed that pass because it made absolutely no yards on it. But Cooper Harris now will take a hit up. Oh, puts the ball down. North Tamworth on the attack now through Zachy Turnbull. It's, um, ta that'll be zero tackle there, 20 metres out. What will North Tamworth do with it? Young Zachy Coleman at dummy half has a little hit himself. No runners. It, um, you can see Braden Reed starting to marshal the troops. Liam Ball comes in the dummy half. It'll come out to Braden now. He'll go out the back to Timmy Gordon. Now he plays short to Dan Gelly. Nice little ball. Dan still fighting hard. 10 metres out. Tackle three. Still pushing forward. Tackle not made yet. Now it's tackle. Yep. Oh. Well earned penalty there. It's um, fair enough. I'll go with that. Wouldn't get out of the way. No, I heard Ryan two or three times ask Ginny to get out of the tackle. And in the end, um, Dan Kelly... I don't know whether it was stripped. I think he did uh, drop it on. He scored here, Dan Kelly. That's a great That's try right. from the big back row. He won't be uh, Coach Ferguson won't be happy with that. That's a, a hit up by a back row. Off a, you know, I know he's run over another back row, but 10 metres out there shouldn't shouldn't be able to score that easy. Shouldn't. I'll go back to what Timmy Walsh said earlier about um, no enthusiasm and Dan. Then the contact was made three metres before the line, but. And it was on Blake Jinman, and they didn't, they weren't in a hurry to get in and help him make the tackle there, were they? Yeah, look, you know, Dan just kept driving, kept, and he, look, he's a strong kid. He's, he's an athletic build. Um, he just kept driving, his legs pushing and twisting, and, and end up getting himself a, a much rewarded try for for his performance so far. Yeah, um, I just had to wake Timmy Walsh up. He's having a sleep. <laughs> Since, since Timmy Gordon's been out there, you just see the belief in, in his side. You just, just having him there, he's one of those sort of players. Um, 
the thing with North Tamworth, I think this year from last year, there's a disappointment to see that Tommy Lee or Lars has put into them. Well, I've got a question, an interesting one that some people may or may not know. Now, with the under 18s, it's unlimited interchange. Do you think there's a scope for maybe down the track that it is limited interchange? The 18 year old men, do they, do they need to be unlimited? If I had my way, Mick, it would be. Um, you know, but in saying that, if you've got a bench of six and it's unlimited, what is the number you make it to give everyone a fair go? So there's arguments both ways. I just think, um, you know, they, if they can't play their 15 or 18 minutes right, in one stint, you know, like an 18 year old, but then, you know, how do you give them all a run and what number do you use? Like you said, mate, but there's uh, probably fours and against both right now. Hudson Shaw's converted that try, so North Tenworth now jump out to a uh, 10, 10 to 4 lead. Uh, I'm a bit old school. I, I go back to the, the days when once you got an interchange, that was it. There was no more footy, but um, I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to that. You've hit it on the head when you said the old word old. <laughs> Here's the, man, here's the man you've both just been rapping. Timmy Gordon's taken it about five metres from his own try line. He's brought it out to 40 metres, so a 35 metre run, post-contact run. That was a great carry too, and there was a lot of purpose in that run. That, that's young Gabbard. He's just having a little scoot from the wing. Uh, takes a bit of pressure from the forward. He gets it into the halfway line. Now we've got Kobe Bone, I think, slot back at a lock. He's now 48 metres from the North Denmark. Oh, sorry, from the... Liam Ball comes down a short side again. Little half a break, four, 30 metres out from the uh, Dungowan line on tackle four. Good run by Boyle. Again, Dungowan were caught with one marker and he picked it up and went straight away. Okay. Kobe Bones worked his butt off for Norse, hadn't he? You know, he's been in all, a lot of defence and he's put his hand up here. And Ball again out of dummy half. That's a good carry again. Oh. That's a try. Great work by Ball. It's... Um, I know, I know Kobe Bain's got that try, but uh, I'm going to put that down to, to young Liam Ball. Uh, had a good scoot, wrestled, 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 didn't give up on the play, got the ball out the back, and uh, gets an offload to Kobe Bain, and we've gone in. Now we've had time out. The uh, Dungown captain has been called out. Mick, uh, just on that, I've got a rule. You play the ball and can score a try, you deserve... I know in senior league, I, everyone's got to chip in and buy your carton. And Kobe Bone was on his second carry for the set then, played that football, pushed forward with ball and scored the try. So that was great work by Kobe as well. well I said the other day on the podcast that, we did that I think Kobe Bone was, was born in the wrong era. He's a, he's a tough, uncompromising, uh, gives what he gets and, and you know pushes the boundaries. And if you watch him run, he's got... You know, for an 18 year old kid he's got a great set of bumper bars um, one of my favourites um, because what you what you get out of him today is what you're going to get out of him next week Mick so I, um, I, I rate Kobe in, in that sense and mate that was a great try as we see now Norse lining up this is a good uh, good couple of minutes for Norse here going into half time it's They've skipped out to a 10-point lead with a kick to come here. Yeah, look, you know, and I mentioned you know, a bit earlier that wind. You know, Norse have got to use that wind. They're starting now to get to that lead, and Hudson Shaw has kicked that. So the lead bumps out a little bit more. We've got probably you know, three or four minutes, maybe, I think, till half time. Um, but that lead's probably where it needs to be with that wind. And I'd probably be kicking to the right side here, away from the big front rower um, in Timmy Gordon here, because his kick start, his first carry in that set last set was the reason they scored at the back end of it for sure. Yeah. Well, look, he, you know, he took it, he got it up to the 40 metres, a 35 metre run. I'd, I'd be kicking the ball nowhere near him. Trent Taylor places it, kicks off, it goes straight down the middle. I'll go to Zachy uh, Turnbull, I think it is. Is it Zach Turnbull? No, uh, Jack, Jake Bennett, mate. Jake Bennett, the uh, front rower. Well, that's yeah, half yeah. time. That's half time. So you got half time. North Tamworth leading 16 points to four. Now, as we go into the sheds, I'll grab you first, Timmy. You're, you're the Dungown coach. What do you say to your team? Um, the intensity has to pick up. They look a tired football side at the moment. A lot of these boys Try playing North with the uh, uh, first 18 for Farris. The they're, they're looking very lethargic. Sure. That's the first Thanks thing we have to pick up. And, and just believe in ourselves. And, and come on, four. we've got the wind on our back in the second half. We, we're going to Trent Taylor off the play off the back of his kicking game, I, I believe. Just watching Trenny as he walks in the Harley, he's not, not happy and he did have a conversation with the referee just after that try was scored, so I don't know what the contents of that of, but Trent still looks like he's a little bit upset. Um, he probably just needs to gather his thoughts and, and get he, you know, him and his team back on footy. Rolls, you're the North Tamworth coach. You're Tommy Leroy Lars. What do you tell your boys? Um, 
one thing with you know like with Timmy Gordon I'd be asking Timmy you know especially his first 10 or 15 minutes his first stint has to be big and we need to get on the back of what um, Timmy can offer um, and you know with this wind we're going to cart the ball five you know I know they have kicked earlier in the tackle count Norse because they had to win the first half so I'd be looking to run in five even if it was dummy half runs get into a real good kick chase and um, try to put these Dungown boys under fatigue um, because they've showed once they can get down here, Mick, they can score points. So probably in the second half with a 16-4 lead, um, making an arm wrestle early, um, which I reckon that's what Tommy will ask. And, you know, the people like the Dan Kellys and Kobe Bones and the Timmy Gordon, you really got to roll your sleeves up for us here and get us forward. So um, so playing into the wind. But from here, it comes back to Norse defence. If they can be energetic and really hustle this Dungown side, they can probably come up with the mistakes here. Just, uh, you know, North Timoth have gone down to the shed. Uh, Dungown's out on the field. He's not giving it to him, Sean Ferguson, but from where we are in the box, we can we can certainly hear what's being said, and he's uh, he's laying down the law to him. Is that 12 points with that win a big enough lead in the second half? I don't think it is. You look at the players that Dungown have got, um, I don't think 12 points is defendable. Definitely, you know, like you look at Kyle Johnson's, Trent Taylor's, Jet Butler's, and, you know, Jack Todd's, I just definitely don't think it is. Um, yeah, yeah, the Dungown side, they've got, they've, they've got points in them, and they can score quick quick points on you as well and like I said before that with the back of Trent Taylor there's the wind in his back and, and we haven't seen a lot of Todd at the moment he, he needs to pick his game up I, I believe it all right we'll have a, a little break um, just before we go to the break we'll thank the um, Tuies uh, for their sponsorship of the group four competition along with the Wayne Cadman financial and insurance group and also for today's Game day sponsor is uh, the Blanche family and AMPS Rural uh, for the use of the box and um, donating today. Thanks, guys, and we'll have a little break for the second half. particularly help and plumbing they've been sponsoring us for many years so big shout out and uh, remember the best way to uh, support our sponsors is to give them some business so uh, help and plumbing been a long time sponsor of uh, North Hamwood as well as Amps Agribusiness also Duke's Party Ice uh, Tees Agriculture so Liquor Metro Better Building Solutions Penrose Meats Dutton Electrical Professionals Real Estate ADF Services 45 training and of course the Courthouse Hotel and the Albert Hotel we invite everyone, both uh, North Tamworth supporters, Dungown supporters, Katingle and Manila Tiger supporters to head down to the Albert after game today to celebrate a great season of Rugby League in 2019.
we go. Second half underway. North Tamworth have a 12-point lead. Zachy Bennett uh, takes the first hit up out to the 20 metre. Good tackle by Cole Johnson down low and Bradley Marlow over the top. And, uh, Hudson Shaw takes another hit up down the short side. And we've got Dung down for off. Oh no, for high. Okay. Cole Johnson threw his arm out there and got him under the chin. Good start for Norse again. Um, you'll be looking for the big front row here to Gordon to cart him forward. He hasn't put that out. No, poor kick. Great right. hands, How Mitchell good was Bowen. That catch? I see they put Trent Taylor into halfback here to, to change it around a bit. They've moved uh, someone. Jetty, back there. Where's Jet Butler playing? And he looks like he's out the back. Has Trent gone to halfback, Tim? Standing there in halfback there, that's it. Okay. He's, uh, he's definitely come in and doing a little bit more organising. Organising, does that sound right? Jack Todd, uh, another big, well, kind of big run, but um, I think that foot starting to play its, play its part. He needs to just get back and run back at pace like he normally does. Clay Fredler, dummy half goes to Trent Taylor. Turns uh, Zelly under but takes the ball himself. Good tackle by Dan Kelly and Liam Ball. I oh, know, Zach Bennett, sorry. Clay Fredlin goes short to Blake Ginman. Good tackle. Braden Reed got out of the Not line. Last. last. Yeah, Jeez, that come good. up quick. Yeah. I won't say it wasn't, but it come around fast. But Can you Smeedles count or what? Ains Vay Dre. Kobe Bone now out to uh, Jockey Ellis. Jacob Ellis. And uh, Blake Gimman, a good solid tackle with Harrison Freeman. And we've got a little um, Gabardi has a run. Ginman again, aggressive tackling style with Clay Freeman over top. Ball comes out to Bennett. He has another hit up. He's had a strong game, young Zachy Bennett. He's a very impressive week in, week out for me. Yes, um, he's got one off the ruck and done his job in the middle. That'll be a scrum. Yes, a good call. I think that was the correct call by the referee. Uh, sloppy play the ball, they call them nowadays. He's, uh, he's not happy, Zach, but it's uh, it's the right call. I think it's Zach, isn't it? No, it's Bennett. Jake. Jake. Sorry, sorry, Jake. I've been calling you Zach. Uh, Jake Bennett. Um, so, an opportunity now for Dungown to hit back straight up um, into the second half of Mr. Clock again. Okay, Trent Taylor out the back to Jet Butler. He's yeah. tackled by Jock Ellis, by look of it, and Braden Reed. Oh, it looks like looks like they've swapped um, Trent and Jet. Um, maybe for Ferg. Um, I know Trent's got a real good working relationship with Kyle Johnson, so um, maybe Trent might be playing on the wrong edge to make that work. Uh, but straight away, nice ball by Trent. He's had an instant instant impact. That had, but he's gone in the touch. Geez, the fullback's done some good work today, haven't yeah, he? Yeah, did um, for Norse. That, is that Blair Maloney? Blair not understand where his sideline was. There it was a bit of an easy tackle in the touch. I don't know why he didn't pass it back to Harrison Freeman. There he would have been yeah. true untouched. Not sure why he didn't head infield as soon as he got into. You know, he yeah. was probably two better options than what he came up with. But it's easy from the box rolls. Easy from um, the box. I've had a bit to do with Blair Mick, and um, probably Blair's brain didn't keep up with what needed to happen there. <laughs> but again, yeah, we just talked about Trent Taylor and, the, and stuff like that. And that was a good ball out there to out to Blair and well Ashton is uh, unluckily there fell over he's had a strong game at the back Ashton um, he's been very very good for North Tamworth sloppy play the ball they're lucky to get away with that one and uh, Zachy Coleman Coleman uh, has a hit up there again a half back having a hit up instead of a front row or a back row now we've got Hudson Shaw having a hit good tackle by Kyle Johnson is it? Yeah Kyle Johnson underneath they need Timmy Gordon here to have a roll forward for North so they can get a good kick away at the end of the set They've muscled up here, Dungown. That's a great great contact there by Big Jack Todd. Now we're out to Braden Reed. On to Dan Kelly. Dan Kelly here. He's pushed through. Good ball. On to one of the Ellis boys. He's on the run downfield. Yeah, they're, they're twins, I think, the Ellis boys. 12 and 15, I'm going to go. Yeah, Jock Ellis. Good kick by Braden Reed. Nice high bomb. Oh, Cooper Harris. Good catch. You get uh, rocks and diamonds with Coop. Uh, good player, played a lot of representative football, very tough, and uh, plays just about anywhere, and that was a good catch. Good run by Clay Freeman down the short side. Good, solid tackle by young Jeremiah Roberts, I think it is. Jeremiah, I think it was. No, Amakai Roberts, sorry, that one was. And we got Clay at dummy half, and uh, young Fernando. We all seem to find a Benji Marshall step these kids these days. Good tackle by Dan Kelly and Liam Ball. We seem to be saying Liam Ball's a lot to uh, name in defence, a bit like his dad, very defence orientated. Had a good, you know. 
nice crossfield creek from Trent. Depends where it lands, where it like, comes back. A little unlucky. A bit of athleticism shown by uh, Blair and Harrison. Nearly come up with something, but it's going to be a seven tackle set. Not yep. a bad kick from Trent. Probably a little bit more weight than he wanted, but um, the option was right. Yeah, the wind actually got hold of it in the air, and that's relieving for Norse. If Norse can roll forward here and... Um, they need Timmy Gordon here to have one carry and probably get a spell just to get him onto the front foot. And now we just had a, an interchange, um, number 14 for North Timorous, Tommy, Tommy Sharman. Uh, broke his jaw early in the year, so he's a big inclusion. Come on, uh, he's, he's replaced uh, Jacob Ellis and uh, Zachy, uh, Jake Bennett, who's also gone, come off. I'm not sure who went on for Jake. But um, good to see Tommy Sharman back on the field and in, into a grand final. Like I said, broke his cheekbone, I think it was, early in the year. Missed a lot of football. Uh, Cabby Bone has another hit up. He's going to get... Needs to be careful here. Um, having a crack at the referee. Uh, just get up and play the ball. Young Zachy Coleman, mate, the halfback. getting through a lot of work as a halfback. He's, having a, he's getting tackled a lot. Um, you'd probably like to see your back rowers and your front rowers having some of those hit ups that he's happened now Blair Maloney's got the ball on a very shallow kick from Braden Reed. he gets through two tackles, three tackles and still going good run by Blair Maloney he's now about 40, 55 metres from the North Timber line it uh, goes to Clay Fredland and on to Jack Todd that's a better run from Jack Todd he'll get an offload here maybe very strong run, Timmy Gordon comes in called it, good offload picked up by Tranny Taylor it'll be interesting if he gets some paddock because he can motar Kobe Bone, he's um, worked himself. Another good tackle there to clean Trent up. Ball goes on to Zed Nell. A bit of a high tackle from Charman. Yeah, more, more lazy, sloppy than and Clay's taking a quick tap and going. Good smart football good work. from Clay. And again, he's it's strong. the fullback ball. That was a great ball and all tackle from the fullback. From the he's been Ash, impressive Ash, today. Ball, Jet Butler, sorry, Cole Johnson with dummy half. And he's going to bully his way over, is he? Good defence by defense. the North Tamworth. Desperation defence. One yeah. metre from the try line. Clay Fredlin at dummy half. Long ball out to Jet Butler. Well, it's a good tackle by Braden, Braden Reed. Yeah. Not sure what Jack Todd was doing then. Kind of got in the way, I think. But Clay Fredlin at dummy half. Good solid football here under 18 football. He needs to hit the line hard, Jackie Todd. That's not your go, Jack. Clay Fredlin again at dummy half. It's going to come out the back to Jet Butler. Now to Trent Taylor. Little kick in for Cole Johnson. Good chase. Oh, oh Cooper Harris vehicle. is knocked on. Cooper Harris. <coughs> A little bit unlucky there he got there. I'm not sure what um, young Amakai Roberts was doing. I thought he thought it was going to roll there, but it popped up nicely. It ended up good for the winger, but uh, Cooper Harris bombed an opportunity there. He got two hands to it and um, just couldn't get the ball, to gather it in to get the ball down. Relieving again for Norse. They need to really roll their sleeves up here and get into a good set and get a good kick away. Good defence by Dungown Blair Jim and gets forward on Ellis. Plays the ball back to Ball. Ball gets it on to Hayward. Hayward's tackled 30 metres out. Gets up to play it. Ball at dummy half. Ball gets out to Braden Reed. That's a good carry with good <coughs> leg speed. Yes, penalty there. Second effort from Clay Friendman and Ned Zell. He went to get to his feet to play it, Braden Reed. And um, Ned Zell and Clay Friendman went for a second effort. Norse just want to steady the ship here. Kobe, Kobe Bone <coughs> finds touch. 45 metres out. Norse needed that mick, that penalty. They were yeah, sort of were playing under the pump. They were stuck down here. They weren't sort of really getting many, many, many yards up. But uh, got themselves out a bit of trouble here with a, what you'd probably deem a bit of a silly penalty, unnecessary penalty. Um, second efforts. It's, um, I'm not sure who that is. <coughs> the centre. That was Shaw. Shaw's oh, tackled. Sure. Ball goes back to Sharman. Sharman goes forward. Little fella usually plays in the halves, I think, doesn't he, Mick? Yeah, he's normally a half five eight. Um, again, another tough little character. Good ball player. Nice little run around. Good little play back inside. <coughs> Great offload by Dan Kelly. Onto that man, ball. He's all around the footy. Oh, back to Dan Kelly again. This is good footy by Norse. This is what they want. Clay Frendon's been left back at the halfway laying down. He uh, got hurt in the tackle there trying to tackle um, Dan a tough Kelly. Play down the back. They can't afford to lose him. Now we're going back inside to Braden, Braden Reed. This Reed. is dangerous here. Player of the year in the under 18s. He's been tackled two metres out. Ball goes to dummy half. Now Ryan says the blue shirts have pulled him up down the back. Smart play by the Dungown blue shirts. Yeah, it's uh, unfortunate for a. <coughs> unfortunate for a 
a uh, for North Tamworth, but um, that's the rules. If the blue shirt uh, signals to the referee that he needs time, he's, he doesn't really get a choice. He's got to call it. Uh, mm. Question, is it blue or orange that can pull the game up? Blue blue and orange. Yellow can't. Yellow's just your league save. They're just your, your messenger. Uh, blue's your um, first aid officer, and your orange is your head trainer. He has ultimate authority but your blue shirt can stop the train the play but the referee pretty much has to go by their wishes I reckon um, I reckon Clay's got hit where it really hurts <laughs> and um, as I say uh, Dungowan can't afford to lose Clay not, not just his dummy half play but his defence around the right he okay, plays back on the ball comes to Kobe Bone not a good delivery but he goes back down the short side to young, uh, one of the Ellis boys couldn't quite get a number now not sure who that is I think it's Bowen. Is it Bowen on the wing or Blair? 17. <laughs> Some of the numbers will be a little bit off for us, guys, so we'll do the best we can with the kids that we do know. Now we've had a penalty. Kobe Bowen opens Kobe his Bowen. mouth. and he's had a little bit to say. Yeah, Timmy, I'll leave that number 17's name to you. Yeah, I'll pass that on to Mick, that one. <laughs> we'll just say 17. That's a great touch finder from young Trent Taylor. R- Radar Whiskey. I oh, know that's going to be wrong now. We've got time out. Somebody's going to get warning here. Yeah, Norse. Ryan's going to call out who here, Kobe Bone. Yep, that's the only problem with Kobe. Every now and then he just loses the plot. I'll be surprised if Ryan probably don't give him a little spell. No. Yeah, good. So that's a grand final, boys. Uh, we've got a couple of hotheads in both sides. They uh, need to stay on the footy. Play footy. That's a grand final. They get 10 in the bin. Okay, yeah, good run by um, Blakey Gimman off to Jet Butler, then on to Fernando. Kobe Bone comes in over the top with Braden Reed, good solid tackle. We've got Clay Friedman's obviously over his little uh, incident. Then yeah, load, the loading up here on the right side, Trent the tall, Kyle, Kyle Johnson. Johnson. Good, good, good line, line good by line. Kyle, good tackle in the end Quick too play the ball. by Coleman. Ball's back to, that's Blair Maloney sniffing around the middle, the little winger. Good tackle there by Haywood. The North, replacement North under, for Norse. Norse under pressure, 15 metres out. Trent Taylor's made a difference since he's come. Good ball again by Trent. He's a uh, good, good offload to Cole. Cooper Trent, Harris. How did he get that away? Trent's made a difference since he's come into the pivot. Clay's going to come to the left, to the right, out to Trent. Good ball. Nice try to Dungown. It's uh, a bit too easy. We've just set it. We've just. The uh, North Tamworth guys are calling for a forward pass, but the, uh, for mine, the touch judge was in perfect position to call that. That was all. Awesome. that Trent Taylor's gone into the pivots, and, and for me, he's made a big difference to the Dungown side since he's been. Uh, I'm not sure he's at six or seven, but he's somewhere in there, and for me, he's made a difference to the side. Well, I think Ferg shifted him to the left edge for the first four or five minutes of the half, but now he's he's come over and um, do know that him and Kyle Johnson have got a, a great working relationship on the field, and you just seen then yeah, Kyle's run some. Tell, no- you just seen it, like, you know, Kyle's hit some great lines. You know, a couple of short balls from Trent. I'm not sure how Kyle got that ball away to. to um, to, to Coops, but uh, it was a good offload. Big kick here for Trent. Um, Probably down by, the down by 12, so this could be a the good thing was Coop caught it too. So it didn't take long to set that up, Trenny. But um, oh, but um, I'll just say the touch judge is in a better position than me, but it looked pretty good. Yeah, I, <laughs> I thought they were going to go up too, but obviously yeah. it's just gone outside. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it looked it looked back. Like I said, the, the two touch judges in a way better position than we are. Friday, yeah. Uh, but um, for me, at the moment, Trent, Trent's dominating the game. He's coming to half back and he's, he's a very classy little player. It comes back to Mick Kobe Bone. Like, um, Norse it mounted pressure um, pushing into the Dungown try line. Um, Kobe comes up with two mouths. He gets marched 40 metres. So, you know, like them little disciplines, when you're 16-4 up, that, which they were, you just got to hold your head there and be prepared to, you know, take the referee's call and move on with it. Yeah, well, it certainly took the pressure off them. Like they were a tackle inside the ten, penalty, then marched, you know, then kicked out of trouble. So, but they're eighteen-year-old men. That that happens. Charman to kick off now. The game becomes interesting. Just had to wait Timmy Walsh up again. <laughs> so it's uh, sixteen-eight, and I've got around about uh, twenty minutes to go roughly again um, it's not the official clock because we've missed the start but Jack Todd has a good solid run Blake Gimmon gets out from dummy half gets a good ball away to Clay Friendlin yep, I think he shifted Ferg shifted um, Jinman into low. dummy half Clay, Clay Friendlin back to lock starting to come alive Dungown there yeah, a couple offloads and 
Bl- Blake, he'll do a fair bit of trouble at dummy up because he is quick. He is quick out of there and he doesn't mind having a run. Um, so if the you know, North Tamworth markers aren't alive, he, he'll make him pay. He's come, he's come into dummy half now. Zell plays the ball. He comes out to the right side to Trent Taylor again. Another short ball to Kyle Johnson. Another tight line. Yeah, Touch good decision. Judges. I thought that was yeah. forward, Mick, and he got Trent Taylor then. Yeah, good. It was a, a touch judge call. Michael Kuvro on this uh, this sideline. He's called that one. Uh, the touch judges have had a good game so far. Yeah, yeah, I see big Timmy Gordon warming up on the sideline. I'm a big fan of Timmy's. I think North Tamworth are, are really lacking his size out there at the moment. Um, I'd be getting out of him out there as quick as I can. Yeah, you're dead right, Timmy. With 18 minutes to go, they probably need two more stints out of him, don't they? Like yeah. two stints, and he probably needs to be working on six or seven carries between now and the end of the game, really, to yeah, get Norse sure. on the front foot because just before half time he changed the momentum yeah. to Norse oh 100% look they only need to be 6 or 7 minutes I know that sounds funny they only need to be 6 or 7 minutes spells but he can do plenty of damage in that time and we've come out to um, oh, we've got a what's it, he's coming all inside the 10 a back chat there. Yeah, somebody's yep. and I think um, Trent Trent after the last try was with Ryan um, the referee and was having a yak and then I think he got Trent then um, to come out of the scrum uh, and mouthing said. off I don't know why you would say something when you're coming out of a scrum, but uh, an opportunity because North Timmouth knocked on at the scrum and then they give away a penalty. I think I think I think North North Tamworth really need to get the ball to Dan Kelly in this range of the field. Mate, Timmy Gordon on now, wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. Try to score here and they really sort of haven't used Dan Kelly enough this second half. You've caught you've caught it. He's more, he's jogging on the sideline there anyway. Ball comes back to Walker, Dylan Walker, the centre. Um, he punches it forward. They're only 20 out on the attack here. Second tackle, Norse. Liam Ball at dummy half. Off on to Laywood. Good, uh, good solid yeah. tackle there by uh, uh, Haywood. Fernando underneath. Ball he goes for another run from dummy half. Probably not the right time for your hooker to be dipping out. But um, here we got uh, Sharman at, at dummy half out to Kobe Bone. Nice little ball of Braden Reed out the back from the blind side. No penalties here, boys. Good solid tackle on the last. Didn't get to the kick, but it's going to be a turnover on North Tamworth, sorry, on the Dungown line. So Dungown's going to have to come, looks like about a metre from their own try line. Not a bad result. Um, rolls again, you know, rather than give up seven tackles, you play the set out. You turn it over there, like it should be tackle two or three before they get outside the 20 rather than seven tackles. It was, Mick. I was probably a little bit critical of what they threw at Dungow and then they didn't ask a lot of questions. They they set up probably for one little play with Braden popping in off of, off the shoulder of uh, um, Kobe Bone. But now it becomes a defence. They've really got to put the pressure on Dungow and make them kick long here. Big Sammy Driscoll's having his first run. He's just replaced young Fernando. That's Sammy's first run. Blake Gimmons going for a 40 20. He's got the legs on it. It's just a matter of it's going to bounce to the right and no, it bounces to him. Won't run dead though, but it's, going to, it's still a good kick. So it's going to make North Tamworth come from at least their 20 metres on on first tackle. Good what kick about chase. action from Blake, Blake Gimmon? He's he kicked from the 30, first tackle uh, 15 metres out from the North Tamworth line. Now, you know, Dungown need to muscle up, keep him down here, and make North Tamworth kick deep into the wind. Yeah, that was a great kick by Jim and great chase. Now the pressure's right on Norse. This is a good run by Braden Reed. One off the ruck. He's, he's made 20 metres there in a great run. Another carry up run by the winger here. He has got some legs. But, uh, he's a Jerry spirited Roberts. player. He can run. He, I've seen him score some yeah, oh, good mate, tries. That, that is a great carry by the little winger. He not only made 50 metres, but he brought a penalty. That was tough. That was real good. He's, um, I've seen him score plenty of runaway tries similar to that there during the year. Um, but he, look, he, you know, it was a good run by Braden Reed. Got him out of a bit of trouble. Um, good quick play of the ball. They come to the edge. Little um, Amakai Roberts, I think it is. I think this, I wrong. this set in, Mick, for Norse, has got to be one of their best sets for the game. They've got to really add some pressure here. They've got to ask some questions. And if they can't come up with points, they need a repeat or... You know, to really put some um, build pressure here against Dungowan. Yeah, and, and it's probably equally important for, for Dungowan that they don't give up a try, or more importantly, don't give away some silly penalties and, and with the possibility of somebody going to the bin. Braden Reed slices through. That's the group four under 18's best and third player. Braden Reed has just put his stamp on the game with a darting, jinking run. Little dummy to the outside, cuts back inside, scores under the post. 
Jack Todd, very critical there. I reckon that foot, he just could not plant it down, stop, and make the tackle on Braden Reed. That's a tackle that Jack Todd would make. You know, yeah, that's Ken, just a bread. come out to have another talk to the uh, to the referee, um, but now he's gone back to his huddle. Uh, that was just a, a good, um, you'd have to say, an individual try. Um, it was. It was good shape. Them. Good shape. They 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 took a couple forward. They got the ball to Kobe Bone, which um, Dan Kelly run a good uh, hotline there or a block play, and Braden got it. Then he stepped off that right foot, which he's known for, and just you know, he, explosive speed. He was just too quick for the cover, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, guys. I, I I'll give a rap to Tommy Sharm, and I reckon he controlled that set there, and that, that gave the space for for Braden Reed to to use his running game, where we all know he's very dangerous. Yeah, look, it probably come on the back. Like, Braden Reed got a good, quick play of the ball. And the young uh, Amakai Roberts, I think it is, got that little run down here. But Dungown giving away the penalty, and it was a fair penalty at the end of that set, well, not that set, but that tackle for holding down. You know, two tackles later they score. Uh, it's um, just back to back, little efforts, little efforts. They need to look now probably for, you know, them little that the little fella the speed there. They can probably utilise it to come out of trouble there because Braden Reed onto the winger, um, Roberts, them runs. Um, sets it up for a, a real big finish here for Dungow and they're really going to have to play their best footy um, to get themselves back into this. I'd like to see Thomas Sharman take control of this set here, get a good kick into the corner. And they're too lethargic, Dungown, I think. I, don't, I, I, I can't see him getting out of there. Uh, Hudson uh, Shaw has converted that. Um, Hudson was one of the finest in the uh, leading point scorers. Dungown's gone for the short kick, hasn't come up with the goods. Uh, we've got North Timworth leading 22 to 8, um, and by our clock, a rough 12 minutes. Um, Cole Johnson turn- stole the ball then um, off Sharman. He, they went for the short kick off Sharman, caught of it, then Cole Johnson stripped, and referee said knock back, which was correct ruling and Dungown now at the footy on halfway. It's going to be an interesting 10 minutes because Dungown, like they're, they're down by what, 15, 14 points going to have to um, play some expansive football but still be composed. Another good ball by Trent, another short run, good tackle by Hudson Shaw and Trent gets out from down the good run Trent down the short side, made some good yards 15, nearly a 20 metre run it's uh, tackle 3 we go to Kyle Johnson, another strong run by Kyle Johnson. Been very good today, Kyle, in the back row. That's the fifth and last. Eight metres out. Gimmon goes a short side himself. And that goes in a touch. I'd Not like sure. to put a tackle count on Kobe Bone today, Mick, as well. He made four out of that set then, Kobe Bone, and two of them were very telling. I, I know um, we, we teach kids to play what they see, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if that was the right play then. You've got your whole line backed out there on the last. Um, it was, you know, they were numbered up fairly well on the short side, North Timworth, but... Blake played what he's seen and didn't quite come up. If he scores, different story. Yeah, it was the winger catches it. He was probably an opportunity, but it wasn't on. You know, they needed a better finish then. Um, Zach, Zach Bennett having the first hit up, 15 metres out from the North Temworth try line. Liam Ball goes in a dummy half. Tavita Tavo, marginal pass on that one, has a second hit up. Liam Ball goes in a dummy half, has another scoop. Been very strong for North Temworth today. Needs a little winger with that elbow. Yeah, the little winger, he's moved the dummy half again. Bit of speed out of it. Timmy said it before. Dan Kelly's got the ball now. He's going to be tackled 40 metres out. He needs the find to get himself into the game and really finish this off for Norse Timmy. Yeah, big Timmy Gordon coming onto the field now. I think he'll see a lot more ball off the back of some strong runs from Timmy. But, um, the wind held that one up there. Like Braden's kicked that from the 40, and North Timberth have it on their 40, so the wind definitely got hold of that. Uh, not sure who this winger is. That's Radadaski, I think it is, is how you pronounce it. Sorry if we've got it wrong. It's uh, Blake Gimmons now at dummy half. That's tackle two. Clay Fredlin's come in. I had another hit up. He's uh, about 40 metres, uh, sorry, 50, 52 metres from the North Timberth line. Blake Gimmon has one of those darting runs from dummy half. Caught the markers, lady. Good, lazy, good 15 metre run by Blake. He clays a dummy half now off to Zelly. Another good solid run through the middle there. It's um, uh, Dungown on a bit of a roll here. Gimmon's gone himself again, kicks for himself. Not a real good kick, but they're going to get a result out of it. I'll, I'll take that back. It was a good kick in the end. <laughs> if um, probably Blake's biggest uh, fault when he does go to dummy half was then Trent um, come around to the short side then and probably created numbers if he would have went to Trent but they did get the bounce the North North uh, winger knocked it on so they'll get a full set here and you'd nearly think they got a score here to get themselves back into the game haven't they? Yeah. Jack Todd um, he's struggling with that footy he just needs to do the Jack Todd runs and get back and hit it hard 
It's, um, it'll be interesting. To, this is a big set for Dungown for me. If they don't score here, I'm not sure if they've got enough in the tank to win the game, but uh, it's still a long way to go. Um, we've got Trent Taylor at dummy half. Jack Todd, and we just caught it hard, straight. Inside ball by Trent Taylor. Nice little play. A little bit of enthusiasm coming from the Dungown boys now. Um, I don't know if that's a... Uh, well, it was obviously a set play, but it was a nice little set play. Dummy in, dummy in, and uh, Jack Todd scores. Yep, yeah, too big, too strong there, Jack. Um, like you said, Mick, they needed to the score there. It'll, um, what's it take, 22 to 12, kick to come. They've still got to score two more, and what do you think, there'll be six or seven minutes to go? They're just looking at the way the Dungown ran back. Like there, there can't be a great deal of time on the clock. But um, you know, there's still a chance that you're never out of it, with, you know, especially in under-18s competition. That's the first time Dungown they've been playing. They've been playing this right-hand side the whole whole second half. It's the first time they sort of attack North Camel's right-hand edge, and, and they come up. They come up with, with a try. Great try. It's like you said, Timmy, probably shifting Trent to the right edge. He's going to demand the ball, and they have come to the, their right um, side, the North Tamworth left side, a lot. Um, and that'll be Trent trying to find Kyle Johnson and. Um, sets it up here, Norse. Um, they've still got to play footy, Norse. They, you know, like they've got to get out and tackle here, make them kick out, and they've got to start keep playing footy with the when they get the ball to, to really keep pressure on Dungown. Yeah, I think I think in an under 18s competition, especially, you, you can't shut up shop. I think you've got to keep playing football. So North Tamworth, you know, they've got to keep trying to look at scoring points when when and where they can. And uh, here goes Jet Butler takes the kick off. Not a bad option to take yourself, pick up some free meters. Clay Friendland at dummy half. Not sure who that kid is. I didn't get his number when he ran on, and I can't see in front of him. Okay. Now Zella has another hit up through the middle there. Charmin and Bone make the tackle together. Blake Gimmon comes in a dummy half. He's uh, going to go out to, to Kyle Johnson. Another strong run by Kyle. Nearly through the hole. Good desperation tackle by Timmy Gordon and Tommy Charmin. Tommy Charmin's been good since he's been on. It's a um, long time to get that tackle completed. No penalties there. Then we go out to Kyle, uh, to Jet Butler. Good kick. It's um, probably a little bit, little bit deeper than he needed it to go or wanted it to go. But you know, Dunk, North Tamworth now 15 metres from the try line on tackle one. North Tamworth, North Tamworth are walking there, Mick. Walking back to get on side. We're up the We're at the tackle two now, and we've still got three or four offside. Yeah, Kobe Bones slow, but he's um, slow to get back to you know, onside. But he's he's had a big game, Kobe defensively. Uh, Timmy Gordon, you know, we, you know, Norse need him now to have a big a big hit up in this set somewhere. But uh, Jake Bennett has a solid run. Uh, they're now about 25 from their own try line. Liam Ball has another run from Nomeo. He's been strong, Bally. He, um, again, another one that's got good bumper bars. Very lucky there. I thought Blake Jinman was never square at marker, and um, but. Kobe Bain with a clearing kick. He drives it straight down the middle. Blair Maloney at fullback. Let's it bounce. They're all in front there. Six again. No, no touch, says referee Smeedle. Well, I, I, it's hard to say from where we stand, but um, it looked like I thought Cooper, Cooper Harris got a hand of that, but obviously he didn't. I'll give, the, I'll give the referee the benefit of the doubt and go with him. It'll be tough to hold out here, Dungown. Good run by Cooper Harris, 40 metres from the North Tamworth try line, tackle one. Blake Gimmon comes in, Jet Butler's nice angle in behind the run. Good run by Jet Butler, he's gone straight through. Now he's 15, 10 metres from the North Tamworth try line on tackle two. No penalties to be given away here, and it was. It was going to happen, he's gone a quick tap. Blake Gimmon's uh, gone, tackle one, five metres from the North Tamworth try line. North Tamworth under all kinds of pressure here. This is probably their season, North Tamworth, they can defend this. They probably put one end on the trophy, but if Gundown score here... Oh, half a centimetre from the try line. Good bustling run. Blake Gimmon will probably go himself here. That's, That's nearly got to be a penalty. That'll gone. be 10 in the bin, Mick. I'd say, mate, professional foul. I'd be surprised if it's not. He nearly tackled him before the ball was even picked up. Um, and if it's Braden Reed, it's a big... No, it's going to be... Looks like it's going to be Timmy Gordon. I thought it was Braden Reed that actually made the tackle, but Braden's oh. the captain, I'm guessing. North Tamworth were very lucky there that Dungown had him short there to, oh, okay. the, to, to the left side. Yeah, it worked out good, Timmy, didn't it, to give the penalty yeah. away. He stayed on the field. It yeah. probably saved a try there, Braden Reed. Okay, we've got uh, Jack Todd, big bustling Jack Todd, straight through the middle, five metres, tackled short, pushed back to the 10, so he's about uh, nine metres from the try line. Blake Gimmon at dummy half will go himself. Bustling run. Tries one, probably 30 centimeters from the try line. We got a 
Harrison Freeman. Great close, defence, North Tamworth. Off Great defence. He's got somebody's got ten in the bin. Not uh, not sure what it was ten in the bin for. Professional foul, so I'm I not sure if I'd be running off that quick when you're leading by eight in the grand final, but. The crowd knew better. They slowed him down, but it was too <laughs> late, wasn't it? Getting off awfully quick. Okay, now it's come to Blair Maloney. Good run by Blair Maloney. Oh, he didn't oh. need the pass. It's um, he probably just needed to hang on to that. It's um, Dungown can't afford to give a penalty here. I've got I've got roughly five six minutes left on the clock. Tackle two. Good tackle by Zelly. Yeah, young Gabardi tackled. Now Zach Turnbull. No, Zach Bennett. Sorry. Jake Bennett, I'll get it right eventually. Jake Bennett takes it up 15 minutes, uh, 15 metres from the uh, North Demo try line. Braden Reed inside to Dan Kelly. Good run by Dan, good solid run by Dan, good contact, good metres after contact. He's now about uh, 28 metres from the try line, and I do think. And he got one uh, in the shin there, Mick, yeah, as he was finding the ground. I, I, heard, I heard the contact, and we both know Dan Kelly well enough. He doesn't go down if he's not, if he's not injured. Too silly to go down is Dan Kelly, Mick. By the no, look of the, the body language, I think North Tamworth really needed that. Yes, Timmy, they did. And this this next three or four minutes is going to feel a long time for them, isn't it? They're just trying to hang on at the moment. OK, time's back on. Liam Ball at dummy half. Kobe Bone outside. Good ball by Kobe. Jake Ellis, I think it is. Good chase, Trent Taylor. Good tackle, Trent Taylor. 40 metres out from the uh, Dungallon line. Last tackle. Great ball by both, Kobe both Bone then on to Jake Ellis. Mick, has he got a brother? Has he got a brother, that guy? Because he's... He Job. One. All right, he Come off the, the bench, mate. Yeah. 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 Yeah, they're, they're twins, I think. Um, if I don't have that right, I'm sorry, but I'm fairly sure they're twins. Jacob and Jake, I think, or... One, one minute left um, on the unofficial clock. It, um, Great play by Kobe Bain again. Um, it was, a, you know, it was a, an intelligent play. It was a player of experience. Um, but it's not over yet. Trent Taylor feeds the scrum. We go to Blair Maloney. Has a run. He's going to go around him. Good run by Blair Maloney. A lot of good yards there. He's now 45 from the North Timberth try line. We've got it. That's the siren there. So we're under a minute. It's, uh, the ball's going to get thrown around here willy-nilly. And in goes. Jeff Butler's. I reckon they're all offside, the chasers. Just let it run dead. That's uh, two grand finals for North Timworth today. It's a good game of under-18s rugby league, guys. Yeah, rugby league there in the um, grand it was a very good game of footy. All credit to Norse. Um, they hung, they started the game very well um, and then that four or five minutes before half time set the win up, the big front rower come back on and carded them forward and that, that four or five minutes before half time really set that victory up. Yeah, look, Tommy Leroy has done a great job with the kids four or five weeks ago. They weren't travelling as well as they, they finished the season but that's, now there's good coaching. Um, that's two grand finals for North Timber today. They've got one to go. But um, who's your man of the match, man? I'm going to go Kobe Bone. Um, worked himself to a standstill. Or if I was going to go for a smoky, I'd go for the fullback um, Constable. I thought his defence, he saved. I reckon he saved three or four tries at different times, and he was as safe as hell. And he pushed around the ball very well. Well, for me, I think it's going to come down to one of three players. It'll be either Braden Reed, Kobe Bone, or Liam Ball. But I think Braden Reed will get it. Yeah, my pick's Braden Reid. Oh, he's a great young player with a, with a bright future. And the nine for Norse was brilliant, I thought. Uh, yeah, I, I just think Braden's try under the post probably sealed the victory. But the amount of work that young Borley, and, and, and again, I'll say um, you know, thanks to, to Timmy. He's got to go and run water for the reserve grade, mate. Much appreciated being on. Your, your input, very little that it was, was valuable. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> thanks. Uh, but, um, I just mentioned the two hookers, young Clay Friedland. And, um, and and Liam Ball were outstanding. Uh, the amount of work they got through defensively, and and look now they both asked plenty plenty of questions when they got out from dummy half. 
Yeah, I, I go for Kobe Bone because when Norse needed it, the last, you know, 15 minutes, he was making two and three tackles a set. Um, he grabbed the game by, you know, at Scruffy, threw a good ball for Ellis to go through. He's kicked it into touch late in the game. But, um, you know, there were some real unsung heroes for Norse out there today, Mick. They, um, you know, they're not a big side. Um, they work real hard for each other. And, yeah, Tommy's done a great job with them. Look, it was an interesting game because at different stages, you know, North Timworth were dominating and different stages, Dungowan were, were dominating. But um, you know, all, all in all, it was a, a good under-18s game. Um, you know, Dungowan probably didn't use that win the second half. Uh, North Timworth probably didn't use it in the first half. But um, it's a grand final win um, to North Timworth. Well done, guys. And uh, we'll just, again, before we go to a little bit of a break, we'll, uh, we'll thank our sponsors in Chewies, Wayne Cabman Financial Associates, and also the Blanche Family and AMPS Rural for their sponsorship today. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the reserve grade one.
Tommy, Benny and Dan for the year they put into us. But we finally got there. And uh, good game, boys. The Bears. Tom Sharman, uh, Braden Reed, Jariah, Kai Bone, Jock Ellis, Amakai, Jacob Ellis. Dylan Walker, uh, Kobe Potts, uh, Borley, Zaki, Siegel, uh, um, Ashton, Hunter, Dan Kelly, Tevi, and Rodo. Uh, Tom. Uh, Dan and Ben.
past the five minute warning for Manila Tigers and Lumbi Katinka Roosters. So, five minute warning. North Tamo Bears 18 to go into the lap for you. A couple of minutes to get that done, and they will be kicking off in reserve grade. To the uh, north, back to North Tamworth Oval, where the uh, reserve grade side isn't far from uh, taking the field. The reserve grade side, sorry. Um, hopefully, we've got somebody to come up and give me a hand. Otherwise, you've got to listen to me for the rest of the day. Um, for the reserve grade today, you've got to Kindu, um, Manila, the minor premiers taking on Katingle in the reserve grade competition. The referee is Michael Lace. The linesman uh, Antoine Hampton, Damien Blinman, with the in goals being Stephen Pleffer and Michael Couvray. The um, Cootie side, number one, Michael Rutherford, number two, Jesse O'Leary, number three, Marshall Field, number four, Damo Johnson, number five, Tommy Good, number six is Leroy Livermore, number seven is Jacob Simpson, number eight is La uh, Clad Clarence Ladd-Jones, number nine is Brodie Cummins, number ten and the captain coach is Damian Allen, number eleven is Riley Taylor, number twelve is Brodie Souter, number thirteen is Dustin Munn. Number 14, Aaron Hall. Number 15 is Mick Dundee, Aaron Kondrick. Number 16 is Sammy Knight. Number 17 is Z Nick Zahara. Number 18 is Trey Cronin with number 19, Josh Jail. For the minor premiers in Manila, we have number 1, Abel Carney. Number 2, Blake Smith. Number 3, Bradley Way. Number 4, Isaac Devine. Number 5, Michael Bevett. Number 6, Adam Rutley. Number 7, and captain coach, Mitch Doring. Number 8, Rodney Rolls. Number 9, Nick Martin. Number 10, Nathan Flynn. Number 11, Sean Spence. Number 12, Nathan Vesey. Number 13, Jay Starr. Number 14, Reese Dixon. Number 15, Bo Harry. Number 16, Mitchell Swain. Number 17, Andrew Lovegrave. Number 18, Ashley Swan. And number 26, Benny Tabor. Uh, at the presentation night on Wednesday night, um, Robbie Doolan was the highest point scorer for the year with 212 points. 
And also the highest try scorer, kicking 22, uh, sorry, scoring 22 tries, kicking 62 goals. And today's captain coach, Mitch Doring, was voted as the best player of the year. Uh, second was Jackson Brookman from Canada. And third, uh, equal third was Rodney Rolls and Robert Doolan from Manila, respectively, and Narrabri. Well done to all those. Third grade grand final is about to get underway. Have Michael Lace as referee in this one. Um, and error by uh, by the cootie to start not taking the kick off on the full. It'll be a line drop out. Uh, not the ideal start for the cootie boys. Um, must mention that um, Manila didn't play rugby league last year, so it's their first year back into our. Uh, revamp competition playing in the reserve grade competition so congratulations on, on a great year so far and to the Kittingle side first time they've had a reserve grade didn't have one last year but picked up one this year uh, a lot of good work done by the club to get uh, two sides or four sides in the competition so congratulations to both clubs just on making the grand final and it's a bonus to win it Rodney Rolls has a hit up he's about 20 metres from the uh, Kittingle try line Damien Allen and Lad Jones made that tackle We've got Mitch uh, Nick Martin at dummy half. It, um, with Nathan Flynn having the hit up, he comes to the short side to Jay Star. Jay Star goes to the line. Good tackle by Dustin Munn over the top. And uh, Riley Taylor down low. Nick Martin at dummy half out to Mitch Doring, the group four set reserve grade player of the year. Ball goes out to number four. 
in Isaac Devine. He's tackled about eight metres from the short from the line. Mitch Dorian's got the ball, little kick through. Sean Spencer's offside. Good pick up. Oh, he's caught a knock on. I, uh, I thought he picked that up clean, Riley Taylor, but he's not complaining, so he's probably got it right, the referee, Michael Lease. The, uh, the scrum will be fed 10 metres from the, uh, the QD line, so back to back pressure for the boys. Jace Star picks up at the back of the scrum. Ball comes out and rightly. Abel Carney, Bradway hangs onto it and he's called a knock on. Uh, must have touched the cutie player in and again Bradway's not a, uh, not blowing up so it's a, a knock on. Another good call by referee Lace. Uh, all the uh, all the pressure has now gone off the cutie side. the silence just trying to get somebody to come up and help Leroy Livermore goes to the line goes through puts Damien Allen away Dustin Munn in support push off one push off two has the ball stolen in the one on one race and now uh, we've got a penalty to Cootie for a one on uh, for, sorry for a steal it must have been two in a tackle nice little raid by Leroy Livermore down the short side picked up Damien Allen support who had Dustin Munn back on the inside uh, opportunity first opportunity to the Katingle It'll be uh, 10 metres, they're going to take the, the two points. Dustin Munn's lining up this penalty. It's um, obviously Damian Allen and Leroy Livermore are confident in his goal kicking ability. He's already set for the kickoff. He's got the ball set on the mound. T. First points in the 2019 Reserve Grade Grand Final go to Dustin Munn and the Katindal Roosters. About four minutes into the first half. Penalty goal to number 13, Dustin Munn. 2-0 in the early minutes of the first half. Again, Mitch Doring starts for the Manila Tigers. Puts the ball nice and high. It's going to land on about the 10 metre line. Clarence Jones is the first hit up. Uh, big chase from Nathan Vasey. It's um, Brody Souter has a hit up. At uh, Brody Cummins a dummy half. The ball will come to Dustin Munn, then on to Damian Allen. No, he takes the ball himself. Good tackle by Rodney Rolls and Sean Spence, nice and low. 
in there with Nick Martin. Brody Cummings, it's going to be a sloppy play of the ball. Nick Dustin uh, tried a bit of his wily tactics and tried to milk a penalty and didn't come up with the goods. We'll have a scrum again. Cudi under some pressure at their own doing. It's uh, about 35 metres from the uh, Man uh, North, sorry, the Katingal try line. During the year, uh, it's been a, an evenly contested contest between the two sides, with Manila having a two-point victory and a six-point victory on the two occasions that they've played. So I don't think this game will be too much different. Nick Vasey out in the, uh, the centres, playing back row, but out in the centres has a good run. He's about 29 metres now from the Katingal try line. Rodney, uh, sorry, Jay Starr, with the world's meanest mullet. 20 metres tackled from the try line by Clad Jones and Dustin Munn. Nick Martin at dummy half comes to Mitch Doring, turns Mitch, uh, sorry, Nathan Flynn in underneath. Now about 25 metres from the try line. Another tackle by Dustin Munn and Clad Jones. Lad Jones, Clad Lad. Mitch Doring, uh, sorry, Adam Rutley, dummies inside, gives the ball to Sean Spence. Got Mitch Doring at dummy half. Adam Rutley's put himself into the game. Dummies goes himself. Gets a nice offload to Abel Carney. First try of the grand final scored by number one, Abel Carney. Spent a lot of time at North Semmers playing first grade, young Abel. But uh, well done. Well done by... Uh, well, uh, well done. We've got a bit of uh, hostilities in the crowd towards the Katingle players. But I actually think it's uh, the Katingle people having a crack at Katingle people. Go, uh, go figure that. But anyway, back to the football. Abel Carney scores a try from a, uh, a good Adam Rutley run. Um, bounced off a couple. Nice inside ball and uh, Abel goes in pretty much untouched. Ran about seven minutes into the game. Uh, again, another big win here. It'll play, a, a, I think, a factor in the game. Uh, Manila have it in the first half. It'll be interesting to, to see if they get a, a good use of it. Um, Abel Carney's got the ball set up, 25 metres roughly from the line, about 25 metres infield, moves in, strikes it nicely and converts his own try. So now we have Vanilla, minor premiers leading six points to two over the Katingal Roosters. Vanilla open their account through for one, Abel Carney. Abel converted his own try. Takes a score to Manila Tigers 6, Katingal Roosters 2. Okay, so we've, uh, I have found a volunteer to come along, but he's just having a steak sandwich and a can of cake, so he'll jump in when we can. Now, we've had a kick-off by Cootie, Rodney Rolls, the um, ex Bendemir boy, Baraba boy, Manila boy, living at Manila now, I believe. Uh, another young player that's come through the academy roles when we get the chance, don't rush. Another player that comes through the academy and now playing some good footy at the back end of his career. He's got to be pushing some age numbers up there. Jay Starr heavily involved at this stage from, from Manila. He's been uh, had at least one hit up every set of six so far. Jace, season campaigner for Baraba. Uh, very good footballer in his days out of Baraba. Uh, funny pass from Nick Martin out to Nathan Vasey. Big gangly ranging second row, causing a bit of trouble for that cutie left edge. Another good ball. Here we go. Cootie and Manila's away again. He's uh, probably missed an opportunity to score there. Young Isaac Devine probably missed a chance, but the ball's come to Adam Rutley. He goes back inside to Abel Carney. Back to Adam Rutley. Back to Sean Spence. Bradway kind of picks it up. We've got an offside penalty. And it's uh, a definite opportunity he went missing there for, for the Manila Tigers. Uh, I think if Sean Spence was able to get a clear ball there to Bradley Way, <coughs> if he doesn't score, he puts his winger away. So Nick Martin takes the tap. Bradley Way, the centre, has a hit up, tackled. About 10 metres from his try line. Good low tackle from Brodie Cummins and Dustin Munn. Bit of push and shove. Jay Starr involved again. Offload to Rodney Rolls. Has a good little offload, Rodney. So, you know, Cutie need to be aware of that. Trying to play the ball. Damo Allen did a good job at slowing down. Nick Martin gets a ball away to Nathan Flynn. That was behind him. Still about eight metres out from the King line. Uh, pushing hard. Mitch Doring gets a board. Steps, steps, steps. Reaches out. Uh, referee Lace has called a knock on R couldn't be in any better position than what he was Lacey so hard to dispute that call only a matter of centimetres he's got him scoring short 
No, sorry, knocking on short of the line. So that's why it's a 10 metre tap and not a 20 metre restart. Rolls back for round number two. We'll be on for the first grade. Hopefully Tubby Taylor's not too upset and he'll come up for the first grade with us. Down there licking his lips, Mick. Um, <laughs> wiping off the tear or two and uh, he'll be up. As we see, Katingle working it out. Yeah, Good tackle by Abel run. Carney. Yeah, Leroy Livermore has a run from dummy half. Good run. Stepping run. Looking for supporters. Gets a good ball away out the back. Now we've got um, Marshall Field has a hit up. They're about 30 metres from their own try line. It's uh, Brody Cummins comes in a dummy half. With slow play the ball though. Lawrence Clad Lad Jones has a hit up. Rodney Rolls comes in to help Nathan Flynn and Jay Star complete that tackle. Brody Cummins at dummy half. The ball's gonna go to Leroy Livermore. He's outside inside and takes him on straight. Good work by Katingle here, yep, earned the penalty. Sean Spence in all over the ball. So Manila penalised. Uh, Leroy Livermore comes in and takes a kick for touch. Not a bad touch finder into the wind. Tommy uh, Gould goes to the wing. Brody Cummins, I dare say Brody Saddle will have the first little hit up. Nice start to the set. Uh, inside the, the Manila half, about 30 metres out from dummy half. For, sorry, from the try line. Sammy Knight has that hit up. Leroy Livermore setting up play. Nice ball to Michael Rutherford. Very, very nice play by the Katingle oh, Roosters. No, we've yeah. caught a forward pass. Must have been the last one because the one from Leroy to Michael Rutherford was perfect. But that uh, must have been the ball from Michael Rutherford back inside the dust of one called forward. Missed opportunity rolls. You can't have them in a grand final. No, um, I know we're a long way away, but geez, it looked pretty sweet from here, Mick. Um, the 5 8. Uh, Livermore took the ball into the line, dug in, and um, off his shoulder come the fullback. It was going to be a good try, which I thought. He's had a good year, uh, Leroy. Like I said on the podcast earlier in the week, he, it's probably been the, the, his best year of football so far. But I just uh, got uh, Pete Stevens joining me again and Craig McLeod, the community um, engagement officer. Is that what you call it? Is that your role, Craig? That's it, Mick. You got it in one. Yeah, it's a good game of footy here, nice and. Uh, Plenty of atmosphere here today at uh, Wollaston Oval, and it, it's been some great games of footy so far. The league tag, the under 18s, it's tremendous. If you're at home get a ch and you've got a chance to get down here, it's not too late, get, make your way down here. Good run by Shawnee Spence. Just on that last opportunity that Cootie had, mate, do you blame the ball runner or the, the support player? Um, it's it had to be called a forward pass and, and an opportunity gone missing. Is it you know, Dustin in support or is it Michael for passing? Oh. It's hard, that, one of those hard ones, 50-50 going on the line there, I suppose. But uh, I, I didn't think it was too bad from here, but we are a, we are a bit of a distance away here on the angle. Well, I'd hope the touch judges are in better position than us. But anyway, Cootie bringing the ball out, tackle one from their own try line. Nick Zahara, who could well be backing up for first grade at this stage, comes in and has a hit up. It's, um, the little winger has a scoot. Good, solid tackle. Oh, we've had a head clash. Two of Manila players... The winger, uh, Bradley Way and uh, the winger, they slap as they go back. It was a fairly solid head clash with uh, Michael Bevert. Leroy Livermore, dummy the kick. Nice little ball, puts Nick Zahara away. Adam Rutley chase hard. Leroy Livermore, the man of the moment at the moment. Big dummy inside, is he going to have the legs to go? All no, he's got ankle tack from behind. What a great effort, then comes up with, uh, just needed a play of the boy. Leroy Livermore is causing all kinds of trouble for the Manila side at the moment. But we'll praise the number 17, I think it was. More dummies out there More. than Baby K then, Mick. <laughs> sure is, Craig. He, um, we six, any... six looks dangerous, doesn't he? Like yeah, he, he come from the open to the short side then to create a number dummy and went straight through. And um, I thought if um, Nick Zara was awake, I thought that pass was on because I thought he could still score in the yeah. corner. Yeah, it was a good chase there by... Um, Andrew Lovegrave, I think it might have been, it didn't give up on the chase and just got enough to stop Leroy. But again, yeah, Leroy probably just needed to get down and play the ball. But um, yeah, another opportunity gone. They've had two chances. Cootie, they've just got to turn them into points. 
for a reserve grade game when they are shipped both sides shifting the ball well and you got Livermore for uh, Katingle and you've got Doring um, for Manila they'll definitely ask questions every time they get the ball and then you know you've got Adam Rutley that's been around for a thousand years uh, Ken you know, we, you know he set up the first try with a good hard run but that's a free flowing game at the moment quite fast paced for reserve grade high quality game uh, Rodney Rolls has another one of his tradesman light runs makes some good little metres Nick Martin picks up, has a nice little run from dummy half, gets through, had a little bit of support play. I don't think that was uh, Andrew Lovegrave, but Mitch Doring, long ball outside to Nathan Vasey, then on to Isaac Devine, I think it is. He's had some good runs today. Is he going to score? No, caught, pulled up short on the last. Oh, from end one to end. From one corner to the far end of the card it all the way. Um, he it, looks... It, he looks dangerous, um, the centre out there. What's his name, Mick? Uh, Isaac Devine, I think it uh, might be. Isaac Devine, a um, couple of times he's been on the end of a good back line shift. And he's he's probably there, he's defensive, there. good effort there. He's, uh, he's deceptibly quick, but uh, great defence here by the Manila side to push Cootie back into the running in goal, some more pressure for Cootie. Yeah, Could be a high-scoring game, the way they're going from end to end. Yeah, well, you'd expect them to knock up, um, as being reserve graders, but the captain coach there, inspirational Doring, he's um, got underneath the ball and driven back three or four metres and forced Katingle here to line drop out so Manila will come on the attack. For you, Bones being like the pathways management man now and, and part of the, the CRL system for Manila that hadn't played football in you know, rugby league last year, sat a year out for, for different reasons, but to come back this year in the, the reserve grade competition and make the grand final with the majority of their players, locals one way or another, if not living there, come from Barber or have some kind of connection to the town. It's a pretty big effort, isn't it? It is, and to be playing here on grand final day is um, it's a mighty effort. Um, you know, it is in reserve grade, but it's, you know, all them little towns need some recognition and football's, you know, especially in the times they are, keeps them going, don't they? So, um, and not only to put a footy side on the field, Mick, but to, to be competitive and only be beat once or twice, a great effort. We've got an opportunity here, Ashley Swan. It's uh, pretty easy in the end for Ashley. Ashley Swan, um, he lives at Atunga, so he, he can be claimed as a Manila local. Uh, sp uh, spent a lot of time with, with North Tamworth and, and out at Dungown there for a little while too. Um, probably should have played a lot more first grade than what he did, but not known for his training. But with his mullet, he looks like a skunk with a grey hair down the side. Yeah, that was good work. Good shift again by Manila. They... Um they shifted to the 5-8 the Rutley and Rutley threw a good ball out to Swan and Swan put the winger away. Yeah, no, and the, uh, the we keep saying reserve grade, the pace has been outstanding. It's uh, played at a frenetic pace out there. It's, everything's on the up. The play of the ball's been outstanding. The push up there coming down that short side was outstanding and uh, full credit to the Manila Tigers there. I, I don't know if I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, but you probably at this stage is probably a little bit above reserve grade standard. Um, obviously, grand final people pick up and and do play a little bit better, but like I said, it is um, it is reserve grade. But at this stage, I think it's a little bit above that. Well, the two best sides, um, you know, like and it is it is it. It's very good standard. Um, when you look through both sides, you know, obviously Katingle have got a first grade side that have going good so at some stage this year some of these boys would have spent time there and oh, what a tremendous you look kick. at the manila yeah foot, the fullback abel carney's um put that straight between the sticks so manila 12 uh Katingle six yeah well, you look at the manila side mick you've got abel himself spent plenty of time at norseman and won a couple of comps there you got the halfback well no uh, disrespect to the reserve grade competition but he's probably a little bit you know for them to him to be leading around he's a little bit above that and you got plenty of blokes that have been around, like, you know, getting older, but have been around a long time. And yeah, look, yeah. Abel Carney played a lot of first grade at North Tamworth as a, a goal-kicking winger, mostly, um, a little bit of fullback. Uh, just a correction on your score, Rolls, it's actually 12-2, mate. But you were looking at the cutie side when I was still put. sorry, the Manila side when I was still putting the board up. So we've got another kick off, just a correction there. Sorry, Rolls. Wasn't me strength, Mass Mick. Here's uh, Roddy Rolls bringing the kick off back. Uh, good post-contact metres, so they call in the NRL. Now we've got some, I thought this was Andrew Lovegrave, it's not, but I'll try and catch this young fella's name, but he's been uh, more than willing since he's come on, saved a try earlier and then just had a good hit up there. Adam Rutley comes down a short side to Ashley Swan, another good strong run, good set for Manila you know, after a try, they're on the 50 metres with two tackles to go, goes out to Jay Star, for me he's been the best player on the park at the moment, heavily involved in attack end events. Tackle four, goes out to Mitch Doring, dummies inside, goes outside to Nathan Vasey, drops the ball, um, 
And now we have uh, Kutinga with the ball. Well, there's the oxygen pill, and they probably need it a little bit, Kuti, but uh, that might uh, give them that opportunity to sniff back in the game now. You probably look at the, the two teams, probably an advantage Manila has got is their bench. Like you just said it, Mick, the, the young fellow, the 17, don't know his name at the moment, but he's been very willing, and Ashley Swan, since they've come on, coming off the bench, have been real strong for Manila. Yeah, it's, it's got Ben uh, Andrew Lovegrave in the program, but I'm fairly sure that's not Andrew Lovegrave, but we'll go with it. Nick Zahara with a ball, stepping run. There's that man, number 17, again, heavily involved since he's come on. If um, somebody can let us know who he is, it'd be great. Down the short side again, I'm not sure why Rutley, um, Mick Rutherford, sorry, went back inside when he probably created an opportunity for his winger there. Dustin Munn comes in the dummy half. Brody Cummins is going to go through as a decoy. This will be across, uh, AJ Aaron Hall. He's the ladies' league tag coach. He's come onto the field. Good cross-field kick and good take by Isaac Devine. That was brave. You've been very impressive, Isaac. And now he's that uh, Abel Carney jinking run. Uh, to get QD out. Sorry, Manila out a bit of trouble on their 20-metre line. It's um, been a pretty quick game. Been a lot of movement from the ball. Rodney Rolls has another hit up. Good tackle. Brody Souter. Sorry, no, don't know who that one is. Very impressive at the play of the ball, Manila. They've had a good quick play of the balls, which has uh, allowed them to get on that bit of a roll and play on the up so far. Yeah, it's, a, it's a game that's full of energy at the moment. It's, um, you know, I've got it roughly 20 minutes in. Oh, good ball from Jay Starr again. Oh, he's caught it forward. Um, again, we're not in a, a position to see here. And I think it's come from the touch judge, Antoine Hampton. But from, from where we're sitting in the box, it looked like an, another good ball. But anyway, like I said, the touch judges are in good position, so it's hard to argue. Just had an interchange made. Nathan Vasey, or was he trying to get interchange? We've got Bo Harry on the sideline with Benny Tabor. Uh, so it looks like Manila's going to make a double change at the end of the uh, defensive set. Cootie have got the ball 40 metres from the uh, Manila try line. AJ and Hall with the ball goes on to Michael Rutherford. He's uh, a Baraba player, Michael, from a couple of years ago. Played up there for a few years, part of a couple of the uh, premierships. Uh, played a little bit of rugby over the time. Brody Cummins looks like he's now playing hooker. Uh, sorry, lock. Uh, AJ Hall goes in a dummy half. Katingle here, they um, need to start dismounting a bit of pressure and uh, try to find their way back into the score here or get them right back into it here, Mick. Ten metres out, Katingle, good offload from back to the halfback. Oh, nice Jacob Simpson down the sideline and Tommy time. Gould goes into the corner. A nice little offload, I think, from Trey Cronin it might have been. Um, Trey Cronin's one of their under-18s. Again, I'm not 100% sure that's Trey. Um, I know Trey to look at, but I don't see him sitting on the bench, so we'll go with that number's correct. So Trey, Trey, Trey Cronin, sorry. Nice little offload to Jacob Simpson, who put Tommy Gould in the corner. Again, the push-up there, Cooty, but both sides, the push-up all day has been uh, been tremendous from both. Uh, great, great attacking footy coming down that short side and plenty of numbers there and everyone around the footy, so well done. Good build-up to that set too, Craig, wasn't it? You know, they carved it forward through the middle and... Um, they hit a back rower on the edge and then went down the short side and it was a good offload like you said the push up was real good certainly was good quick play of the ball and they had numbers there on that short side and got the result I'll get that score it's 12-6 now Mick now Craig with your role as a community engagement officer um, just give us a bit of a rundown on that and then while you're at it just sort of touch on the importance of both these sides you know having reserve grade because they didn't have them last year. Yeah, no, again, uh, footy sides are important to all local communities and my, my role, I guess, I deal a lot more with the junior side of things, with uh, especially uh, travelling around for all different parts from the bottom end of our region up to the, the very top end. So I do a fair few Ks, uh, visiting schools and clubs and uh, working with the in, hand in hand with the NRL, putting on different programs like that, uh, Voice Against Violence and things like that uh, to improve our young people's lives and try and make things a little bit better. And uh, again, if, if kids are out there playing footy, well, that's a good thing. And hopefully it leads to uh, communities like Manila and Katingal having footy sides on the field, which is uh, what we all want to see in Country Rugby League. Yeah, um, the conversion unsuccessful. The score stays at 12-6. Um, this game looks like that, you know, they try for try and it looks like it's going to, could be some points by the end, but... Um, just tap into Katingle, their energy and that here in reserve grade there. If their first grade bring that today, you'd have to say they'd have to be a chance later on. Yeah, that's 
Uh, I'm be an interesting encounter. I watched Cootie a couple of weeks ago when they played, and they played for 80 minutes, and they were very good. But, um, it's, uh, at the moment, we're in the reserve grade game. Like you're saying, Craig, that you know, rugby league is very important to, to people. Um, it's some, for some people, even though it's bush footy, that's all they have. You know? So it's good that these smaller communities do have teams and involvement in sport. Yeah, no, it's good for the whole of community. So certainly something, and don't forget, we have the girls playing as well now, so the league tag. So, Oh, great push up there. Good work. Six away there, just tackle from behind on Manila there. Leroy Livermore uh, had a very, very short break and he must have just walked off to get some water and come back on, but Ashley Swan penalised. Lee. He's, he's causing a fair bit of damage down this left side, Cootie's left side, Manila's right side for the for the Manila boys. Uh, sorry, Manila right side, Cootie left side. He's causing a bit of drama, but uh, earned himself a penalty there. Yeah, um, with the football, he, he's, uh, he knows where the ball has to go, Livermore, and... Um, now it could tingle again, you know, they set up and yeah, see space what they on can the bring. right there for Cootie if they can go the shift. Yeah, um, just on young Leroy, he was part of the 23s, uh, a group four side this year, so he, he's got a bit of football in him. Uh, I think that's our man, uh, Trey. No, that's not Trey Cronin. No. That's Sammy Knight by the program. We got that down to Sammy Knight, but now comes out to Leroy Livermore, little dummy. Uh, looks to go back inside. Still pushing, fighting, only about a metre from the try line. Dustin Munnell going himself here from dummy half. And gets tackled a metre short again, made no metres. Well, yeah, the referee and the uh, in goal are having a bit of a conversation, but nothing's come from it. Leroy Livermore throws the dummy, tries to go himself. It's not they, smart play, boys, but... Um, if they come the short side here, Mick, they've got numbers, they're outnumbered Manila here. it be interesting which way they go. They go open. On the Rutherford, the, uh, a kick... To I, that don't know, I, don't, I don't know if they'll catch Isaac Devine if he gets going because he can motor a little bit. That was uh, Trey Cronin, I think, that made that tackle, Mick. Oh, good run there. Good, good offload there. there. He goes. He's, uh, he's a willing competitor, that little uh, Isaac Devine. He's, he's caused a bit of drama down there. He's quite quick. Good recovery. Um, nothing better than when you see them outside backs... They've been under the pump defending, and he just turned defence into attack, haven't they? And now they're on the roll, 40 metres out from the Katingle try line. Big Rodney rolls. It's almost perfect footy. Like the, the, the outside backs come in to help, then rolls. He comes in and gets them going, and Mitch Doring comes in, pokes his nose through, beats a couple, and that's how uh, we're going to be on the last. But, uh, Abel Carney will probably take the kick, I would say. Crossfield. Oh, Hoik, hope for the best. Michael Bevitt comes in, knock back. Ashley Swan had a chance to uh, to pick up. But, um, lost their way a little bit where I, I was going to say, couldn't see Adam Rutley, but he is there. Just at the back end of that set when Mitch Doring got tackled, they kind of lost their way a little bit, but um, all good. Uh, Cootie will play the ball 20 metres from their own try line. Dustin Munn at dummy half. Still a better result than a seven tackle um, set there back at the 20, but... Um, one thing about Manila, they've um, their replacements have come on and really doing a good job for them. Yeah, you, you made a call earlier, like the, you now the replacements could be the difference at the moment. Like the Manila boys have come on and, and had an impact of some sort. Brody Souter has a jinking run. They say Brody will probably back up for first grade later. Good tackle by Sean Spence, probably the oldest player playing rugby league in Australia at the moment. Leroy Livermore loses the ball. Yeah, he's not happy with that tackle. It's uh, just probably tries a little bit too hard sometimes. Leroy, that was. Probably an opportunity you just needed to take the hit and hit the deck. But, uh, he's, he's a willing competitor. No he, won't, he won't die wondering. He, no. he has a crack. Yeah, he um come down the short side and I think the centre dropped under him a little bit early there. Probably took his option away. But um, if Katingle are going to stay in the game, you're definitely there. He's the bloke that's going to oh, ask look, the questions. 100%. He'll get on the scoreboard at some stage today. Or, or he'll put somebody in. But I reckon he'll get over at some stage. He's asking too many questions not to get on the board. But... He's, uh, he's turned the ball over here, unfortunately. Now, when Manila's had the scrum feed, Mitch Doring turns, Abel Carney undergoes himself. Nearly tackled by AJ Hall, but missed and cleaned up by uh, Marshall Field. Adam uh, Abel Carney to dummy half. And there's our Isaac Devine. He's uh, tackled about 22 metres from the Kuti try line. Benny Tabor, big bustling Benny Tabor, has a two hit up, bounces oh. one off, bounces two off. Good, fit, good 12 metre run by Big Benny Tabor. He Might is. even earn himself a penalty here, 10 metres from the try line. 
he is the benchy. He's a he's the sort of body shape of a good reserve grade bench player, isn't he? And <laughs> mate, that was a great carry. Well, you know, he bounced a few off. It was a, it was a good run. Now, Big Bo Harry, another another mullet man. We've got the fifth and last, about five metres from the Katinka try line. The ball will go out the back, and that's going to go to Mitch Doring. He uh, running, skipping, he's throwing it. Riley Taylor's taken in a set. Cootie have the ball 10 metres from the try line. They were set out to the right-hand side then, Manila, and the 5'8 in um, Adam Rutley, he was screaming for the ball, but they went short side, and probably opportunity missed there by Manila. Yeah, it's, uh, it wasn't the right play to go that side, but I guess if your captain coach wants it, he, get, he gets it done. And Mitch seen something and it didn't quite come off, but it's only tackle three there, and you know, Cootie are 22 metres from the try line. Brody Souders having a hit up. Um, good tackle. He gets the arms loose, gets a good ball away to Marshall Field. Good tackle there by Nick Martin, finished off by Benny Tabor and Nathan Flynn. Livermore with the ball here. He's an inside. Oh. Oh. oh, Nathan Flynn of all people to take a friend. A front rower taking an intercept roll. How's yeah. that? He looked up and seen how far he was out, and he was looking for the ground straight away. <laughs> I think he ankle tapped himself, didn't he? Sean Spence now has a hit up on tackle two. Good run by Spencey, the old stager. 25 out. We'll have a penalty for yeah, a rake. Sure. Do you take the two or do you go for the four? No, I, I, I feel Manila's building into something here. I'd definitely take the tap or kick for touch. It's 16-12 uh, by my calculation. I reckon they'll take the tap and keep going. They, they, they've got Manila, uh, sorry, Cootie, a bit under the pump. Here we go, big bustling Benny Tabor. The big fella. Oh. Good shot by Dan Allen, Riley Taylor. But again, you know, it took some work to bring down Big Ben. And a little bit of respect thrown by the two front rows, Damo That's and Ben. A little bit of a hand slap. Good run by Ashley Swan. Gets his, makes a good 10 metre run. Gets his side about five metres from the try. And trying to milk a penalty, but won't get it. Adam Rutley at dummy half. Goes out to Mitch Doring. Bo Harry goes through. Abel Carney pushes off one, pushes off two. Again, five metres from the try line. Divine. There he goes, Isaac Devine. Little scoop from dummy half. He's probably going to go in a touch. No, he did well to stay in field. Still five metres from the try line. They've got him stretched here if they come to the right side. It comes long ball out to Mitch Doring. Another one to Adam Rutley. Long one to Jay Star. Oh, was there a knock on there? I thought he picked that up. Again, I'll go with the referees in a better spot than me. Yeah, body body language from Star. I reckon he must have had a little bubble. He didn't He didn't argue the point, so good no. refereeing by Lace. The, the, the play was right. The execution just wasn't. They had him stripped, but they probably needed to come to play before. We just needed that one more punch in before they shifted. Yep, a good ball from Rutley to Star. Then um, they probably had numbers, but yeah, you're right, Craig. They should have probably found a, a middle, taken them forward there, set it up, and they would have had the opportunity to come down this shorter side. Kink Katingle now, 10 metres out from. They get the scrum win. They do. There's plenty of offloads in both sides, isn't there? It's, um, uh, this is Nick Martin being tackled on the 20 metre line. No, you got the wrong side. That's Brody Cummins. Nick oh, Martin's yeah. a nine for, for Manila. Right, Nearly. <laughs> Brody Cummins, another oh, good I'm strong run. Another intercept. We've got. Uh, well, plenty of footy paid, and uh, the pace hasn't dropped off. The boys are still going at 100 miles an hour. Yeah, look, neither side are, are afraid to throw it around. Uh, it's Six points the difference at this stage. So the it's been uh, been an entertaining game. It's been willing. Like they're ripping into each other in the middle of the field, and the backs, you know, like they're playing with shapes, and you know. Um, then uh, Manila knocked it down, give Katingle another six, so Livermore with the scrum feed. Just so Leary's away down the sideline, good chase from Adam Rutley. Is he going to, don't give away the penalty? I agree with that. I, I reckon there was yeah. a second effort from Star there. Well, I, I thought I could hear Lacey calling here, Hill, and they um, it was actually uh, Adam Rutley and. Uh, Michael Bevitt went on with the tackle well after it was completed. So good call again by Lacey. Having a good game so far, the referee. We don't wrap him too often, but I think he's doing a pretty good job at this point. I'll stay out of it. I do think he's doing Brody a good Cummins job. Brody Cummins goes go. through on a stroke of half time. Is he going to score? Make it all the oh, yes, yes, he does. Damien Allen and Brody Cummins have come up with a nice little combination a couple of weeks in a row where, where Damo goes to the line, little short ball. Brody's prepared to hit that hard line and, and, and get himself whacked, but he, that time he went through, took on the fullback, and uh, scores beside the post as the siren goes, so he should be locked up at 12 all at half time. Yeah, good work by Gatingle. They, um, 
they weathered the storm at this end for four or five minutes. Man Manila had three or four real good shots at them, three, three or four sets, and um, they've worked their way down. And it was a try they probably needed on half time, wasn't it? Yeah, I sort of think that you know, Manila will probably have been yeah you know, more more dominant this half. But uh, I don't know if they've used the wind to their to the full advantage of it because it, it's a big wind. It'll be a matter of what Cootie does with it in the second half. Uh, certainly, right timely. Uh to score right on half time then we've slot the extra two points then we go in locked up at oranges mick and uh, it's game on in the second half it's game on well livermore taking his time um he's only three or four meters to the left of the uprights you'd think he'll throw this over we'll lock the score up um for the second half as we go to half time you'd think the goal kicker Livermore, he, you know, he stays in the game and he's going to be dangerous. He's one that can really um, get Katingle going and um, probably ask a lot of questions for the second half. He's certainly shown on numerous occasions here that he's capable of opening them up. So it's just a matter of turning those opportunities into points. Uh, that's successful. So we're going to go into half time at 12 all. Another tight encounter on Grand Final Day 2019. Now, Pete. You're the Manila coach, Mitch Doran. What do you what do you got to say to your team at 12 all after at half time? Um, probably, I thought they started the game real good. So you know, get back to you know, them little one percent. I just think uh, probably late in that half they've come up with probably late in the tackle counts three or four wrong options um, and probably just three or four mistakes that they probably didn't need. So I think they're a sort of side man. You know, if they mount pressure and control the footy and get the one percent stuff right, I think they'll probably they've got plenty of points in them by the look of them. But yeah, I'd probably be just asking let's be a little bit more patient and um you know like we've seen on the last set there they try to shift the ball from one sideline to the other and if they're prepared just to get back to the middle they they probably had to tingle defense shot so probably patience and you know um they're gonna have to work real hard into the win the second half so you're asking your forwards to really you know roll your sleeves up cart it forward get up and play it quick so we can get on the back of that roll Craig, you're the uh, you're the cootie coach, Damien Allen, captain coach, two captain coaches today. Well, the, if I'm Damo, I'm looking to get myself and other big men involved and go through the middle, take it up the middle for a few, and uh, look to exploit those edges because that's where the points have come off the uh, off the edges there. We've got a little bit of, uh, especially those shifts where everyone's pushed up around the footy. You know, again, big men going forward. Black's got on the right hand in the right hand side there early to open the account, and then that. That try on half time, that might have been, you know, it's come near the post, but it came off the back of good go forward through the middle. Yeah, you'd have to think that, you know, with that try, that Cootie certainly go into the, the second half with a bit of momentum on their side. But we'll give you a bit of a break from our voices and we'll see you for the second half.
kick off the second half of the grand final, a reserve grade between Manila Tigers and Katinka Rooster. Roosters. The Referee Lace uh, signals time on and kick goes down the Doring. Doring catches it. And the ball goes back to the big fronty. Uh, Nathan Finn. Finn's tackled 20 metres out. Doring the dummy half. He gets the ball on to back row and Nathan Vasey. Vasey's tackled on the 30 metre line. Um, very interesting here, Craig. It'll be um, both sides at 12 all. will need to, you know, consolidate and start well here and um, get back into, you know, where they left off in the first half. Yeah, good solid start from Manila. They've punched it up and a uh, couple of strong carries. Front rowers going forward there and almost up the halfway mark. So, yep, Flynn again having his second carry for the set. He's tackled right on halfway. Right in the middle of the field. It's Nick Martin. He's a dummy half. Comes back to captain coach. Doring, Doring goes to the air into the wind. Not a bad op option, that, and well taken down there by fullback Michael Rutherford. Yeah, she swirled around the wind a bit there, so it took a while to come down, so something to take advantage of, especially later on in the game. Probably the kick, you know, the idea there, Craig, would be to get the fullback running, wouldn't it, in, with the wind? Don't kick down, he's straight, get him running and make him take it on the run. They're a hard catch. They are indeed a very difficult catch, very hard. Here we have Katingle, Damien Allen, captain, uh, he plays the ball. Oh, an early kick by Katingle. Space. That's a good spiral here. Good spiral by Livermore. It's a good favourable bounce. It's back to Abel Carney. He picks it up 10 metres out. He looks around, plucks oh, it on nice the left arm, and he beats the back row, and he's tackled 20 out right in the middle of the field. Vasey goes to dummy half. He's had to run it there because none of the Manila blokes are back. That's a good carry by the back rower out of dummy half. He's made a good 10 metres. Here Captain Coach doing it dummy half. He'll pass it on to Rolls. Big oh, Rodney rolls, good offload, back, back to star. Damien Allian moves in, ball and all tackle, and down below. Is and it needed a good defence there to catch the yeah, get on there, jump on the case, because there was a shift was on there on that right-hand side. Spence, the old stager from Barabri, comes in. Oh, Damien Allen with a swing and arm, didn't miss neither. Trying to lead the way here early, Damien Allen, uh, for the um, Katingle Roosters. Bit of bad luck there. He was falling, Damien Allian coming over the top, and... Um, Yep, Manila. Yeah, one of those things. They get the penalty now, Manila. Anyway, so they take it up. They're about just outside, the, just on the forty. I think and take the the tap there. Good opportunity for them now. Take the tap. Big Rodney rolls. He trundles up. He's hit by Munn. A couple other defenders. Damien Allen. He's been solid, underneath. the big fella. He has. He's done his job in the middle. Now back down the short side to Spence. Spence right on the twenty metre line from the sideline. He plays the ball. Yep, numbers on the right. Are they going to go? Oh, they gone there. Go left. Back to Flynn, I think it is. Still Flynn's got tackled. stacked up on that right. Yeah, if they they're go the right, they've got two there. on the short, but oh, they've gone to the... Rutley, Rutley finds Doring. They come up quick. Oh, Doring beats away. his oh. man. He's going to go He'll all the way from there, Mitch Doring. Oh, great captain. Outstanding bit of footwork to skipping it on the outside there, Pete. Very good shift from the Manila Tigers. Rutley got the good long ball off the dummy half. Found his captain, his coach, out on the 20-metre line and Doring with that little skip he's got and beat him with speed, got to the outside. and He's a very hard bloke to stop once he gets a little bit of space, Mitch, Mitch yeah, Doring. electric there on the outside. Gets that little bit of a shuffle, shuffle, little shuffle, and got on the outside and he kicked and kicked away. He was like Winks going down the straight. There was no, nothing going to stop him. It was a game, set, match, straight in for a try time. Yeah, it's, um, we all know Mitch Doring's quality. He, he's been around, played a lot of first grade. Dub, you know, he used to do a bit of damage in first grade country under 18s, 5'8", a few years ago now. Been in the uh, the Greater Northern Tigers 23s roles for a couple of years. I think he was your captain one year. Yeah, he was our captain this year, Mick, and led by example on um, both games that we had. The first game he led us right to the end. We got up to win it. And, um, yeah, you expect that from Mitch Doring. And, um, I've got a lot of time for the bloke and um, with his football and as a as a person, so he's the perfect leader here. He can he can lead these boys home. But great start by Manila, wasn't it? You know, like they they worked the ball out of trouble, got a penalty, um, and then first first time first time down there, they've um, oh, it's, it's a fair kick into the wind, but just away to the right hand side there. I know it's a long way to go. It's only just started this half, but this set probably really, really important with the win. Um, you've just scored. You've got the lead for the second half. So you've got Cootie chasing from the start of the second half. Now, Manila's got to make sure they, they one, get it on the full. You know, don't do what Cootie do and let it go dead. But two, get a good kick at the end and make them come from there. 
It is very important. Straight after half time, especially in any game, but especially these games, you must start. You know, like this next seven or eight minutes, if Manila scored next, it just makes it a very tough task for Katingle, doesn't it? You know what I mean? So it's really important here for not only Manila to get through their set here and get a good kick on the end, but for Katingle to really aim up here defensively and make them put a long kick into the wind out. Yeah, and then we, we've got uh, Nathan Vasey there having a, a hit up. Nick Martin moves in a dummy half. Mitch Doring hovering, uh, hovering around there. Goes through to Rodney Rolls. He's a roller straight up the middle. He, uh, he's a one pace man, Rollsy, but he makes yards every time and it takes two or three to bring him down. Nick Martin goes a dummy half. Jay St uh, heavily involved for Manila. Uh, offload to Sean e. Spence. Nick Martin, now we're going to go to Mitch Doring. What have we got here? Got to play on. Play on. <coughs> <coughs> and um, you were just talking about Mitch Dora and he's turned nothing into something I thought Manila were very unlucky I thought Livermore was not square at marker but it turned into where Mitch Doring picked the ball off the ground and he turned some, nothing into something then like that's the sort of kid he is good strong tackle by Nick Martin there I think it is yep on uh, Nick Zahara but uh Brody Cummins to dummy half. Jacob Simpson on to Brody Sowder. Good, solid, solid tackle. Defense, I'm not sure who that is. Jay Starr, I think it might be. No, not Jay Starr. Nick Vasey. A big gangly back row. Lad Jones, one of our Group 4 board members and the Katinga president, I think, might be having a run around reserve grade. That's typical bush football, isn't it? You know, it's 40-20 here by Leroy Livermore. It's a big kick. Winger's not in the right position. He's going to get this. How, how did that... What, what happened there? Oh. <laughs> I thought at one stage Cootie was going to get it and run away and score. So it was, um, He was that confident the winger he dropped to his knees to pick that up. <laughs> it was one of the funniest, well not the funniest, but it was a weird moment in rugby league. Uh, now Manila have the ball 25 metres from their own try line on tackle two. Mitch Doring at dummy half. Rodney Rolls takes another go. one of his yeah. tradesman-like runs. Uh, at the moment, I think him and him and Jay Starr are probably uh, the, the two players of the match at the moment. I know Mitch Doring put his stamp on the game every now and then, but without the word that Rollsy and Dora, uh, sorry, uh, Starry are doing, it's hard for... He's just consistent, the big front rower. He just yes. keeps chipping away and taking it up and uh, taking the hard yards and giving his side every opportunity. It's, um, not many yards there for the Manila Tigers on that set. They end up kicking from their own 25. Didn't get a bad bounce. Uh, Michael Rutherford picks it up on the QD30, brings it back, beats one, beats two. He's now in some open paddock, offloaded to his uh, winger, Jesse O'Leary, I think it might be. Leroy Livermore goes to dummy half. Nick Zahara has a hit up. Uh, he's taken backwards. Good, strong tackle by uh, Bradley Way and Jay Starr. And we've got... Um, Good field position that might be now. Sammy Knight Set there. In the middle. Good field Is that Swain being tackled there on the 40 metre line, Mick? Little knock oh. on. Caught by the referee. Sloppy play the ball. Costly mistake. This game's definitely took off where it stopped at half time, and both sides have come back out and they've gone straight back at each other. And it's just going to be that one little mistake, Rolls, that'll, uh, that, that little uh, error there that gives that, opens that door, that window of opportunity. Especially there with Katingle, like we've seen. The last set from Manila, they really struggled to cart the ball forward, and on the kick, the wind really restricted the kick. So now it's a kick start being able to start on tackle zero on the 40 metre line. Well, you see that uh, Andrew Lovegrave has come to the sideline. We're in 16, so I'd say number 17 earlier might have been Mitch Swain. Uh, I'll go with that for now. So Lovegrave's moved himself to the sideline. Not sure who he's going to re replace him because Rodney Rolls um, hasn't had a rest yet, but. Um, I don't know if I'd be taking him because he, he's still making plenty of yards. And Nathan Flynn has a hit up. Uh, yeah, Nick O'Leary, I think it is, comes in uh, down below. A nice, strong tackle. Uh, out to Adam Rutley. On to Bradley Way. Little step into Nick Zahara. Good tackle, Nick. Rutley at dummy half. Ball finds the ground door and gets it on the bounce. Goes high oh. in the air. That's a deep kick. Rutley, great take from the fullback. He's on the run upfield. He's tackled by the centre in uh, Bradley Way. I think it is out there, is it? The defender, yep. No, uh, Michael Bevitt made that tackle. Bevitt, was it? Yep. And there he goes, Leroy Livermore again. Little chip and chase oh, for himself. He's going to oh, play he's off. Gathered. Oh, he's away. Is he, what's he going to do? He's got support. Oh. He, uh, 
A chip and chase for himself to come off. Now it's come out to Brody Cummins onto Riley Taylor. Riley no Taylor full back at home. For himself. It's going to run dead. Oh. Put the goalpost pad on the way through. What didn't slow it up? No, it's. Um, I know it worked for Leroy Livermore, but I'm not sure if Riley he, uh, needed that. But I'm telling you, Mick, the idea was on. Yeah, it but, was there. But I, that time, was this time of, of the game, like you know, if that was Livermore or you know Rutley or someone like that, you'd but. Geez, the idea was smart. No full back at home. It was just a little bit too big one. I just got, got that bounce and kept going. Andrew Lovegrave takes a, a tackle zero on the seven tackle set. Jay Stars come into hooker. So I'd say Nick Martin, Andrew Lovegrave's replaced Nick Martin. So it'll definitely be a different change of a game plan here for, for the Tigers if Star is gone into dummy half and Martin is off with Andrew Lovegrave. They're going to probably look to push through the middle a bit more, I'd imagine. <coughs> Ash Swan's come on now for uh, Nick, Nick Vasey. Oh, float off by Rolls. Rolls. Oh. Play on, says referee. There was a touch there. Got, got no. away with a tingle. He tackles three during the dummy half. Back to Abel Carney through the middle again. I know oh, he's got a rake. Didn't need that oh, tingle then. They'd well, they, they defended that set fairly well. Like, and, you know, Manila didn't make a lot of yards on it. You know, and I think it was tackle tackle four to give away penalties. Not not ideal. Craig was talking about the 1%. They got away with one then. Katingle, there was an offload. They got a hand to it and he didn't give them six again. And then, you know, they, they give the penalty away the next play. Like, for Katingle to stay in this, they've got to really, really <laughs> take their opportunities. This is Swan. Good carry by the replacement. I think he's going on the second row this time, Mick Swan, has he? They yeah, go down the short side with Doring. Nice He'll take some stopping from there, Mitch Doring. They've got under him. Good tackle, Riley Taylor in under. Saved a try there, but a good good short side raid. Ashley Swan will try and barge over from here. I'll take one in, and if they, uh, if they go to the right, Manila's right, Curdy's left, they'll probably strip him of numbers. The wingers for rolls to get him into the centre of the field. Of him. Drops a big Swan back under. I think he's got there. No, no. No, he no, must be short. Craig, I thought, I thought, I thought he did too. Touch judge was happy, but... They're going to persist. Jay Star, no, no short he's again. pulled up short. He put his hand all, out. All the Manila boys come in. They've got to get it right. The very short, Cootie. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, what a ball. He's called it short. Called it back. They look forward for Good forward, yep. Yeah. Oh, I think Adam needed to let that ball keep going out to the right. To Definitely did. They had him short for numbers for four tackles, didn't they? And they persisted in just going from dummy half. And um, you'd say that's a missed opportunity there for Manila. So right again, we've got to commend the, 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 you know, the officials uh, looking where they're standing. Again, they're in good position. And Lacey called that you know, straight away. He's your changed man, Smeedle. Hey, I've never seen you rap referees like this in my whole career. Well, I don't normally as good as this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Lacey's having a good game, and I think he, he's two sideline officials are helping him out. It's uh, they're doing a good job. It's um, no, but right. all, all the referees today, I think, have been been pretty good. Yep. Um, thing I like, they've really let the games flow, haven't they? <coughs> yeah, I think you know, they've, they've sort of it's grand final. Let football decide rather than the nitpicky oh, rules. And here we go, kid. He's got a bit of space here. He's got numbers. Jess O'Leary, he's uh, come back in field, good tackle, Abel Carney, but his play on, he didn't finish it, he's still away. Dustin Munn said, get it to the middle, get it to the middle. Here we go, 20 metres out, that's tackle one or two, he's going to give away a penalty for, yes. Yes, going to be 10 in the bin. bin. The crowd go wild here at Jack Walston Oval, uh, the be Manila it. crowd. <laughs> I, like, I like how, uh, I think it's Michael Bevett, he's asking the, touch, uh, the referee, are you sure that it's me? Are you, are you sure that it's me? But um, look, again, you know, he probably just needed to let him up and play, and the you know, game's all good. Good refereeing again. I'll have to get on your bandwagon, Mick, so I'll give him a, That was good refereeing. <laughs> it's. Oh, to tingle. Doring, has he got the legs? He's 70 metres out. 60. Rutley's in chase. Doring, he's got him at the moment. Rutley's coming at him, but he's not going to get him. The fortune of rugby league. Rutherford. Sorry. Rutherford, that was a great chase, but Mitch Doring, the young legs were too fast. 
that rugby league can be a sad, hard thing sometimes, can't it? Like Certainly changes the pendulum, doesn't it? But on the attack, it back in the flow, Cootie going at him and then just that that uh, little change of pace and uh, intercept that we've got to try at the other end of the field and that's got their head, heads in front, the Tigers now, that'll put a bit of a spring in their step. It's, yep. a, it's a funny game, rugby league, isn't it? Like the, the young wing up, Michael Bevett. Um, Jess O'Leary makes a good break, comes, gets you know, gets tackled in the middle of the field. Michael Bevett doesn't let him up, gets 10 in the bin, sa- saves a try, let's say, saves a try. You now one tackle later, Mitch Doring down the sideline, scores untouched. Um, got to commend, got to applaud Mickey Rutherford for a good chase. Um, could have gave up and let Mitch run around in under the post, but didn't, kept him wide. Um, yeah, makes that kick just a little bit harder. And you look at the fortune, if that was Rodney Rolls that picks it up, he gets tackled 10 metres, but Mitch Doring swooped on it. And, um, You're saying Rolls, he wouldn't have, wouldn't have ran that? I'd probably back him out, Mick, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, no, uh, and, you know, you just had a bloke sent to the bin. This will really lift Manila now yeah. for a few minutes, won't it? So, they, you know, they'll get through this period now. And, it's it's um, a game of fortunes, isn't it? Like, uh, you know, Cootie opened them up on that left edge. You know, Manila's right edge quite easily. Um, once they missed an opportunity to score, but in the end, yeah, like I said, Mickey Bevitt give that penalty away. In the end, probably worked out to be a good move, didn't it? Okay, and it has kick. been. What a kick! Yeah. Now Abel Carney nails the goal kick. It's um, just just that alone there. That kick itself can turn the momentum for your Three own team. You, know, you go from four to six. All of a sudden, you know, they've got a nice little buffer now, and Cootie's got to start throwing around and playing a little bit of av lib, so to speak. Yeah, long time to go, Mick. It's probably really important that Katingle, the next seven or eight minutes while Manila are down to um, 12, it's really important. I thought they tried to shift that ball or tackle it too, too early, and they still got to go through the middle and just do the job. They've got, probably got to be next point scorers, but haven't they? Yeah, totally agree. Good run up, a good hit up there Pretty by Mitch Swain. carries there from yeah. uh, the Tigers. Well, I, I'm going to say that it's Mitch Swain, the, the number 17. Uh, I like what he's done when he's come on. And here goes Rodney Rolls again. Uh, I don't think Rolls has had a break yet for for reserve grade where it's unlimited interchange. It's a big effort. And had a carry every time he sides got the no. football. He's rolled his sleeves up and had a carry every set. Every set of six he's had a run. Another strong run there. We got um, looks like Isaac Devine's come in a dummy half. The ball's going to go to Jay Star. Another little jinky run from Jay. Good um, good set after scoring a try, 40 metres from the Cudi try line. Nice high kick again. By Mitch Doring. A lot better kick that one from Doring. It's found space too. And oh, Livermore plucked it out of the air. He's going to score. Gonna Livermore, this has opened the game right up. Oh. You've got to give Livermore a rap, but I just don't know. Three metres out, he was going to score for all money. He stops, props, gives what? Manila a chance, and then dives in and scores the try anyway. What did he stop for? Don't know. That fence was coming up quick. I'm not quite <laughs> sure, Mick. <laughs> it was, again, something funny in rugby league, but uh, we called it earlier that at some stage this game he was going to score, and he did. It was, um, it was a, a funny kick. It was a, it was a good kick for Manila, so to speak. Um, bad bounce for, for Cootie. In the end, it came out to be a good bounce. And not uh, all, not all footballers have got that. Um, I don't know what the word is to describe him, but he plucked that ball out. Where if Manila got that ball, they're half a chance to score. He's he's took the punt. I was, oh, he was thinking score at the other end. He wasn't thinking score for Manila. Um, yeah, that was. You now they needed something like that. Manila, a bit of luck, probably to instead of steady, steady him down and um, Livermore. He created for him. It was a great try. He, he fended off a couple, bounced off a couple. Um, I, I thought he was going to get run down by the big number 14 uh, for Manila. In uh, Re- Reese Dixon thought was going to get him and, and quite gets long for a big fella. But um, I know Leroy got the try in the end, but like you said, a metre from the try line, he, he just stopped and nearly got tackled anyway. Yes, he did. Um, who's this, Mick? Stepped up, is that Dunn? Yeah, Dustin Munn. Munn. Dustin's a bit of a seasoned campaigner through the Group 4 scene too. Many years ago now, I think he was uh, played centres for the Group 4 side at some one stage. Important kick, this one. Yeah, he's, he's a very good goal kicker, Dustin. I, I don't know how regular he kicks for the QD side, but uh, we'll find out now. He's put it out there. The wind will bring it back. Oh, and another goal. good goal kick from the sideline. Side 22-16, Michael, is it? 
I think that will be Peter. They just won't go away, Cootie, will they? You know, Manila gets a bit of a jump and then Cootie comes straight back. Um, again, you make your own luck. You know, Leroy could have, could have died on that play. He didn't. He stayed with it and come up with a, a good try. I love the way where he was just thinking score at the other end, wasn't he? Like, it was great play by Livermore. Livermore picks it up. Pass it back to help me out here, Michael. Okay, I think it might be Trey Crane and yeah, maybe yep, we'll go with that. Michael Rutherford has a hit up, good tackle by Jay Starr. A good solid tackle with Rodney Rolls in there assisting. Riley Taylor's gone a dummy up. Damian Allen having a hit up through the middle. Good old style front row, drops that hit. Uh, gets some good yards, Riley Taylor again now on to Brody Souter. It's a good run by Brody. Uh, good carry. yards, good good set from uh, after scoring a try by Cootie so far. Just need to finish it. AJ Hall is looking for a 40-20, but I don't know if he's... It's a good nudge, Mick. It's a good nudge. That's a 40-20 yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure of the 40. Is, I don't know if he was inside or on the line. No, yes, mate, the it's a 40-20. It's a 40-20, all right. Michael Great Lace. kick by Adam Hall. Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> Why do they change these boys' names on me? <laughs> a good uh, and AJ. AJ Hall, as he's known, is uh, the league tag coach, so... He'll be happy that he's in a grand final and just come up with a massive play for his side. Damo Allen takes the first one off the tap. Probably the up first bloke, shot. Sorry, Mick. First bloke all day to take advantage of the wind, hasn't he? Yeah. And Riley Taylor tries to dive over from dummy up again. Comes up a metre short. Damo Allen on his knees play. Uh, oh. Oh. So Adam, close. Two metres now from the try. Two three. passes there. Just That's a penalty. Oh. Never on side. Got, gets away of it. And again, not square at marker. They're hanging on here, Manila. Good defence, good scramble. Katingle on the last tackle. That's going to be six again. It's going to be six again if the ref's seen that. No, he's got him for he offside got it, got now. That's a fair call, I think. There's probably three other opportunities. They got off the line a bit early. I think Lovegrove was lucky early in the set then. Brady Sauer takes the first one. He's uh, held up short. Two metres from the try line. AJ Hall at dummy half goes out the back to Riley Taylor. He'll step inside. Lovegrove makes a great tackle one on one. Two metres from the try line. Damian Allen, dummy half, goes out to Leroy Livermore. Out to Jacob Simpson, I think it might be. They need Livermore here. He's got to get control of these two tackles. He'll go himself dummy half. He's over but held up, Mick. Yep, no, I felt caught short. Uh, Simpson will probably look at going himself too, I'd reckon. You know, play short to Damo Allen. You probably got to be hitting the ball a bit hard on that Damo. That's caught they, short, sorry, they, over the line, so it'll go out the 10. Probably works out a bit better for Cootie to take it out the 10, to be honest. Geez, I think they've wasted some tackles here, Cootie, haven't they? They need to give the ball a bit of air. They yeah, need to get it to the edge. The, you know, the Manila defender's 25 metres in. And they, the uh, Cootie part. kept trying to, no, they're and they go on the short, short side. side. Great clean up. Good, good take by Brad Way. Just needs to stay in field. Riley's dragging him. No, lucky. Uh, like you said, Riley, that was I think two sets of six on the on the Manila try line, and they just wanted to keep playing through the through the middle. They, they needed to get it to the edge where the Manila defenders were very very short. Here goes Rodney Rolls again. Another tradesman like run. Rolls by um, name, rolls up by nature. Yeah, we've got uh, we've got time out. We've got two injured players for QD out the bat. Um, no trainers out there, but I, again, I think it's probably a little bit of common sense refereeing from Lacey. You got two players down that, that they do look like they're physically hurt, not not bide in time, so to speak. So the way the game's gone with player safety, I think it's a good call. A uh, little bit of a need for oxygen all the way around. There probably the refs are grateful as well. It's, uh, let, let's just talk about that passage, Craig. Like, you know, two sets of six on the try line, and they just wanted to keep trying to barge through the middle. Well, they'd done um, the hard work through the middle, Mick. They yeah, got well, themselves in that position, and the opportunity was there for the shift, but uh, kept kept going straight down the middle with no result, which uh, came up empty handed. Which at, at this stage, they probably would, could have done with the points on the board if they'd have shifted right or left. Wouldn't have mattered, they had numbers either way. Yeah, just uh, watching, sorry, Rolls, just watching Damo Allen being escorted from the field by his, by his partner. He looks, uh, his partner Tash Allen, his wife, I should say. Um, he doesn't look real good, so Damo's day hopefully isn't over, but 
It's um, he's not looking real well, the big fella. All the best to the captain, Coach Damo. I bet you he was our greater Northern Tigers league tag coach this year, so he knows a bit about football. I bet you she's led him home like that a few times. <laughs> We'll probably lead him home like that later tonight too, I'd imagine. But um, all, all the best, Damo. I hope you're all right. Um, he's he's really doing it a bit tough there at the moment. And he's a tough character, Damo, so I hope he's okay. Now, back just, to the action. Sorry, Rolls, go, Just bro. go back to them couple of sets. They need Livermore and blokes like Hall to get control there, don't they, and get the ball to where it needs to go. Well, I think Star. it's just a matter of not being selfish. I think they not being critical on them, but they're all a little bit selfish, all wanting to score a try in a grand final where you've got to remember it's a team game. Um, Doring puts up a, a bomb. Lovegrave will get somewhere near it, but I don't think he touched her. Nobody's real keen to get on her. Oh, What's knock on there. Call? I thought he did too. Yeah, the, the little three. three. Marshall Field might have knocked on when he was picking that he up. He had a crack from the one-on-one -on -one there, but unsuccessful. Souter. He's tackled 40 metres out from the Manila try line. Hall into dummy half. Oh, oh, one off the ruck and a knock on. Uh, yeah. Relieves a bit of pressure there. Yeah, they, they, again, like, they get themselves a 40-20, get, give themselves a couple of opportunities to have a, a pretty good defensive set in the end. Manila had a kick from deep in their half, and then they come up with an error there, Cootie. Um, yeah, they're coming up with some good things, but they're not they're helping themselves much. Yeah, they'd love to play the last four or five minutes again, wouldn't they? You know, it is, what is it, 22-18, I think it might be the score, so they're still well and truly in it, and I, I, you know, the player in the bin yeah, still is off, so for Manila, Manila, they've done well to hold on so far, it um, looks like Reese Dixon's coming to the sideline, we've got Bo Harry going on, must be you know, a bit of a prerequisite to live at Manila to have a, a mullet or be bald. But, uh, here we that's go, we've carry. got Mitch Swain. He's been impressive every time he's come on, Mitch Swain. I, I hope that's Mitch Swain. Um, but uh, I've liked what he's done when he's come on. J-Star, another good oh. run. Good offload to Abel Carney. Still on. Door, and there goes Andrew Lovegrave. Good tackle by Riley Taylor. No, sorry. The winger, Tommy Gould. We've got uh, Nathan Vasey. Sorry, Isaac Devine at dummy half. Our Ashley Swan didn't couldn't get away. It's a fifth and last. Mitch Doring will come up with a play. He he won't miss the opportunity to get something back. I think he, uh, that'll be played out, will it? Or did he call a knock on? He's no, he's still got last. Here he goes. Isaac Devine can run. Oh, a little bit of ab lib football there. Mitch Doring tried a little grubber in for himself and near come off, but um, didn't really work. Yeah, but he goes. It was heart, heart attack material for the coaches, I think. <laughs> yes, they've got to compose themselves here, Katingle, for sure, Craig, haven't they? Just roll the ball forward. They've got to get a real good kick on the end of this. Doring's marshalling his fullback. Abel Carney, you back, you ready? Yeah, he needs to be ready. He needs to be aware that they'll, they'll probably kick to his right, to that right hand corner again. Here they go now. On that, oh no, Leroy done the old dummy kick. He probably should have let it go. He had the opportunity to, to get it. But, um, Nick Zahara having a good run. Good tackle, not tackle, but tackle now, fifth and last. So not a bad defensive set by Manila. It's only a four point game, 22 14, 22 18, I should say. Uh, not sure how long to go. We didn't get the clock started. But uh, Michael Bevert is now back on, so Manila at full complement. Um, so they've done well, Manila, to, to, to score one and, and concede one. Yep, that 10 minutes was really important to him. Here we are now. You'd think, what, 15 to go? Looking for Rolls yeah, here to so punch he it up. Rolls Good again. Run, run again from Rolls. If Manila win, he's my man of the match. He won't get it because he hasn't been flashy, but the work that he's done in attacking the events, he, he's my man of the match. Bo Harry carts it forward now. He's my man of the match even if they lose. Rolls um, he? Yeah, mate, I think he's been fan fantastic. The amount of work that he's got through. Just pushing with the ball, having hit-ups, he, he, and hasn't had a rest yet. You know, that's massive for a front rower in, in any age division. Now the ball comes to Doring on the last. He turns back oh, inside nice to Nathan turn. Finn. I'm not sure if Finn was the right man to go to. Oh. But um, I, I'm not sure why Doro... Uh, the right... Sure what he was thinking. The, the, yeah, the, the, right the, play, the play was right, but it was wrong man. Yeah, if that was Abel or someone like that, it was probably an opportunity. But again, the turnover in that position of the field is not a bad option. Well, it's better than giving up seven. I mean, that's tackle one there, and they're on the 30. 
and probably going you know, to get tackled there on a, on a seven tackle set. Lad Jones, Clarence Jones, I should say. Lad. Just looking at Katingle, they're really finding it hard here to raise an effort to cut the ball forward. So Hall or Livermore, they've got to strike something here for them. You know, insides are starting to struggle a bit, Rolls, when they start trying to go to the edge straight away. Don't yep, they? Like, definitely. And that's twice now. For me, Cootie's pushed straight to the edge. And, uh, and rather than try and push through the middle first, Dustin Munn now with the ball, little jinky run, Trey Cronin on to uh, Marshall Field. Good running, good solid run, Marshall Field. Good Jeez. tackle by Mitch Dory. Not enough and players Star. pushing up with him now. Needed a few more mates pushing up with him then. There goes to Rutherford, the fullback. He has a run himself, offloads. No, he doesn't. He hangs on to it. It was a basketball dummy pass. Good yards, in a good position. They got a good attacking kick. Last tackle, Mick. This is important tackle, this one for Katingle. They need a real good finish here. Oh, Shawnee Spence, he read it. Oh. But, uh, that's why old men don't go for intercepts. And to be honest, Katingle really needed that, didn't they? Like they just needed a drop ball or a, a something like that to yeah. just to give them a bit of a spark. 20 well, metres out, right in the middle of the field. I'm a, I'm a Sean, uh, Sean Spence fan. I love how he plays footy, but that's, um, that was a young man's error. You know, fifth and last, just make the tackle. He's given him another set on the, on the try line. He, he didn't need it. He didn't need it, but... No one's fancy. He'll come up with a play now that'll get the ball back. Um, probably one of the biggest hitters in the competition. Maybe not now, but was there certainly one stage. Oh. Big push. Lacey, let's go back to the 60s where you can push at a scrum. That was a good play by Manila, but... Yeah. Gee. Now get a second chance I'm on not that sure line. why that uh, wasn't allowed to go, but anyway, that's the new rules of the new game, isn't it? Good tackle again, J-Star. A mountain of work in attack and defence again. He's been good too, Andy. I don't think he's had a blow either. Here we go. I'm, I'm not sure that's... Oh, desperation tackle. Nick Martin did enough there to, to hold that. Brody Cummins a dummy half. Spence, Spence shot outside. out again. Trey Cronin, oh. can he get through? Doring underneath. A big tackle by Mitch up. Doring. Brody Cummins will have a little bit of a dip here himself, I'd reckon. No, nope, he's gone out wide. Oh, oh pick up by Livermore. Beats one. Beats two. Sean Spence is there. He's, he's lost it. Oh. Has he got Manila for reefing? Yeah, he's got him for a one Strip. on one steal. But it's a knock-on by Manila. Um, no, no, he hasn't. No, no sorry, I, I'll take that back. The, his signal was a knock-on. I um, I agree Manila. with that decision. I reckon Livermore was trying to get it out to promote yep, the ball, yep. and I reckon he dropped it. I'll go with that. But um, just the way that he was standing, he was, he was signaling a knock-on to Manila. But I, I did too. I thought, yeah, I was quite happy to go that way as well. But I did no, think I did he was. Just get, say that Spencer will come up with a play. It was a great it tackle. A great yeah, tackle. And, and he did that there. He came up with a. You know, he might have given him six, but he came up with a play. Abel Carney, Ooh, dangerous. Yeah, unfortunately, That's a relieving penalty there. It's only a penalty. It's only a penalty, Doro. It's, um, but it's a very relieving one, timely yeah, one yeah, for the Tigers. It's not, it's not a it's deliberate. Like the, uh, I know Mitch is asking for a bit more than just a penalty, but it wasn't deliberate. It was all good the clock, the good clock good. would be starting to work against Katingle here, so them sort of things ain't going to help. Uh, it's, like you said, Craig, you know, that penalty was very relieving. Here goes Ash Swan. Uh, he's been good for Miller off the bench as well. You know, he's done some good work, had some good charges. We'd be expecting rolls. He'll have hit up number th number three. Here we go. We got a little bit, bit going on here. in back play. Bo Harry. Carry there. We don't know what uh, Ashwan's trying to get away and get involved in football, and the cutie boys won't let him go. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But this will be play three. I reckon that'll be uh, J Star onto Nathan Finn. Lacey it's says starting, take it back a couple bow to play it. It's starting to get a bit uh, bit antsy this game. Well, I was wrong, he went to Rollsy. But again, Rollsy's had that hit up in this set of six. Every set he's had a hit. He yeah, some numbers there. Finds his front, plays it well. Now, he's going the short side of Rutley. Oh. oh. I thought if he had a look, he... Yeah, I thought Two man he, overlap, kicks it for seven. Probably not the play again, but Manila, the scoreboard favours them, so they can defend their way through here. You need Livermore here, or Adam Hall, Aaron Hall, is it? To um, AJ. AJ to get involved, lead them away here. They're making a couple of replacements, Katingle. This this game, it's, they've definitely gone at each other for the whole time, haven't they? Yeah, good run there by Clad Jones. Lawrence Jones, I should call him Lad, not Clad. But, uh, he's been big for Cootie today. Got through a mountain of work. He's not a traditional front row. But, um, the game the back. again. Oh, oh, here another another intercept this time by Adam Rutley. But, um, they keep they just keep inviting Cootie in, don't they? 
I know if you get the intercept and you run away and score, it's all well and good, but you, if you don't get them, you're just giving the, the team another. On tackle four and you're on halfway, you just defend one more, they kick to you. This probably this is probably the invite Katingle needed if they can set the ship here and get a real good set in with a good you know a good option on now, the end of it. Don't be surprised if Leroy Livermore chips and chases for himself off the scrum. <laughs> That's the There's kind no of one player he is. Here he goes. He's uh, he, he's definitely cued his best chance of getting them. In, well, they're in the game, I should say, not into the game. But he's the, the best player to probably get them another try. Careful kicking out there, Duster. You'll give away a penalty. He's got the call from the there touch we judge. Go. Has he got him for mouthing, or has he got him for kicking out with the feet? He didn't kick out with the feet. Yep. It's costly. It's a, it's feel, a big error. I it's feel a eh, because the defender rolled over him. He should yeah. have been made roll out, not roll back over. Um, so you, you, know, can't, the, you can't lash out with the feet rolls? But the first infringement was the bloke rolling over him, Mick. That's, <laughs> it really gets me, and I reckon oh, we miss it. that's not gone out. Has the rugby league oh. guards played their part? That's a, is that Mitch Doring that kicked that, or Adam Rutley? Mitch Doring. Mitch Doring. That's, a, that's a, an uncharacteristic error for Mitch. Um, this game just won't die, will it? Like, neither of them want to put the coffin, uh, sorry, put the nail in the coffin, so to speak. You just said it then, Mick. Manila are doing their best to in keep inviting them back don't they you know like there they would have been on the attack and the try would have shut the game oh, out now they're going to get marched up the field penalty there it's going to be a good opportunity there bit of an energy pill for uh, the roosters there as well back to where we started 30 seconds ago they in the same position now we'll look for livermore aj to see what they can do for katingle it's, uh, I'm not sure how long there is to go, but in respect for both sides, this, um, and I hope I make sense, but this is probably the set of the match. Um, you know, yep. If Manila hold them out, they probably probably go on and win. If Cootie score, they probably go on and win. But I, Again, I don't know how long to go, but it's a big set in the context of the game, and there's only four points on offer. Nick Allen, I think it is, has a good strong run, good tackle by Mitch Doring over the top, and with Nathan Vasey. Long ball for Brody Cummins out to Riley Taylor. Turns Brody Souter and Dustin Munn under. Dummies to... Goes. It was a questionable too. pass to Clad Jones. Lad Jones. Oh, there we go. Don't worry about how long we go. That was the most important set of the game. Bloody other boys. Manila, hang on. Well, there you go. Uh, just before you take off, Craig, mate, thanks for your help up in the box. And they've uh, got to go and do some presentations. No, thank you, Mick. Down there with uh, your lifelong friend, the real McCoy, to uh, all the way from Canada, and uh, we'll get, to get the next presentation happening. Thanks, mate, for your time. Exciting game, Bones. It's a bit disappointing we didn't have the clock going, but I guess I called it. It was the most important set of the game, and it was because it was the last set. Um, and he did poke his nose through too with an offload and um, yeah they just needed you know like uh, probably you go back to the penalty from the kick out they had that set they would have got their full set in Mick and you never know what happened but all credit to Manila and um, Doring and these boys they geez, they defended good there at the back end of that match to um, you know like to hold your tingle out yeah, 100% mate I think both sides need to be congratulated on, on a great game um and for reserve grade, surprisingly, it didn't get spiteful and, and nasty. Um, and, I, and I say that respectfully, but normally reserve grade games tend, tend to get a bit grotty. They can. But for me, that, that game was pretty uh, a good quality game from start to finish. And mate, it was a real quality game for a reserve grade game. They, um, and it, like, the intensity and the speed just didn't go away for the whole 70 minutes, did it? They, you know, like they come back out after half time and they just went straight back into their work, both sides. and. I think the scoreline, um, 22-18, it, was re you know, it reflected the game. Oh, it? 100%, mate. I think that, that score reflects what kind of game it was. But, look, again, you know, we touched on it at the start of the, the live stream. Um, Kitty have never had a reserve grade side in the past. Um, first, last year was their first year of having a first grade side. For them to get a, a reserve grade side together and make the grand final is an achievement in itself. Definitely. So I think the Cootie community, uh, community, um, committee and community is what I was trying to say need to be applauded for their efforts. But on the flip side, Manila, who didn't play football last year, and I think they played second division the year before. You know, they played second division before, and and I think might have had the wooden spoon. You know, to get themselves into the, the grand final and go on and win is is a massive effort. So well done to Mitch Doring, and like I said, the majority of their players. Are Manila locals and Manila people, and there's a few from Barra that travel down. 
but the majority of them you know, either live at Manila or got some you know, connection to Manila. So well done to the Manila community and to Mitch Doran. Yes, there'll be a party at Manila tonight. And um, uh, I'd like to go back to what you said about, you know, Katingle um, not having a reserve grade last year. That is a that is a great effort to go and find an extra 25 players to, to make sure that, you know, you play reserve grade. And it's probably why their first grade's in the grand final this afternoon as well that extra pressure that just adds on to players and them sort of things so you know sharpie and the boys out there and to the the reserve grade um coach and you know them sort of blokes they've done a great job yeah, look for both sides the drinks will still taste the same at the end of the night um just before we go to the break um before we step into the first grade game uh we'll, we'll shout out to our sponsors again twoies uh for their continued support of group four rugby league to wayne cabman financial and insurance group uh, for their continued support of Group 4 Rugby League and for today's game day sponsor, the Blanche family and Amps Rural thank you for your um, contribution to today and we'll see you at the start of first grade guys, thank you
Yeah, no, no, it's always tough after a grand final off. I'm sure you've got plenty of good people to think for uh, what's been a good year for the club. I thank my boys for a good game today. Commiserations, lads. They've been tight hard. Middle of the best mark all year. Um, yeah, we tried. We come within four points, boys. Um, just went down the end. Uh, I'd just like to thank the crowd, um, the cutie itself, um, for, for a good season. Uh, thanks, Manila, for a good year, guys. Um, Zorro, boys, you're the hard to beat, guys. Eh? Well done, Hank. Well done. So, uh, Thanks, Damo. Um, to the uh, player of the match, of course, as mentioned before, Tui. So, hit, uh, Rod here to, has come along from Tui to uh, match award, and that goes to Abel Carney from Manila Tigers. Yeah. Congratulations to the Miller Tigers. You deserve great premiers 2019. Well done. So 
exciting game. First grade to follow between the North Capworth Bears and of course the Katinka Roosters. Congratulations to the Manil Tigers there. Fantastic win there and they've had a really good season through 2019. We're looking for a little boy here. He's nine years old. His name's Justice. Can he come over to the announcer's box, please? Justice, can you come to the announcer's box, please? So your family can locate you. All right, let's have the um, both first grade teams as soon as possible out of the field, please. And if you could just come over in front of the Annette box, we'll do the national anthem. Welcome everybody, uh, the reserve grade uh, celebrations and the Manila Tigers, congratulations are on the way around the ground. Just before we get started, I will say thank you again to our sponsors, Tui's, uh, been a long standing supporter of Group 4 Rugby League, Wayne Cadman um, Financial Group and Associates, um, insurance, planning, whatever they do, has been a good sponsor of Group 4 and today's game day sponsor is the Blanche family and AMPS uh, yeah, Rural, so thank you to those People, it's much appreciated. Have with me again, you've got Mick Schmeedle, sorry. Four games in a row for those that have sat there all day. Um, one to go and you'll be out of my way. I'll be out of your way. Uh, Peter Stevens again joins me. Um, the Pathways, CRL Pathways manager to the Bulldogs apparently, something along that line. And Luke Taylor, NRL development officer um, and unsuccessful coach today of the ladies league tag Dungowan side. Um, commiserations, Luke, and welcome aboard. Thanks, mate. You got your mic on, mate? I think so. <laughs> yep. She's um, on. Mate, um, just quickly before we get into the first grade game, um, no, how are the girls and yourself feeling team after team that? And, um, we'll be long game. It was uh, so probably not what people expected the, uh, because North have been fairly dominant all year. So and to take them to extra time the in the grand final, I, I know it's probably um, not what, well, it's obviously not what you wanted, but some, some kind of consolation that you're one team that did push them all the way. Oh, look, I'm very proud of them. Um, while they were upset that, you know, they'd obviously, uh, the effort they put in today, um, they were obviously upset with they didn't, you know, finish on top. But uh, they were also happy for how good they played. You know, when you, I, I explained to them after the game that it's probably the best loss I've ever been involved with. <laughs> I know that's a bit weird to say, but... Um, the effort they put in to get that close to a pretty quality North Tamworth team is, um, was a pretty big effort. Well, in, in two years, they've lost one game. Yes, yeah, they when, have. When, when you put that into context, in yeah. two years they've lost one game. They lost last year's game yep. final, gone through this year. The closest they went to a loss this year was today when they went to extra time at, at full time. So you've got to take that on board, buddy. So we're, we're on the year and the game. Yeah, thanks. Okay, as we've got the Katinga side coming out on the field, I've got Pete Stevens to read that side out. Um, Katinga is Jack Rumsby at fullback, Will Saunders and uh, Jack Anderson on the wings, Kyle Cochran and Jess Campbell um, will be the centre pairing. Sam Taylor and uh, Jordan Sharp, didn't know if he'd take his place in the team today, but he's the captain, He'll, they'll be in the halves. Um, at lock, we have Benny Williams, back rowers Logan Howard and Liam Hatch. Front row, Chris Vidler and Cameron McDonald and Zach Hatch um, will be a hooker dummy half. The bench, Anthony Smith, Nick Pascoe, Riley Taylor, Brody Souter, Nick Sara and Leah Liver Leroy Livermore. And I suppose, Mick, some of them bench players would be subject to how they pulled up in reserve grade. 
100% mates uh, and I think they were there for more to see um, how some of these guys got through their warm up. Luke I'll get you as an ex North Timworth captain coach and premiership winning captain coach of North Timworth to read out their side. Yep uh, we've got Mitch Sheridan at fullback. Wingers at oh, Mitch, did, Mitch Sheridan did um, recommend or, or asked if we called him Shadesco. Yeah, Shadesco. 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 That was okay. at his request. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wingers we've got Chris so Hunt and Jeremy down. York. Uh, centres Richard Clegg. Andrew Moody uh, in the halves we've got Scotty Blanche and Kieran Fisher uh, Nick Dobson at lock back rowers are Josh Smeedel and Jake McManus uh, front rowers Alec Cocking Shane Wadwell and that dummy half we've got Ryan Ingram uh, their bench James Cooper Brock Wadwell Jack Patterson Ben Jarvis Zach Negro and Luke Fisher and today's match officials, we have Ray, uh, James Brown in the middle with Corey Dixon and Tony Hardy on the uh, sidelines. Antoine Hampton and Damien Blimmon in the um, in goals. So, um, and standby referee will be Michael Lace. We're about to do the national anthem, so we'll, we'll pay our respects and uh, stand up and be quiet. Ask everyone to be upstanding to the national anthem, please. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Yes, we've got two quality sides. North Timmouth going for six straight and also an undefeated season. Just quickly from Wednesday night, we have um, Jake McManus was our highest point scorer for the year with 224 points. He was also the um, leading man of the matter, sorry, player of the year award. He uh, polled 19 Anthony, votes from five, 13 games. Next was Daniel Jobson with 12 seven, votes, uh, sorry, 15 votes from 12 games. <laughs> And we had um, Harley Milgate from Werris Creek on 12 votes from 14 games. Chris Vidler in today's encounter as well. 14 votes from 14 games. So not a bad year for the boys. Four rounds of a few award winners. It's, um, in the try scorer, Beck Cochran was the leading try scorer with 16 tries. Matt Brady, 14. Aaron Donnelly, Andrew Moody and Josh Moodle with 13 tries. So... Um, not a bad beat, and some of those boys will be able to play. Men, um, what are you expecting from this one? I probably think um, North Tamworth off on favourites here, but for Katingle, you know, like the little things are going to be really important, aren't they? They're, it looks like they're going to have the win first, so it's going to be really important they use it. Um, at some stage, they've got to put North under pressure and probably stay as close as they can score. You know, add a bit of pressure and probably take Norse to where they haven't been this year, Mick. Yeah, I think with, with, with any side of players against North Timor, you've got to look at the play 80 minutes. Cootie did it a couple of weeks ago against Gunnedah and very, very good. Um, everybody knows Norse play for 80 minutes and that's just a matter of staying with them. But there's enough quality in that in that Katingal side to, to not just win the game, but uh, sorry, not just to be competitive, but to also win the game. It'll be a, a tight encounter. I think that is the key, just... Um getting Norse under pressure when no one hardly does it so they're not used to it much so um, they really got to take Norse to somewhere where they haven't been this year you know like it's no good looming up when they loom up or when they can you know if they can put some pressure on them they've got to really put the foot on their throat and take them to where they haven't been and just see how Norse handle it Me personally I think the game will be won on the edges I think that's where North Tamworth is just a little bit stronger than Cootie Okay, Jake McManus, the leading point scorer for the year, starts the game off with a good deep kick. Chris Vidler takes the first hit up and he's tackled by, uh, looks like, Josh Smeedle. Josh and, and got a penalty. Shane Lee Wadwell in the first penalty of the game. 
and the crowd's already let Brownie know what they think. But that's a fair enough penalty. Um, if that's the standard that he's going to set, we're going to have a quick game. First penalty of the game to Cutie. Yeah, Shane Rodwell there, he brought into the tackle and he was, he was just laying there. You could tell Brown by his um, hand expressions, he wanted him to get up. Hatch to take the tap. Back to Vidler again. <laughs> Shane Lee Wadwell and Josh Meadle again make the tackle with Kieran Fisher. Hatch the dummy half. Ben Williams has a hit up. Nick Dobson falls off that one, but he's cleaned up by Shane Lee Wadwell again. And, uh, and Alec Cocking this time. Now we've got uh, Je- uh, Logan Howard comes in from the left edge for a, for a hit up. Geordie Sharp back inside. Dummies goes himself. Tackled by Josh Meadle, Alec Cocking, and Ryan Ingram. It's uh, more men in the tackle, the slower it is. Zach Hatch a dummy half out the back to Sam Taylor. Then on to Liam Hatch. Good tackle by Jake McManus. Nick Dobson, Scott Bland, there in assistance. It's the fifth and last, 25 metres out from the uh, 35 from North Tamworth line. Bit of a midfield bomb. I don't think Sam Taylor quite got the connection he wanted to. The ball's gone up nowhere. Good clean up by Kieran Fisher. Good start by Katingle there. Um, they rolled forward. Probably the kick on the end wasn't what Sam was looking for. But as we see here, North Tamworth probably lucky to get away with a high shot there. Brown says around the around the shoulder. Andrew Moody comes in for a hit up. It's 25 metres from the North Tamworth line. Ryan Ingram's a dummy half. Goes back to the centre with Nick Dobson. Good solid. Uh, another run. high shot. It's, uh, that's two high shots in my opinion that Pob probably could have been pulled up. It's, uh, now Josh Meadel has a hit up. Good low tackle by Chrissy Vidler, I think it is. No, Zachy Hatch. Zachy Hatch Hatch underneath. Brother-in-law on brother-in-law. Good solid tackle around the legs. Nice kick. It's come back to to North Tamworth way. Jake McManus has picked up, offloaded Andrew Moody. Good cover tackle, Jack Rumsby. Great tackle. Great fullback play from Jack Rumsby. Did not panic. Um, You'd nearly expect expect uh, Andrew Moody to run away and score there, but good fullback play from Jack Rumsby. Yeah, um, Katingle, they let that ball bounce. They're going to have to fix that up because Norse, with plenty of energy, McManus, Moody, they were all over that. Yeah, look, you know, we've said in the earlier games, Roll, that's a pretty big wind up there. And, you know, Kieran, uh, I think it was Kieran Fisher got good contact on that, but it just hung up there in the wind. So here's Benny Williams getting through a little bit of early work. Low tackle from uh, Jake, uh, sorry, Alec Cocking. McDonald, Cam- is it McDonald? Cam- Cameron McDonald. Yep, tackled there. Dobson over the top, down low. Cocking. Not Zach Hatch. Play from little Zachy Hatch. Yeah, uh, out of dummy half. No I, really, I really think, Mick, I look at the Norse forward pack, I would run from dummy half a lot against them with a bit of speed, you know, like um, very good bomb there from Sam Taylor. Knock on by Sheridan. Six again for Katingle. Cutie feed. Be Katingle feed here. He's well, obviously ruled yeah. that Katingle's knocked it on as well. I was going to say, Riles, there's obviously a double knock on in there, although we haven't got the signal, but um, otherwise it's six to go. So that wind's playing a part early in the game. Yep, and very, both fullbacks very nervous, weren't they? Like Sheridan was in position there to take that ball, but he opted to let it bounce. And Shadesco? Shadesco, yeah. Uh, he probably, if he can't do that all day, we'll have to rephrase the name again. Cootie need to take the advantage of having the breeze in this first half uh, every time they get a chance because that Norse forward pack, once they've got the breeze behind them in the yeah, second half, you'd you think they You played in it earlier, you, you coached the side earlier. How many points is, is a good lead with that wind? Oh, look, I had a little bit of a talk to our 18s at half time who, who were down 16 4, and I thought it was about a 20 point breeze. Yeah, so. Okay, so we'll go with that, about 20 point. Now, Cootie, five metres from the try line, Benny Williams. Has a hit up on tackle three, I think. Andrew Moody over the top. Little bit of push and shove going on here. Who's uh, all tangled up, plays all tangled up. Little bit of anger in the game already, which is good to see. Chris Vidler dummy to Sam Taylor, taken by Josh Meadle. Shane Lee Wadwell comes in to clean up. It's a uh, good tackle in the end by Shane Lee Wadwell. Pushed him back. Good, def- good defence by Smeadle. He got up. Sam, Sam Taylor Taylor's drifted injured. across field and Smeadle made him take the tackle. Good run, Logan Howe with 20. No, penalty to... Sam Cudi. Taylor could be in a bit of trouble here with He's that He's not knee. looking good. Um, he, was, he was covered up and Shane Lee Wadwell came in to assist. I think you're going to have time out here. Sam Taylor's in the play. So we're about five minutes into the first half and it's been uh, entertaining so far. Both sides have had a couple of opportunities. 
And Very worrying for Sharp, the coach from Contingle, he's um, halfback. He takes a crook knee into the game, and I know Sam has that problem with ease. And you know, you're five minutes in, and he's five eight now, is limping. You know, definitely with a knee problem. Plenty yeah. of teams have been brought unstuck in that last game of the year, taking injured players in. Contingle's okay, Chris, Chris Villa takes the first hit up off the penalty. It's uh, nine metres out. We've got uh, Shane Lee, Wadwell and Josh Meal again making a tackle. Zach Hatchett, dummy half, off to Ben Williams. Getting through a mound of work for Cudiat in the early stages of the game. Bit of a uh, loose arm there from Shane Lee Wadwell. He's come out with intent. Geordie Sharp has a crack, dummies, and goes himself. Shane Lee Wadwell is playing like it is his last game. It's eight metres, uh, two metres from the try line. Ben Williams, Chris Vidler goes through. A little bit of contact. It's going to go against him, yes. He, did, I didn't see what happened. I just seen two North Timber players on the ground, so I think Chris Vidler uh, went I, too far through the line. And I think he grabbed older the, the, the defence coming across there, Mick. I think he grabbed older one bloke, and he took definitely took Dobson out. Yeah. So a bit That'd of an obstruction, obstruction penalty, obstruction penalty. Yeah. <laughs> Interfering with the defence. I don't know if it was a penalty, but Brownie's out there, and that's what he's called. Richard Clegg will take the tap. Josh Moodle will take the first one off the ruck. It's a good tackle in, and they're coming up quick. We got uh, Offside. Chris Vidler, Zach Hatch, and I think Logan Howard come up with a big hit, lifted. North, but, uh, North now Shane Lee Wadwell takes the first one. Cameron McDonald first one in. Liam Hatch second one in. Good clean up by Benny Williams. Ryan Ingram a dummy half. Scott Blanche, the captain coach, takes a little bit of control here. Both sides playing with a lot of energy at this stage. Good little offload by Scott out the back to uh, Shadesco. He'll sniff around all day, Shadesco. He'll be around the Blanches and Wadwells and them sort of people looking for that offload. Um, you've got to give Norse defence real good credit there. They, they smothered Katingle when they're defending their line. I think this left edge of Norse is probably the one you've got to worry about. You know, your Blanche, McManus, Moody. Um... When Blanche seems to go, the other two boys know where they've got to be. It's Bob, a good, good set by North Timworth. They've come down about 60 metres. Chris Hunt comes in the first receiver. Here's an opportunity here. Oh, I thought Clegg probably should have let that go to his winger. Definitely should have mixed. Yeah, from from here it looks like if he, if he passes to Yorkie, he scores in that corner. But Just going back to what you said, Luke, before about the left edge from Norse being real strong. Cochran, he's three times he's been in the defence he's come up and in so you know if they can get Chadesco out the back they're going to be a chance there like if that Cochrane coming up and in and I think if I was Norse I'd be heading at Cochrane I think he's one of their strike weapons in attack um, I know he's carrying injury but uh, mate he's, well, he's definitely a danger work, you? you'd yeah. make him do a lot of work defensively that play on here well, here we go we've got a turnover they should convert this oh. Chris Hunt Good start by Chrissy Hunt. We'll let the crowd die down for a second. It's uh, Chrissy Hunt. Most uh, most players go from the uh, from the backs to the forwards. Chrissy's gone. Well, I wouldn't say he's gone the other way, but he's gone to the wing and proven to be um, quite useful on the wing. Look, Chrissy. Um, obviously, we don't know Chrissy as a winger, but I'm pretty sure. Chrissy's been struggling with a bit of a knee injury. He, he is nearly 40. Um, <laughs> he's struggling with a knee injury, but it just shows it just shows how I think he's 38. But it just shows uh, how important he is as a footballer to the team. They find him a spot, and and mate, he just finished that off. Probably well, two things. He got the ball in, and old Chris Hunt would have scored in the corner for sure. Yeah. Um, but you go back yeah. to the, the the shift where um, Clegg got caught in the right corner. Hunt was the one that went the first receiver with that good long ball from left to right. He really got a real good shift there for North. So that's another option they got. You know, there, that was a real good ball from Hunt. And look, you know, you, you guys have been around rugby league long enough. You've got to defend your errors. And unfortunately, Cootie didn't do that then. You know, they turned the ball over in their, in their own 30. And, you know, North, North's come out dividends. And you'd be thinking that Jake McManus being the leading try scorer this year, scoring, you know, 260 odd points or something, whatever it was, will we'll convert this and they'll jump out to a six point lead. Yeah, good start by Norse. Um, they were under the punt for a couple of sets, defended that well. And then they turned, they got to the other end from a couple of mistakes from Katingle. Good start for the odds on favourites here to go up 6 0. Jake 
Certainly matters converts that. We're now around about 10 minutes into the first half of the 2019 Grand Final. And just while we've got a quick break, we'll thank Chewies, Wayne Cadman, the Blanche family, and AMPS Rural. Um, good game so far, guys. It has been, Mick. Um, Katingle, they brought plenty of energy. Um, probably, they'd probably like to have them a couple of sets back down here on the line again and um, earlier in the game. But now this is a really important period for Katingle. They've really got to roll their sleeves up here and make it a contest, haven't they? Yeah, they definitely do. They need to just stick with Norse. Well, they've got the perfect result. With Fisher, someone said, well, used his foot instead of his hands. Um, he was blowing up at the winger there too. They got a chance here, Kurt York. Who you got in the doubles, Mick? You're, no, out, you're out. out. You're out. You're out. I okay. Didn't have any of them. I'm not sure why Kieran doesn't take two steps forward and catches that on a full. But again, we're not out there, and the winds, the winds playing havoc on people. But Kieran well, just asked himself that too, Mick. Don't worry about that. <laughs> you only got to look at that dropout. Like that's that's you know. I'm not sure who kicked that Jake McManus was, but it only went 30 metres. So that's a decent win up there. Uh, could play a part. You like the energy from Norse. As soon as he caught it, they were there on the 30 metre line to make the tackle yeah, too. Yeah, they, sa they saved the poor kick. Or it probably wasn't a poor kick, but they, they knew they had to be there quick with the wind. Yeah, Zach Hatch, a dummy half out to Sam Taylor. Looks like he's moving a little bit better. Liam Hatch, only a wily little character, Liam, but uh, he knows the right lines and angles to run. Sam Taylor's still struggling on that ankle. Um, he's limping very bad. I wonder if Norse will send some traffic his way. You've got. I like on, that. On I like this play against Norse, dropping under, asking the Smeedles and the Chinnies and that to double up and make tackles. Got a, got a lot of time for this kid that's just taking it up there now. Logan Howard, he's a big body and can play a bit of football. Two metres from the North Timber try line, fifth and last. Out to Geordie Sharp, out to Sam Taylor. They've got numbers here. Good defence by Scott Blanche and Jake McManus. Worked really hard on the inside there, Jake McManus. So the ball will be turned over five metres from the North Tamworth try line. Mick, one thing I'll say, both the halves from Katingle, and you're not going to trouble that North defence. If they're just going to catch and pass, one of them have got to, they've got to back themselves. They've got to get into the line. They've got to tie the North defence down and just not let them slide. If they're just going to play pre-line, it's going to be pretty audi audi pretty easy for the Blanches and Kieran Fishers and Smeedles and that yeah. to slide off and um, make the tackles. Yeah, North, North Timber have started with a great set. Chrissy Hunt had the first run and made 12 metres. Andrew Moody had the second run, made another 12. It's going to be an interesting contest between between uh, Andrew Moody and Kyle Cochran. Um, both very, very good centres. So that's a, a match-up in itself. I'm with you, Pete. I think everything uh, Katingle need to aim is going forward as well as they can and head as much traffic to the North Tamworth middle as they can. Um, you see North Tamworth the outside backs, they come in and save their middles a lot. They just That set was nearly all their outside backs, so I think they need to get to that, that middle as much as possible, Cootie. You've already seen Josh and um, Josh Smoodle from the right edge and uh, McManus from the left edge having to come in and make a couple of legs tackles. So, yeah, I, I think that I like that the dropping under, but when they do that tub, the, the halves need to dig into the line when they're playing that shape, you know. Well, that, that set, like you said, Luke, for North Timmouth coming out of trouble, not one forward out of hit-up, was all the outside back, so that's that's working as a team, isn't it? Definitely um, is. Yeah, here at Cootie are now um, 45 metres from their own try line. Uh, Cameron McDonald having another hit-up. Scott Blance in the hat, make the tackle with Shane Lee Wadwell, I'm going to know, not Shane Lee Wadwell. Alec Cocking going around the legs. Sam Taylor, 50 metres out, puts up a midfield bomb. Going to test Chrissy Hunt out, but he'll shell peels with him. He's, he's fairly safe with him. He's going to take Willie Saunders on on the outside. <laughs> Beats him, now he Look takes out. on Cole Cogan. Chris Hunt is having a, a game from the past. Now, it's got a good try, and he, he's two touches, three touches so far have all been class. He goes Shadesco across field looking for a gap. Good, solid tackle from Logan Howard. That's what Logan How Howard can do. He, he likes to pull a shot off here and there. The only problem is he's come a long, a long way in field uh, and left a bit of a hole out there in his corridor of Norse two, two pass shift. No, he's got himself back out there now. Just go back, not trying to have a crack at Katingle, but the two bombs they've put up, it hasn't really put anyone under pressure, has it? You know, like I know Shadesco knocked on back down here in the first one, but if they're just going to kick the kick, Chris Hunt like that, he's just going to swallow that up and, you know, like look at that, how good that football. He's going to get a double in the GF, big Chrissy. No. Oh, great ball out the back. Oh, unlucky. I'll tell you what, that was great footy from Scotty Blanch and uh, Andrew Moody. Moods. Great hands from Moods. Hand, hand. Yeah. Great rugby hands. Rugby Union passes. No, we, like rugby we won't bring Rugby Union up. But the, the passes to Chrissy Hunt again. 
Chris Hunt's having a blinder at the moment, isn't he? He's, um, he's the man in the moment. The quick hands from Moody there were, were awesome. That was uh, the old head. He, he was pretty steady and he just flicked it on to Chris. Just the centre up and in again, wasn't he? Like he created a branch to pass. Moody was too good for the winger. Saunders with his ball. And we're pushing to the 15 minute mark and it's still 6 0 to uh, North Tamworth. Cootie have the feed 20 metres on their own try line. I think that uh, might be Jesse Campbell having a hit up. Good solid defence again by the North Tamworth Bears. Kieran Fisherman, Luke, uh, sorry, uh, Shadesco in the front line and Shane Lee Wobwell. Now we've got Jake McManus and Alec Cocking making that tackle. Zach Hatch jumps out to the short side. Short little pass to his brother. Good tackle again by Scotty Blanche and Jake McManus. Ben Williams having another hit up for the Cootie Roosters. He's, uh, he's got making getting through a lot Great, of work. Uh, Benny Williams. Be Benny and uh, Liam Hatch, they're, they're playing well above their weight against these forwards for Norse and they're sticking their hand right up for Cootie. Chrissy Hunt again, he retrieves the kick. Reminder, beats Cochran. Taylor. To he's um, so going to tackle 40 metres out there, driving him back. Lost ball. He's got oh, a, they've called knock on. Pretty sure there might have been a hand in there. Yeah, I mean, Brownie, Brownie was in good position. I think they're probably going to kick the Chrissy's wing because they're maybe not thinking that he's quick as Yorkie, but I reckon they might change that tactic soon and kick the Yorkie's wing. The wind, you know, York, Yorkie's wing, the wind's blowing that way, and uh, Yorkie's, Yorkie's known for a couple of little errors in his game. You're not going to get an error out of Chrissy Hunt when he starts like this. Mick, they kicked the Shadesco once and he wasn't keen to catch it, hadn't been back again. They've kicked to a bloke that's been around, like you said, for a long time. And, mate, he, he, he'll drop it rather than not try to have a crack at it, will he? You know, like Chrissy Hunt. I played with Chris for a while, uh, coached him, and uh, he's a confidence player. When he's on, uh, he, he wants to, you want to be the furthest you can away yeah, from him. So and um, he's on today at the moment. And I wouldn't be kicking to him at all. Well, now we, uh, we've got Cootie with the ball. Zach Hatch taking a hit up. He's uh, about 18 metres out from the North Tamworth try line. Tackled by Shane Lee Wadwell and Josh Schmidl. They go back to the short side. To Chris Vidler, good tackle by Nick Dobson down low, but he gets the ball away. Comes back to Sammy Taylor, a little bit of a dummy to nobody. Jack Rumsey chimes in. Kyle Cochran and Andrew Moody meet up again. Good, solid tackle. Offloaded. I think that ball's travelled forward. Unlucky by Cochran. Idea was right. Just uh, execution was probably a little bit off. But uh, Will Saunders yeah. was there unmarked. But he probably... Girls? There, the, the pass from um, uh, Cochran... He, when he got it out, his arm just got pulled and the ball went forward. It was yeah, it was good work by him. And he, and he came up with a try. It wasn't bad defence by the North Tamworth. They, they slid. Again, Jake McManus worked hard on the inside. Sorry, Scotty Blanch and Jake McManus worked hard on the inside to help Moods out. I'm uh, not sure who's the winger. Chrissy probably didn't need to go in and, and help out. I think they pretty much had Yum Yum covered, but um, they got away with it. Just and on that play, Mick, if Sammy Taylor really bites into the line there, he holds Blanchy up, which then makes it a massive difference, like Blanche and McManus up, which makes a massive difference for Rumsby out the back when he comes around. And yes, I think yeah. that could be the difference on the edges with the two teams. The, the, the two cootie halves, they don't, go to, they don't go to the line much, whereas someone like a Scotty Blanche, he'll take them on, and if they're not at him, he'll go. So It's uh, Cootie's lifting up here in the fence. Good tackle from Zach Hatch and Cameron McDonald. Ryan Ingram not known for his running, and good solid tackle by Jesse tackle. Kim. Sorry, Logan Howe, good solid hit. But, uh, if Cootie can put a couple of good sets of defence here, Norse are a bit uh, walking in the middle here. Uh, the week off mightn't have helped them. So they, if they can really put a couple of real good sets in, they could be a bit of a chance here. The, the fullbacks aren't real keen to get the ball on the full today for some reason. I don't know how the, big that wind is, but it's obviously playing a part. Jack Rumsby's taken that one 30 metres out from his own try line. He's been good, Rodwell, the front rower early. He got he's, through plenty of work, hasn't he? He's, he's been mean uh, in defence too. He's he's really rattled a few of the Katingle boys. It's, um, Chris Vidler has another hit. Chris Vidler and Benny Williams at the moment for me, for Cootie, uh, have been outstanding with the amount of work they've got through. It's, um, I think not, not having your, your, your two pivots, and we've touched on it a couple of times, not taking a line on in Geordie and, and Sammy, both with injuries. Might not be the might not again another good run by Benny Williams. Nick Dobson fell off that one fifth and last. Josh Meadle makes that tackle. We got Zach Hatch out to Sam Taylor. Little kick in behind. Shadesco end up sitting up nicely for him. Cameron McDonald chases hard, gets beat by Mitch Sheridan. Geordie Sharp got beat by Mitch Sheridan, but good tackle by Zach Hatch and uh, Sammy Taylor end up getting his kick with Liam Hatch helping out. Josh Meadle comes in from the right side. They have a run on the left side. Good run through the middle there. 
Good low tackle by, uh, can't see who that is, Benny Williams, sorry. With Zach Hatch over top. Chainley Wadwell gets in behind the eight defenders and picks up a penalty for a high shot. He'll have a bit to say to him. This is where it's dangerous for Cootie if they could have backed that, that set up with another good set of defence. But now Norse are, uh, they're going to be down their end and... It Kieran, could, uh, Kieran Williams is laying down the law to the, uh, the boys. I think he's told Scott Blanche not to kick for touch. Let's just go at him. And Nick Dobson, the smallest front rower in the competition, even though he's got 13 on his back, takes the first hit up. Then Ali Cocking takes the second one. Ali Cocking was a country under-18s front rower. A 16s front row three or four years ago. Maybe a couple more than that. But a uh, bustly little front rower. Now, we've got uh, Scott Blanche play short. The Jake McManus poked his nose through there. Good tackle. Benny Williams again. Real good he's tackle been, from the lock. Mate, he's been their best by a mile. He, he's been fantastic, and he? he's got through a lot of work. A I lot reckon. Of work. I reckon their little forwards have been fantastic for Katingle. It's not. Uh, I think. Uh, I think uh, Brownie signal six to go, but we'll yeah. wait for the count. That's Jake McManus. If that is, that's number one. Pass Chainley him. Wadwell. Will, will, he'll go to the line and pass out the back to Kieran Fisher. There we go. Look at that. Then out the back to Josh. Takes him on. Passes. Good ball from Smeedle out the back to Ferris Fisher. But, uh, we've got to knock on there a little bit, a little bit uncharacteristic from the uh, North Tamworth side. It's um, not the not the kind of football they normally play. But uh, Cootie have come up with an error, and uh, they'll get the ball. I'm going to say 15. It looks like 15 metres from their own try line. With the win, Sammy Taylor has to get his kicking game right. I, I, you know, his first kick was tremendous, and I reckon his next three kicks have been probably not what you know Coach Sharp would be looking for. With this win, they really need to camp Norse down here and make them work off their line. I don't think I would have been looking for a chip 40 metres out um, in that last set. I don't think with that big win, they've got to make the most of it at the moment. And I'd be kicking to that scoreboard corner. They've already, I think there's been two 40-20s already today. Um, and I think that's where they've got to get their value. And big Shane Lee Wadwell shoots out of line, hits his target on Benny Williams. That's the lowest Lee. tackle I've ever seen <laughs> Ginny do. <laughs> Liam Hatch again, he's been good on this right edge for Cootie. Zachy Hatch is now dummy off. Benny Williams is starting to look a bit tired, Benny. Uh, Sam Taylor comes back. Good pressure from Jake McManus. Good pressure from Luke. Good hands from Cochran. Oh, and, then, uh, oh, and it's Willie, spilled on the wing. I think Willie Saunders was looking the kick before he actually passed. Um, but, you know, I think we've got to pay a little bit of credit there to Jake McManus. He chased hard on Sam Taylor. Um, made ch Sam change his mind on what he wanted to do. And the, and the rest of the boys went with him. And... They've come up with an error, but I'm starting to think that North need to convert this. They've been down here a little bit now. They probably need to convert that into some points or at least get a repeat at the end of this repeat. I, I feel North, to be honest, make a right on top here. I know they probably played outside their boundaries there the last time they were down here, but for Katingle not to get to any kick then, that's just playing in the North's hands. Um, North are the sort of side they build pressure. They can score three or four in, in no time. So Richard Clegg takes the first one from the hit up, 40 metres from the Kuti, uh, Katingle line. Jeremy York comes in from the right wing to have a hit up, uh, works it to the middle, so they've got options both sides. Zach Hatch is making another tackle with Ben Williams, for me being the Kuti best player. Shane Lee Wadwell has a hit up through the uh, through the middle, stumbling and stumbling, and he gets there finally, gets tackled by Zach Hatch again. Chris Hunt scoots out from dummy half, picks up an easy 10 drop metres. Drop ball, Mick. It's a drop ball. Um, I thought that was stripped too. I, I thought there was a hand in there yeah, that brought he's, that out. He's not blowing up, Chrissy, so I think it might have just been a loose carry. So Cam McDonald cleaned that up. Chris Vidler has another hit up for, for Cootie. I think some of these other forwards need to give you know, give Chrissy and Benny a bit of a hand. They're, they're getting through a, a mountain of work at the moment. Cam McDonald's only had the one hit up so far this half. I think he needs to get in and give Chrissy a bit of a hand. And now he's coming from the field. I think. Uh, I don't know if he's carrying an injury or something or he's got through a lot of defence, but Ben Williams and Chris Young did, uh, sorry, Chris Vidler did a lot of work there. I think Cam probably could have helped out a little bit. We're on tackle four now, halfway with Zachy Hatch. Ball's gone to Jordan Sharp. Sam Taylor puts up another midfield draw bomb. I think that might have been his coach from the sideline letting him know that he wasn't happy with that kick option. It's another one that, yeah, Mitch, yeah just, look, it's just it, not where it should be. <laughs> they've got to come up with better options than that. Look, and Sam's got a very good kicking game, and I've said it before, I think he's got one of the best kicking games in, in bush footy. But tonight, no, tonight, today, that's sort of not coming to the fore, is it? He's, I don't know if that ankle injury or knee injury is playing on him, but the, he's just not striking we, the ball as good as he normally does. We know Norse is an 80-minute team. If I was Cootie, I'd be, like you said, we'd be looking for the scoreboard corner, putting it out, um... Building a bit of pressure, as you said, Cootie are going to um, 
you know, they're struggling to defend here. Norse are making good ground. Just um, got to say, tub my man James Cooper's just made his way onto the field. Rodwell, he's gone through, put a kick. Oh, he got too much on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure he needed to kick that, Shinny. I, think he, I don't think he did neither. Think if he looked to his left, he, he got his had hand numbers. up to come off now, eh? Like every good player, make a mistake and come off. No, is he, is he coming to. He's come, no, he's oh, not allowed. Oh, the coach has sent him no, back. Scrum, no, because can't of scrum. Come to scrum. Oh. He'll have to play on the wing here. <laughs> you, go, you go back to the, the kicking game. The last three or four sets that they've kicked to them, they've started on the 30 or the 40 Norse. You need them starting on the 10 or 15, you know. And um, if you're you're going to beat a good side win. like this. You know, I know Norse have had a couple of kicks themselves, at it, but they've got, they're have got kicking into the wind. So where their kicks are ending up, you, you probably can't really control too much. But with Cootie with that wind behind them, they need a better result on that kick for mine. I think I think Cootie, yeah, they, they need to be using that wind and s slow it down as much as possible, keep Norse in their end. Um, they need to try and stay in the game as long as they can. So they need to, you know, put the ball... Uh, putting it over the sideline would be better than what they've been doing. At 6-0, you know, like, they've given them kick leg start, the kick starts, haven't they, the Norse? You know, I feel they have anyway. You know, I, I just thought that's the one thing that they would have had to get right today was their kicking game. And, you know, in the second half, maybe go to the air because you'd get some value out of the wind probably bringing it back yeah, there. We're pushing on 25 minutes into the game, and that's the unofficial clock, so... It's only 6-0, so Cootie are still in the game, so yeah. it's Cootie still really tight. Cootie need to have their best footy for the day in the in the end of this first half while they've got the breeze. Definitely if they're going to be a chance, they need they need to pull their finger out, and, and this needs to be the time where they need to stand up. Young Jack Anderson down the sideline. They're appealing for a 1,000 penalties for if he had some mates to help him. I don't think there was anything high there, but it was a good run from Jack Anderson. He's uh, turned into a very good winger in first grade. That's a good kick. Good catch. Shadesco by name, by nature. Good chase by Bluey Smith, a fullback that's now playing front row. See, it's I think I think again there, Cootie just went side to side too much. They're too passing and things like that. I think they need to roll their sleeves up and go forward while they've got the breeze at their back. Uh, Brock Wadwell, I this think. Is, this is the uh, difference in on. them outside backs from Norse. Yeah. Um, you've got, you know, the winger on the other side in York coming in. Good run. Um, you have Moody then. That was a great carry by Moody. Set his forwards up to get a roll on. I'd like yeah. to see the stats for Norse. I'd reckon uh, Chrissy Hunt and Andrew Moody would be up there for hit-ups. Uh, two blokes who have been around a long time and they know what their, their role is as outside backs. Uh, they've probably had more hit-ups than the, than, than the, than the fronties. The game will probably come alive a little bit here. Brocky Wadwell, who, who likes to run a little bit more from dummy half than Ryan Ingram does, has just uh, has just come on. So they could liven up around that ruck if, if Cootie get a little bit lazy. Chris Vidler's still out there and Ben Williams is still out there. What uh, what are the odds of Brock staying on the whole game, uh, not getting sin uh, I'll, I'll say he'll be fine. He'll be fine? <laughs> here goes James Cooper. That's 50 to one. my man. Go, look at him go. It's, uh, He's let that high shot tackle he gets that high shot Zach Hatch and Liam Hatch, the it's, two brothers, make a good solid tackle. Very attractive, Rock. that forward, Mick, and that's where they just attacked. It looks like that Shane Lee Wadwell's been replaced by Benny Jarvis. So good minutes for Chinny, 25-odd uh, minutes. Ben Jarvis will come it on. It was quality too, wasn't James it? Coop hasn't been on there long, and he's walking already. Uh, not sure what's happening there. Josh comes from the right to the left. He's still pushing and pushing. Back Rock to Wadwell. It's... Uh, Mitch Sheridan goes a dummy half out the back to Kieran Fisher. Takes him on himself. He's in. And he's gone in good. See, he played direct. And I guess on the back of, um, I know Josh come from the right side, come in, got uh, an offload to Brocky Wadwell. Brock Wadwell got the quick play of the ball. Uh, Shadesco, quick ball out to Kieran Fisher. And he just played direct and played, you know, played up, play up, excuse me, played eyes up football. It was just amount of possession I think you know like Katingle I'll go back to the kicking game I don't want to harp on it but I know I am but you know getting kick starts starting you know 60 metres 50 metres out Norse they're getting there too easy for me yeah look North, North Hamworth are playing between their 20 and Cootie's try line you know and in respect you know Cootie's playing from their try line and North Hamworth's 20 that they haven't really got inside North Hamworth's 20 metre zone to, to do anything and you know it probably comes back to the kicking game with that wind You'd be liking to come up. I don't know. Again, a bit like you, Rose. You don't want to harp on it, but Sammy Taylor, and I've said it many, many times. He's got one of the best kicking games in bush footy. Just I don't know if that injury's playing in his head, or he's just not striking a ball as well as he normally does. 
Um, and you look, you know, you look kilo-wise, they're nowhere near as big, Katingle, so you need to rely on, you know, they're energetic and they'll, they, they give their all, but the kicking game's really important, you know, get their defence down here, be energetic and the la- put them under the pump. The last set uh, where Jack Anderson made that little half break down the sideline, Katingle only made 40 metres in their set and he made a half break. They went side to side, they got the wind behind them, um, they really need to be rolling. They've got to get forward. Like, I know their forward pack's not as big, but, uh, you know, when when uh, Benny Williams is having two hit-ups to everyone else's one, uh, their outside backs aren't doing anywhere near as what North Tamworth and, are doing. And on the, on, the, on the end of the set, we put a bomb up. You know, um, Sheridan picks it up, and he gets tackled 40 out. So, you know, they've made 60 with a kick in there. And that's when that's behind a reasonable win. I don't want to sound critical on the, on the cutie forwards by any stretch, but they've got to get in and help Chrissy Vidler and, and Benny Williams out. Now, I, I see that... Uh, Mick, I don't, I don't think it's just on their forwards, though. Uh, as I just said, uh, you look at what Moody and uh, Chrissy Hunt are doing for Norse. I think, you know, Kyle Cochran can come and take the ball a bit or... Anthony, uh, Anthony Pascoe's just come on and I can't see Chris Vidler out there so I'm going to say that he's replaced Chris Vidler. Uh, James Cooper has a second hit up for the restart of play. They're this is what North Tamworth do really well. Sorry, Bones, is after a try they, they tend to get to their kick really, really well. Yeah, they've got to, Katingler got to find a way too to get Cochran into the game, haven't they, with the football. You know, like he, I think he's had two touches. You know, yeah. one offload nearly led to a try, you know. And he needs to come in and look for it a little bit. Like, he, he, he's, his leg speed and that around the ruck as well. Like, I know they've got him in the centres, but he can trouble teams anywhere he goes. And I think to get the ball out to him, Cootie are going sideways. So he needs to come looking for it a little bit. Even even Jack, who's got the ball now, um, with some of the confidence he's been playing in the last couple of weeks, I think he needs to get more touches. T- totally agree. He's got, I think Brownie's got... Yeah, he got Karen there, I think. Uh, going a little bit too early, I think. Yep, going too early, brings him back, yep. Yep, too that early. That was a well-needed penalty for Katingle. Look, it's on the unofficial clock, we've got about nine minutes to go to half time, so it's important for me, for Cootie, even if they don't score, that they spend the best part of these ten minutes, you know, camped in North Tamworth, 20, 30, 40 even. Yep. Their attack here, Mick's got to, they, they've got to play their best footy right now. They've got, to, they've got to put Norse under some pressure. It's not about scoring points here, but it's really putting the Norse defence under some pressure. Ask some questions and then come back the second half with a bit of confidence. Anthony Pascoe takes tackle number two. Uh, he got hit on the 40 and driven back to the 45. 45 metres from the North Tamworth line. Good tackle by James Cooper and Ben Jarvis. Ben Williams having another tackle. Oh, they'll get done for high tackle there. Brocky Wadwell. It's a bit of pushing and shoving going on in here. It's um, Geordie Sharp's looking for a quick tap. You're not going to get it there, Geordie, buddy. Sorry. But, um, only, that's uh, probably only blemish on Brocky's game. He can come up with those kind of errors. They, they probably didn't need to give away that penalty. Good solid tackle by Nicky Dobson. Uh, good ball on all. Brock Wadwell over top to clean up. Zach Hatch at uh, dummy half. Anthony Pascoe having another hit up. Getting through plenty of work since he's come on. Which is good, uh, Josh Meadle and uh, Brocky Wadwell. I'll take a Benny, uh, sorry, Sammy Taylor turns Anthony Bluey Smith. Old Josh, M- old Josh Meadle, was it? Did you say? <laughs> Another penalty, we're going to have time Lee, out here. Here, Cooper, Benny Jarvis. It's, uh, it'd be interesting. I'd like to know what uh, the penalty, what the warning's going to be for, slowing down or rubbish in the tackle. Because it was a pretty quick tackle, I think it might be for the rubbish in the tackle. If James Cooper's in there, it's probably rubbish. Sorry, James. Just lucky to be in there, I'd say, for Cooper, to be honest, Mick. We've got about eight minutes to half time. So what, what was that signal there, Tubbs? Did you see that? No, I didn't see yeah, what he signal, Bill Bluey Smith, we've got 20 metres out from the north. I was too busy time. looking at Cooper's new haircut. <laughs> Jake McManus, Lige, Cooper in again. Ben Williams Captain having another coach of north real. Off to Captain and coach from North reeled out of that tackle. He's got a stinger or something wrong with the right shoulder, right arm. Zach Hatch has Hatch. a from dummy half. That would have been a good little cheek side there. Good defence there by Smeedle. Brother-in-law and brother-in-law again. That's twice in the game. Geordie Sharp, nice little play. Great defence. Good run by Jesse Campbell, prepared to hit that hard line. That's a Geordie Sharp's a trying this to milk be, in a penalty. Yeah, this will be, be 10 minutes, off. definitely. That was silly. So silly. Uh-huh. That was deserving. That was deserving. He, he was to his feet to play the ball, and Karen definitely pulled his feet from out under him. Mm-hmm. 
That's all right. He'll be fresh for the second half. This Look, is, um, this is what, this is what Katingle needed, but they needed to spend a bit of time here. Now they just need to ask some questions. You will understand when I say this. It's about five minutes to half time. So if you're going to get 10 in the bin, this is ideal because only five minutes each half without a player. So realistically, it's not that big a deal. Um, it's not going to hurt them that much. They've only got to defend for five minutes each side of the half. So. And I'd, I'd be really putting the Jarvises and Coopers and, you know, Brocky Rodwell's under pressure here. Yeah, I think they've got to work, you know, that, that, that Denny Jarvis. He's, uh, he's not a good mover around the paddock. It's, um, he's been around a while and he knows, he knows his footy. Good tackle, so, Chrissy Hunt, Hunt. on Cochrane. Monster, Chrissy Hunt. Good tackle. And now Benny Williams. I thought Benny was going to get another hit on. Jack Rumsby. Rumsby. Out Mix it up out of half, Mick. He got two metres from the try line. Kyle Cochran. He uh, pretty much had no option then but to go himself. And if he lets that go, he'll get a penalty for a rake. But he held on to it. Two metres from the try line. Zach Hatchett, dummy half. Brock Good Woodwell ball. gets up fast. Jordy Sharp. He's uh, put a kick in. Bluey Eric Smith's offside. Up. Bluey Smith's offside. And they've dropped it. They've dropped it. Oh. So he wasn't offside. It was just an opportunity missed. That's I don't a, know who. I don't know who got the ball, but why did he pass that in goal? I think it was the number 11. Uh, did, he, did he pass or did he just drop it? I think it? he just no, dropped it. He, he, he passed drop it. it. He caught yeah. it and threw it to him. I thought he dropped it, but that was a... a it was a good, good run from Moody. It was a good kick by Geordie Sharp. So it was a great was set. It was a good set. At least they asked a couple of questions. Josh this is what they do. A couple of the old horse. heads. A yeah. couple of the yeah, old heads going run, forward for Bears. Good, good play the ball. Brocky Wadwell now off to James Cooper. Uh, Tackled by Liam Hatch. Anthony, Anthony Pascoe probably lucky to get away with a flop there. I've got to get this in about James Cooper. He was once described as very soft and hard to watch, Mick, but he's going <laughs> all right out here today. <laughs> he's that dummy half now. He can do anything. That pass off that. the ground. Nice little kick by Scotty Blanche. Well picked up, Jack Rumsby. Great work from Jack Not Rumsby. Not a bad there. game at the back, Jack Rumsby. He uh, hasn't made any errors as yet. Uh, Will Saunders comes in for a scoot. A good solid tackle, Benny Jarvis. Over the top, good clean up with, uh, looks like Brock Wadwell underneath. But, uh, now goes out to Anthony Pascoe, tackled by... The way Josh I see Lee this game going, boys, I think uh, it's only a matter of time before Scotty Blanche injects himself here soon. Good ball, good ball from Jordy. Jordy good read, off defensively. To Campbell. Good read, good read from uh, Cleggy. Now we've got Zach Hatch. I wonder if Zach's dropped into the lock position. Seems to be having a few more. Benny Williams is now at dummy half. Sam Taylor. He's going with another midfield kind of bomb. He's going to try and milk a penalty here. It's, uh, it's an interesting tactic, this kicking game. I don't want to be critical on it because I don't know what the game plan was, but um, they, they seem to be giving more Timoth ball in good, good position. Now we've got, uh, I think that's Shadesco had a run from dummy half on tackle two, tackled by Jordy Sharp and Anthony Pascoe. You have to really credit Katingle's defence here. Um, <laughs> the, the, amount of, the amount of tackles they've had to make in, in their end because of their kicking game, um, they've done a mountain of work. It's here, this is important. They're, they're going at 12 nil or 16 or 18 nil is a massive difference, isn't it? Oh, great tackle. Who was that? Cameron McDonald. Sam Taylor. It was, was around Taylor. the head, Mick. He got too. him fairly high. Oh, uh, Brocky James. Rodwell. Who was that? James Cooper and... Uh, Brocky Rodwell. Out of dummy half. Was it, Jay, was it Brock Rodwell or James Cooper? Brock Rodwell, mate. Sorry, buddy. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Coops. Have we got some pushing and shoving going on in the middle there? The game's starting to liven up. Must be a kid in the crowd he was passing that to. No, Brock Rodwell's going to go and have a chat to Kyle Cochran. Change over, oh, Mick. It must have been forward as well. Oh, okay. Pass. I thought they were having a... Because uh, Cochran got a good shot on Brocky. And uh, I thought Brocky was going to go and ask him about it, but... Uh, Anyway, that Brock makes a tackle on Liam Hatch. Norse, working off the try line. Norse could have put one end on the trophy there, couldn't they? They could have come up with something, but um, this is what Kyle needs to be doing more of. And there they need. They've got to push with That's him. That's Rumsby needs to be there, doesn't he? Yeah, here's an opportunity now. Jesse Campbell comes back inside. Good offload. Who's that? That's Logan Howard. He's What's he doing? Why didn't he pass? Why, why did he just not <laughs> hold the best it? kick of the half from him. Well, at least that's tackle it, one. It's about minutes. where all their kicks should have been, yes. 
tackle one, five metres from the try line. Good cover, good cover from the right side of the field. You've got Josh Meadle, Jeremy York. And, now, Mick, uh, just a quick and, one yep. while we've got time. Did you ever sport the same haircut as your son in your playing days? <laughs> never, ever. Never, ever. But uh, good cover defence from the right side of the field. Richard Clegg, Jeremy York and Josh all come to cover that kick. I'm not sure Mick, if... Uh, Mick would have been back there to cover that up. <laughs> he wouldn't have run back there. No. <laughs> but, uh, well, oh, forward. that could have been forward. Oh, yes, it was. It's, uh, it's not an error they needed there. Josh knew straight away when he caught that <laughs> too, didn't he? Sort of. That's um, unfortunately that's Brocky picking up where Josh is used to doing that little play with with Ryan Ingram. It's um, look, Cooties Kudy, deserve that. They've earned. I shouldn't say deserve it. Cooties earned that. Um, yeah, they they spit him down there. Good long ball from Geordie Sharp. It'd be good for Cooties to get across the line here before half time. Oh, I'm just not sure that I think it was Jesse Campbell. I'm not sure if he actually needed to kick it. No, I think he probably. This is where Kyle done would a have been Kyle good Cock to see him come and try to find his winger because yeah, the winger yeah. Saunders was looming up, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh no, we uh, yep. No nah, half time. Didn't get the scrum pack. All right, rolls. We're going into half time. What are you, uh, your Jeff Sharp? What are you telling your boys? Um, Mick, I've been real critical of the kicking game. I, I think in the second half, probably trying to put it in the air and let the wind, wind bring it back to you, but I think to compete against Norse, you need to drive it into the corners. Um, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I probably would be driving it into Chrissy Hunt's corner, um, making Chris carry have that first carry to take him out of you know like them carries later on in the set but in saying that um, the, the other winger York is, is a strong carry of the ball too but for Katingle to be in this I think their kicking game's got to be um, a lot more you know a lot more structured and um, probably to let their chase get behind it and probably their first two or three tackles you know what I mean like on the back of that um, being real strong and I still think Norse there's a little bit of you know, through the middle there, I think, you know, inside plays, if they did get, get, get going forward, I think they're for Rumsby's and, you know, them sort of boys, boys back through the middle. Now, Tub, you're the North Tamworth coach. What are you saying to your boys? You're leading by 12-0. What's, uh, what's your message to them at halftime? Oh, no, I think um, Norse have just got to keep doing what they're doing. I, 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 um, a couple of silly passes there towards the end of the half, but um, they've been making good ground into the win through their sets. Uh, so I think they just need to keep doing what they're doing. They got, mate, they, they got the old heads on the field there, as we said before. Chris Hunt, Andrew Moody, even Cleggie from the other side. They're, they're getting in. I know the other the other side of the field hasn't seen as much as um, Chrissy and, and, and Moods, but they're getting in, helping their forwards. And Josh and um, uh, even Chinny's been, been really good in that first half. They're punching it forward really good. So... They've got the breeze behind them now and you'll be just telling them to punch it down the field and make the most of their kicking game and, and defend solid. Now, North, North Tamworth have gone down to the shed as they generally do at half time. Cootie stayed out here on the field. Um, they look very relaxed for a side that's 12 nil down at half time. Sharpie looks pretty relaxed at half. You know, he's, he's not his normal animated self. He's pretty relaxed. The boys look pretty relaxed. Is that, someone, a, is that a good sign or a bad sign? Someone said to Sharpie on Wednesday, you're 12 nil down and your boys have worked their butts off. He'd probably, you know, like I know probably playing Norse, I'd be happy with that. And um, I'd probably, what he's probably got to convince him is I'd take a fair bit out of that last seven or eight minutes. Um, don't be, don't, don't be fooled. They've probably created enough to score two tries, get tingle. So, now especially there, that last couple of minutes, they could have easily went in at 12-4 or 12-6. But, um, you know, I keep coming back to that kicking game. If they can get that in order and play with the same energy and them sort of things. And, you know, like just get one foot on the straight of Norse and just see what they've got to offer. Just go on to Norse. I really think Blanche, I um, mean, good ball's really got to get control of if their I was, um If I was Benny Williams, who's done a monster, monster load of work for uh, Katingle, if my two halves weren't shaping up very shortly in their kicking game, he's played a fair bit in the halves too. He might as well do the kicking for him as well. What about, um, would you, as a coach, would you be tossing with putting Cochrane in the middle to go with a little bit of fire there? Well, I think I think they need. I think they need him in closer to the ball. As I said before, I think he needs to. Um, between you know him and Chrissy Vidler are, are the two uh, old heads in this side. Um, but I think Kyle needs to be getting the ball a lot, a lot more. And and someone like Jack Runsbury from the back, he needs to. You know, blokes like them who are in the backs at the moment, they need to be helping their forward pack. Put them two together. Bring Chris back fresh. Put Cochran there early and really take them on. Um, would it be? 
would it be an option, you know, then to give Rumsby a bit of you know, a bit of room or you know a bit of speed? Yeah, I think it would. I, be. I really think if they're going to win that, you know, win this, I think they've really got to take Norse on there and try to get the Smeedles and McManuses making some tackles in the middle. And we'll because be probably, um, um, sorry, Ros, we probably do need to wrap Cootie's uh, defence. I mean, the, the Norse have been down there a fair bit that first half, and. and no, Cootie, Cootie's defending and kept them out. Uh, like we said, Mick, like a 12 nil down, if you said to Sharpie, you've had to, you know, withstand a fair bit of pressure from Norse. Like, not very often Norse would go in 12 nil with the ball they've had and where they've had it. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they'll utilise the win more in the second half anyway. We'll have a quick break, um, so he's going to have a bit of a rest from us, and uh, we'll come back for the second half. But we'll thank our sponsors, Tui's, One Cadman Financial Group, and uh, the Blanche family, along with AMPS Rural. Thanks, everybody. Uh, second half's underway with the 2019 Grand Final. Pete Stevens has had to go home for his Warrior Elder Wombats presentation night. Luke Taylor's ducked off to get himself something. So Geoffrey Faint's going to be jumping in and helping out. He uh, just sent out a cheerio to the Gunnedah boys. And they uh, just sent a text wanting, uh, wanting us to say good day. So good day, boys. Hope's all going up well. Um, 
and first penalty of the second half goes to North Tamworth uh, for Cootie not getting off the play quick enough. Josh Mead will take a hit up about 40 metres out now from the uh, Cootie try line. It's um, Benny Jarvis takes a hit back straight to the middle, uh, back at the black dot, and and has a knock on. So probably not an ideal start for either side. A penalty then a turner. Welcome back, Jeffrey. Hello, Michael. Interesting afternoon. Uh, what, what's well, we got a bit of a break. What's your take on the first half? A bit scrappy, but uh, we've got a game on still. Um, Cootie have been gallant so far. Um, we were all a little bit critical on, on Cootie up here with a kicking game in the first half. Obviously. Definitely. Yeah, yeah did I'm not, not use it enough. Had a 12 point win behind. I need to go higher and more torpedo bombs. That was my thought. Yeah, totally. Uh, might regret it in the second half. And so anyway, we're back to the action. Kyle Cochran has the first hit up off the scrum. Scott Blanche, Andrew Moody, and Jake McManus fail to put him down. Strong run from Kyle Cochran. Bluey Smith, the next fullback now, a front rower, comes in, has a hit up, get an offload back to Kyle Cochran. And another offload now from Geordie Sharp out to, looks like big Logan Howard. And then Jake McManus comes in the clean up. No, Brock Wadwell, sorry. Anthony Pascoe goes down the short side. Good tackle by James Cooper. And uh, Richard Clegg, I think it might be, yes. And Brocky Wadwell again. Zach Hatch a dummy half. Ben Williams has got through a mountain of work for Cootie for me. I think he's been their best so far. Have to agree there, Michael. Not, not far behind has been Chrissy Vidler. Yes. Uh, North Tamworth had a stream of good footballers, good players. Sam Taylor out the back to Jack Rumsby. But, uh, Will Saunders goes through half a little gap. Good strong run from Willie Saunders. ex center now playing on the wing. Jack Rumsby a dummy half, fifth and last. 30 metres from the North Tamworth line. Sam Taylor, a lot of pressure from Nick Dobson. Good tackle. That's Good a, tackle that's a big play there. from Nick Dobson. I think he's played the whole half so far. Welcome back, Tubby. You get your, your steak sandwich? Yeah. Or your pie? <laughs> but, uh, here we go, game on. Again, I'll just thank the sponsors while we get going. Tui's, Wayne Cabman Financial and Insurance Group, along with uh, the Land family and AMPS. And g'day again to the young uh, boys. Sent a text and wanted a cheerio. I don't know why he's wanted a cheerio. Terrible. Well, good break uh, here, Mick, straight up the middle. Oh, good oh, tackle. Jack tackle. Rumsby on James Cooper. I'm not sure. has never been in open paddock, so I'm not sure he knew what to do, but it was a good run and a good tackle. Certainly found out now what happened. Also looking for straight. runners. Brock Wadwell ducked out but had nobody there. Mitch Sheridan a uh, little bit lost at the moment. Norse without Kieran Fisher on the field. I think they've got another five minutes before he's back. Josh Middle takes another hit up through the middle. It's... um. He's not sure where he's going. He's bumping and rounding and going and throwing a dummy. Nice good tackle, tackle by right Logan. Good tackle, Logan Howard. Good low tackle. He can I think tackle. That's hurt. It's, uh, I think that's hurt him. Benny Jarvis, we're going to have Touch. six to go. Oh, six. That's, uh, that's not a good play, Bluey. Um, we've got six to go there now. They should capitalise from this. Scott Blanche takes it up. Chris Hunt again. He's had a monster of a game for North Tamworth. Ben Jarvis. They're about eight metres now from the north, uh, from the Cutie try line. One metre, sorry, tackle one. Finish the tackle off. Brock Woodwell at dummy half. Josh Meadle. Brock has a little go himself and he's, he's going to score. That, sorry, is too soft in a grand final. Don't want to be critical on Cutie by any stretch of the imagination. It's a grand final, but that, that's just a little bit too soft. Unfortunately, it's Ben Williams who's been their best and got through the most work. It's just a, I feel, I feel for Benny because for me, he's been Cootie's best. Got through a mountain away and it was just a missed tackle on Brock. Benny Williams business. has been close to the best on the field for the... Yeah, I'll go with that. I can go with that. But Benny's really had a workload for, for Kating. Um, you, you can well, pair... You can five pair. minutes because Kieran Fisher's just come back on. <laughs> yeah. So you compare you compare Benny's sort of size with what he's dealing with in the north and um, put in some. Now I don't know if Bluey Smith's been yanked or, or what's happened, but um, he's five minutes into the second half and Bluey Smith's come off. We've just got a bit of a technical issue here at the moment. Uh, 
Jake McManus comes in and uh, converts that Sweet. try. Happy to go. No, you can stay. Look, we've got a problem with Luke Taylor's um, microphone. I think Staff Luke forgot that it was a microphone when he looked at it. <laughs> he was pushing, it, he was pushing the button and not much was happening. He was wondering why. So I'll just his imagination run wild there. But anyway, North Tamworth now jump out to an 18 point lead. Uh, yeah, Luke, I'll go with you. I think Benny Williams has been close to the best on par. He hasn't done anything spectacular, but just got through a mountain of work. So we go uh, underway with a good deep kick by Sammy Taylor. Benny Jarvis brings it back. He'll be tackled about, oh, that's a good run in the end. Post contact metres, as they say in the NRL. He's on the 30 metre line. Crucial time here for Cootie. They've really got to knuckle down and keep North at bay just for this next five, ten minutes. Get himself back in the game. Another good solid run by Josh uh, through the middle there again. Now it's going to be on the 40 metre line. Wrestling trying to, and he's now off to James Cooper. Coops hasn't been too bad since he's come on. He's been a good uh, replacement for Alec Cocking. That's tackle three. Uh, Scott Blanche turns Jake McManus under and uh, good tackle by Cameron McDonald and Benny Williams again. Brock Wadwell ducks out from a marker. Scott Blanche pokes his nose through. And we've got a forward, forward pass. pass there. That's, um, that's the second one from Brocky today. Uncharacteristic of Brock. That'll give um, Cootie a bit of a chance to, to regroup here and get back in the game. They're on about the 40 metre mark and should find, with a good set, find themselves down deep into North Tamworth territory. This next 10 minutes for Cootie is really important. Um, they need to complete their set here, they need a good kick. Um, they need to play it in North Tamworth's end, make them come out. Um, obviously North have just scored early in this second half, they don't want to make it anymore. Okay, Willie Saunders takes the first one off the scrum. Zachy Hatch goes to dummy half. Chris Vidler's come back on for Bluey Smith, I'd imagine. Uh, they need him this, this half. He's come down injured, so we've got time out. Hope he's all right. Um, Benny Williams has just come off. I think Riley Taylor will probably go on there, but there might be a change here. I hope Chris Vidler's all right. He's a good fella. Been around Group 4 for a long time. And... Uh, and we're back on. Um, he's a little bit tender in that in that leg there. I don't think there was much in it. So I hope he's all right, Chrissy. Uh, tackle three, I think that might be men. Cameron Williams. Sorry, Cameron McDonald. Uh, Liam oh, Hatch comes up with an error. That's a bad turnover. We just yeah. spoke about how they needed to be good here. And they've come up with an unfortunate turnover. So and North are going to have the ball on the halfway line. Uh, from my point of view, good to see Jordan Sharp out there. Still, he had that dislocated kneecap last week, and he's really pivotal to Cootie's chances. So good to see him still out there, as well as uh, Fiddler. And is Cole Cochran still out there? Yeah, Cole, he Cole still, he's making that tackle now. On okay, the good. So he, he's a big weapon for Cootie. So let's hope that they can see the game out and, and maybe get, give uh, Cootie a bit of a chance back in this game. North, North, I know Kieran's just come back out. They're a little bit bunched there, and Brock was looking for runners, and rather than just going himself, he passed a, a bloke in a worse position, but they've come out of it all right. Here goes Andrew Mitty. He's a... Uh, oh, unlucky. Touched. He got enough on it. Chrissy Hunt was, was nearly in for a double. But um, I suppose he could have been a bit selfish there, Moods, and hung on I think that, that might have been touched by Cootie. Yeah, it was touched by Cootie. That's, well, that's what it looked like from here. I won't. No, he's no. calling knock-on by... Oh, no, double knock-on. Just looks like he's dancing at the moment. I'm not sure what he's doing. Katingle okay, feed. So he's called by, knock on, knock on by Norse. They got officials in better positions than us, but I thought that came off a cootie hand. But I'll go with the, the match day officials. I don't think Tony Hardy can see that far, so he wouldn't have had any input from this sideline. Well, well, Pete Stevens said earlier in the broadcast that obviously Tony Hardy's on the appointments board. That's how he got a run on the line. But we won't repeat that out loud. Okay, so we've got a scrum. Uh, on Cootie 10 metre line with Cootie feeding the ball ok Jesse Campbell has a hit up Geordie Sharp goes a dummy half Chris Vidler has another strong run he's a good solid tackle by Richard Clegg Nick Dobson and James Cooper uh, now Zachy Hatch Looks like he's dropped out Moved to lock. Into the back row. Full lock. Yeah, with Riley Taylor going to dummy half. Brother-in-law on brother-in-law again. But uh, Chrissy Villa having a, another hit up. They're, they're asking a lot of Chrissy. Some of these other boys need to get in and give him a hand. Uh, Cameron McDonald's the other front rower. He's got to get in and help his front row partner out a bit. You know, they're, 
It's going to be inside. Nice inside ball from uh, Geordie Sharp to Jack Rumsby. Good, solid run. Desperate tackle by uh, Kieran Fisher. It's a fifth and last from their 40, so they're not in too bad a position. Brock Wadwell's chasing out hard on Sam Taylor. Open up the gap, and uh, Sam got a good kick in in the end. Not too bad, actually. There's, uh, I thought there was a bit going on in the back play, but it wasn't at all good. They were lucky there, Cootie. They were lucky to get away with the kick. They really put pressure on the runner. If Jordan had had his eyes up there, had a half a gap in front of him. Oh, we've got a turnover here. So Cootie yes, on the attack. Drop the ball. Yeah, I think I think Jordy probably passed a bit early there, mate. I know what you're talking about. If his eyes up, you know, when uh, Brock shot out, he had eyes for Sam Taylor only. But they got an opportunity now. Zach Hatch is uh, since he's gone into in, into that lock position, I'd imagine that's where he's gone. He's had three or four hit ups, so he's uh, he's rolled the sleeves up a little bit. Young Zachy, the son-in-law. Well done. Good offload from, uh, I think, Riley Taylor. Now to Geordie Sharp. Some pressure here. Good tackle. That's nice a better ball. That's a better ball from Sharpie. That's a nice heaps ball. better ball. He's got to take it to the line and give his runners a chance with the pill. Now they're moving the ball here. They've got them stripped for numbers, but they come back inside. Brock Wadwell cleaned up nicely on the inside with, I think, that's Scott Blanche. Kyle Cochran's at dummy half. I'd near bet that he'll go himself. No. Nope. Sam Taylor on the Geordie Sharp. It's probably not the play you want. Your, your five-eight pass and long to your halfback when you need a back row, having that hard line run. Uh, James Cooper's cleaned up there. Now it comes to, I think that's Kieran Fisher, the halfback having a hit up, helping the forwards out. Still plenty of time to go here. Cooper, oh, you've got to be a bit patient in the shot. attack, and they've just given away a penalty with a high shot there, which is not going to help their cause. Yeah, unfortunately, Christy Vidler, just a little bit high. I know no Mitchell Sheridan's on. Yeah, I know. Vid Vids has never played with Malice, mate. He's, but uh, Mitchy Sheridan's only a, a, a small man and has just crept up. But unfortunately, these days it's a penalty. But, uh, again, it's you know, unfortunate, but it's a relieving penalty. Norse was struggling a little bit to get out. Chris Vidler's never played with Malice. He ran over me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you were an easy target, Tubby. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that, mate. I think he ran over plenty of people many a times. I don't think I ever got near him to tackle him. I let him go. It's uh, Shane, Lodwell, Shane Lee Wadwell's come back on. We've got a penalty. It's, um, this Chris, is where Norse are dominating them now. They're just up the middle. Their the yards are too good. He's, uh, Play the balls are too quick. The old stage of Chrissy Vidal has put himself into the game. His he's last having five a great minutes, game. Well, the last five minutes, mate, he's stepped up. I think the boys need to, need to go with him a little bit. I know Zachy Hatch has picked up the work rate in, in, in hit-ups, but a few of the other boys need to go with Chrissy Vidal at this stage. Not sure if Benny Williams is still out there. Well, I think uh, Vid's replaced Benny. But, um, the game's starting to liven up a little bit. There's a few chants and cheers from the crowd. Shane Lee Wadwell. I know I, call, I know I called it in the first half, but I'm pretty sure Scott Blanche needs to start running the ball here soon. He's, uh, he has numbers till there, the, Tubby, if you have a look. Till this stage, he's been playing in a dinner suit a bit, so I'd say uh, I, I, I'm putting my money on he'll start running the ball very shortly. Cootie have to hold him out here. They're looking a bit hands on hips. Here's a break here down the left-hand side. He's gone himself. Tubby's called it. Great call, Tubby. Oh, yeah. Captain coach for Bears in the corner. But, um, Expert opinion there from Luke Taylor. Said he had to run a bit more. He's done just that and scored for the Bears. It's, um, I see that Kyle Cochran in back play is down injured. Again, I, I hope he's all right. Good bit of sportsmanship there from Shane Lee Wadwell. Went and give uh, Kyle a bit of a pat on the back and helped him up. So might be grand final, might be the best of enemies, but th it's good to see still a little bit of sportsmanship like that because uh, Yum Yum puts, his, puts all into it. And uh, Unfortunately, I think it might have been him that missed that tackle on Scott Blanche. But Luke Taylor said it not so long ago that Blanche needed to get himself involved sure in the did. game. Um, there was a couple of little offloads there, and uh, in he goes. And the way that Jake McManus kicks, I'll, uh, I'll say this will jump out to 24 pretty quickly. Okay. So what's been said behind the line here, Mick? Four uh, tries to nil down. Can yeah. they come back? Have they got any hope? Uh, yeah. I, I don't think until you probably get the last five, ten minutes that you don't have a hope. But unfortunately, they're playing a side that hasn't lost this year and know how to grind out wins and yeah. that's probably what Norse will do from here they won't shut up shop but I'd imagine they're just going to keep grinding away get to the kick and finish off Cootie probably need to 
starts throwing it around a little bit. They um, need to take a bit of a chance, don't well, they? Well, they do. I mean, I know Sam Taylor put a chip and chase early in the game. Well, they probably need to try that this half. Yeah. Um, but, again, I know I've banged on it a couple of times. Benny Williams come, uh, has come off. Um, Zachy Hatch has gone to lock and doing a, a bit of work in there. But they, they, they need to help Chrissy Vidler out and get those yardies. It's just not enough other forwards helping him out. But, um, it's, uh, look, it's, they probably need to be next to score. Oh, most certainly. Most certainly. They need to be next to score, and then they need to get some momentum behind that. But we've got the kick here from the sideline. Let's see if we can put them out to 24-nil. 24-nil. Not going to make it. No. Nah, Across the face. Didn't even get the legs. Nope. That's, um... I know if uh, Reese Jager was kicking today, he would have kicked oh, yeah. it because he rates himself as a goal oh. kicker. He would have nailed that, he reckons. So that's a text that he just sent me. He said, I'm watching the live Everybody stream. He said, I've kicked that every day of the week. Oh, no. uh, so we back underway. Let's see what this kick chase is like from Cootie. See if we can read into how they're going to face the rest of this game. They, they, they've just got to be careful that the energy drop. And, you know, I know there's a chance the game can blow out if they let the energy drop. But um, they've just got to stay strong and, and stay with it. 20, 22 points in these days isn't a lot, but they do need to get on that scoreboard very, very soon if they're a chance of getting back into the game. Josh takes the first one off the kickoff. Shane Lee Wadwell has a good run. They probably need a bit better defence than that, Cootie, if they want to stay in this game. Geordie Sharp, Chris Vidler. Nick Dobson's having another hit up. Vidler's getting heavily involved you know what could be his retirement game. I hope it's not. I'd like to see him stay around rugby league because he's good for the game. So I hope he doesn't retire just yet. Shane Lee Wadwell has another hit up. He's uh, again he's injected himself into the game since he's come back on. Good tackle by Zachy Hatch and Chrissy Vidler again. Brock Wadwell at dummy half scoots out, runs behind his man, puts a bit of pressure on James Cooper, but a good catch. Good tackle by Geordie Sharp. I think that's the fifth and last. That's a good kick. Good set after a try. On the short side. There's a chip and chase. Strong tackle. Strong good tackle. tackle, Brocky Wadwell. Oh, we've got a headbutt thrown there. We've got a headbutt there. I think we're going to have a player sent off. Oh, now it's all on. It's going to get a bit ugly here. Chrissy Vidler could be in a bit of strife here. He's just come in third man in. I think there may be an elbow. <laughs> elbow reach Brock's, uh, Brock's face. I think... Uh, well, that all started with a very, very strong tackle. By Brock. I think... Uh, and there's been, it's still going on, guys. There's a bit of talk here. I think you'll find there was a headbutt in the Yeah, in I think there. we'll find two people in the bin. What do you reckon, guys? I reckon you'll find one cent. For one cent. Yeah, it was, a, it was gentle. Gentle, okay. A gentle headbutt. Let's put it like that. It's, uh, all right. Let's, uh, let's wait and see. Well, the boys came together there. There's a bit of feeling in the game, which which we want to see. We don't want to see anyone get hurt, but uh, it is a grand final day, so there's a lot on the line. Uh, big, strong tackle. All the boys came in. Maybe a headbutt. I'm just trying to work out who looks the trimmest out of Brad McManus and Dean Irvine. <laughs> We've got a break in play now. Well, well maybe that yellow cool shirt no, just does Brad a little bit of a favour. Doesn't it? He's got 10 in the bin. Right, oh, he's got 10. We'll let the crowd finish off. Okay, we'll be interested to see if anybody from North Tamworth goes. Right, is it Riley? Yeah, Riley Taylor. Riley Taylor's in, in, the the in the bin for a headbutt. And I dare say if Riley's gone, that uh, he's calling Scott Blanche out. Nobody from North being called out. Ah, penalty's going to go to Bears.
Well, the penalty's probably gone the right way. I think, um, as I said there before, I think Chrissy Vidler might have been very lucky there as well, which... Well, it is his brother-in-law of some sort, I think. I think they're connected through partners. So he's just come out to help the Raylo out. But um, it's a silly penalty from Riley when you've got the ball in hand trying to get back in the game. So the game could liven up here a little bit. James Cooper's having a bit to say. Um, the game could get a bit lively here. I think both sides just need to stick to the football. Um, good tackle there, I think. Uh, Zachy Hatch down around the legs. Chrissy Hunt's gone from dummy half. Been very strong today, Chrissy, in his yeah, been customary role as a winger. Good tackle by Kyle Cochran over the top. Big nice long ball, ball from Chinny. Oh, well done, Josh. Josh. Shane Lee Wadwell. Short ball to Josh Moodle in under the post. They've called it forward. No try. Corey Dixon, touch, uh, touch. Forward. No try. No try. No try, forward pass. Unlucky. That was a great run by Josh Smeedle. Do you know which pass they've called forward? Tune no. to Josh's. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. All right. We're, we're up in the box. We'll go with the uh, the refer. We'll go with the referees and the touch judges because they're in a in a better spot than us. But it looked pretty good from here, and I'll say that because he's my son. I would have been happy if he got a try in a grand final. But <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with the, the officials. They're in good good we're positions. We're so. in a pretty good spot, and I pr- I we thought were, it was pretty. I, good. I, I, we were very I won't get too level. far into it. It's my boy, but um, it is what it is. We're twenty two nil. I missed the clock, so about twenty minutes into the second half. So at this stage, you'd be thinking North Samoa have got one hand on the on the premiership trophy and possibly a Clayton's Cup. Liam Hatch, uh, looks like Zach Hatch has gone back. Well, Zach will go back to dummy half now with Riley off. Liam has a hit up. Um, good to see the two brothers playing together. Zach's been pretty play. solid today. Mate, Zach's been good. He, he hasn't, hasn't made any errors. When he went to lock, he, he got through a bit of work and helped Chrissy Vidler out. I'll probably bang on about it that a little bit, as in they, they haven't, Cootie Fords haven't really helped Chrissy out a lot. It's. Um, yeah, Benny Williams was good when he was out there and got through a lot of work. So Cootie, not a bad set for Cootie out of trouble. A lot of pressure from Jake McManus. A good kick. Mitch nice Sheridan take. takes it on the full. He's back onto the uh, onto his own 40 already. So it's a good start by Shadesco. Right, let's see if North's going to take advantage of this man down from Cootie. Whether they're going to tackle. Sp- oh, he's good solid tackle yeah, by Cole Cochran. Solid tackle. Is there a drop ball there? There must be. And he's Cootie got a Slapping each other on the back. There's Cochran. a turnover. A bit of push and shove again. The game's livening up again. The boys are feisty. It was a good tackle by Kyle on Josh. Uh, for Sierra. The game's still alive by the players, put it that way. The, um, nobody's given up, which is good. Okay, so Cootie got the ball on the about 45 metres from the North Tamworth line so they're going to be in good field position to have an attacking rate at the end of the set of six long ball out to Jesse Campbell Richard Clegg shot up, didn't come up with the tackle but recovered well, good tackle by Kieran Fisher Shane Lee Wadwell and Richard Clegg that's um, on the halfway line so they actually lost metres on that run good run by Jack Rumsby, back in behind this the markers, this is what Jack needs to be doing he's here he's to get more involved hasn't he, you know, yeah, as an ex fullback Luke you'd be right into the game wouldn't you good oh, run by look, Chrissy Vidler again Jack's a big body and um He's uh, got a lot of ability that is very untapped there at the moment, and he and needs he, to just well get his hand on the ball. Side at the moment, so there's no reason that he can't be doing a little bit more. It's um, Brody Souter had a, had a good game in the reserve grade grand final. Got through a lot of minutes, up and backing up here for first grade. And a good tackle by James Cooper over the top. Zach Hatchett dummy half. I still Come think short I still think where Katingle need to be going is near the ruck. They, I think that's North's weak spot and. Uh, I think they need to be need to be working the ruck over a lot more. There's their first good kick of the game by Geordie Sharp. Good chase by uh, I think Jack Anderson and forced you know, Jeremy York back in goal. So it's I'll taken about 60 set. minutes for Katingle to do a good kick. Right, so the repeat sets here for Cootie. Let's see what they can come up with. They're a man down still, but uh, still got a lot of good attacking players out there. As the boys just spoke about there, Katingle fullback Jack Rumsby needs to inject himself. He is a strong runner, lots of pace. I'd just like to see Ken McDonald get a bit more involved and help Chrissy now that Zach's gone back to dummy half. What I'd like to see here from Cootie is. Uh, That's not that. Okay, not maybe that. what I'd like to see from Norse is. Uh, <laughs> 
That's, that's uh, uh, maybe catch the ball in the full yeah. from Cootie would be good. You can't well, give up those opportunities when they're presented to you on grand final day. You can't be too harsh on the on the big second row. No, you probably needed a bit of support there. Bumping run by Smeedle. I'm sure Josh will let Zach know about that one uh, no, at that the dinner Jordy table. Geordie Sharp. No, no, no. He, he, I he, just bumped him off. He bumped just bumped off. Zach off. <laughs> it was a real good one. It's, uh, looks like Brownie's put. Uh, looks like uh, Brock. Uh, sorry, Ryan Ingram's come back on. Jack Ooh, Patterson. Strong hit. He's just come onto the, the field for a good oh, offload nice off by load. Jack Patterson for uh, Mitchy Sheridan. It's uh, Jack Patterson's first run of the 2019 Grand Final. Well, the, the Cootie boys are still hitting hard yeah, here, so the life's not going out of the game. They've still got some fire in the tank. They haven't given up. Shane Lee Waddle, oh, a good strong run. Oh, what a ball. ball. Jack Patterson. Great inside ball there. It's... Um, Jack Patterson's been on the paddock for about two minutes and scores a try. That's a great offload by the Bears prop, wasn't it? Well, he, Nice yeah, fend, and then he broke free with his right arm and just popped it back inside. Chinny, uh, Chinny offloaded for Josh's no try, then he offloaded for Shero's try. It's... Um, Shane Lee Wogler might have just played himself in the man of the match. He has been busy. I know he has a lot of time off the paddy, but since he's been back on, he, he's, he's been very, very good, and he was very good in that first bit of a... That, um, now, is this his final run? Is he retiring after this game? Who's that? Chinny. Chinny. No, there's rumours of it. His, his lovely wife, Kira, has been telling him for about five years that he needs to retire. But... Um, she hasn't left yet, so he's got a couple more. He's uh, well, look, he's he's a life member after this year. It's ten years this year. So, from what I know of young Been Shane Lee, well, well, that was was what he wanted to do was get a life membership and then retire. So, again, I'd like to see him keep running around. He's a character of the game. You either love him or you hate him. He knows how to get under players' skins, uh, but he's a character of the game. But I think we need to see him staying around for a while. But if he retires, he's had a fantastic career. I've got about 17 right. minutes to go, maybe right. less, because I missed the start. But um, right. North Tamworth now to about the 28. Converge successful nil. by number 12. Jake McManus takes the score to North Tamworth 28. Good single nil. 14 minutes to full time. Gone short. Good chase here. They might get this back. And they will. Jordan Sharp dives on the ball. 40 metres out from the Bears line. We're going to see Cootie on the attack. Simple dummy half run there. Oh, nothing too exciting yet. They've just taken oh, a nice offload there from the front row. So he's wrapped up pretty quick. Two pretty simple runs here. Now they're going to go for their third. They've got to throw. Oh, good fend there. They've got to throw something at him now and tackle three. It was, uh, I think it was Alec Cocking that Chrissy Vidler pushed out of the way. Oh, okay. Uh, Chris is not happy. He's got, he's got ten in the bin now. Now he's got time now. It's a bit Watch. silly from Chris. He's had a good game. He's had a fantastic. I'm not sure what happened there because Chinny's holding his neck. Chris yeah. is holding his neck. Bit of push and shove in to play the ball. Penalty. Now someone in the bin. So I'm not. Not sure what happened in that play, the, in that tackle, but uh, certainly something because it upset set the big fella, didn't it? Yeah, he doesn't He's normally react like he, that. Too no, often, he anyway. had the had the ball in hand. So, uh, but again, yeah, it's another penalty with the ball in hand that they probably couldn't afford to give away. But anyway, we got time back on. I've got about 15 minutes to go, but I think I missed the start somewhere. Oh, that was, uh, wasn't looking, there, here goes Shane Lee Wadwell again, oh, a little bit oh. of a swinging arm there from Geordie, yeah. here they go, yeah. Blanche makes it into the open field, takes on the fullback and beats him, hand in the air, victory, what a great run. The 
we'll let, we'll let the crowd settle down. Good couple of offloads there. Good couple of little offloads there. Good play by Scotty Blanche when he got in open play. Oh, look, he certainly, he put the foot down there and he just streaked away, didn't he? Well, he, he held the fullback up nicely, didn't he? You know, it was, yeah, a, it was he a good did. play. And, and um, the Bears are taking a big lead. And this is, I guess, what we're all worried about coming into today's game. Uh, Gun, uh, sorry, Katingle have been courageous up until about 10 minutes after half time. Not to say they're not courageous now, but North just getting the better of them and putting points on the board. This will be, uh, you'd imagine that Jake McManus will put this over and take it to 34 nil. I think it'll be. Uh, did Mr. Blanche ask him to leave? Jake McManus converts Scott Blanche, the captain coach, has scored two tries in the grand final. Sam Taylor's limping even worse now, but uh, I'd imagine that Sammy will try and finish the game out. That might have got Scott Blanche the man of the match. Well, he's coming home strong. Now, gentlemen, we've all... We've oh, I, think, I think Shane Lee Wadwell, Nick Dobson. Um, I won't say... Second try to Scott Blanche, number six. They've all been very, very strong. Oh, look, I think... Um, if you're asking me, mate, I think Chinny's probably very, very close to man of the match. And um, if it wasn't Chinny, I'd probably have my money on Chris Hunt. I think Chris Hunt's had a big game from the wing. Him and Moods out on that edge. Um, Scott's had a couple of really, really good touches, but classy. They're very classy, and, and that's the kind of player he is. Um, but I think um, Chinny's probably set the platform in the middle, so. It's probably his day, I'd reckon. Yeah, I think Chinny, Chinny's earned. And I think he's had a fantastic game. He's Backs it up with another off play there. Oh, great the pass, Kieran. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Chrissy Hunt again. He's, he's been very, very strong all day on the wing. But um, well, you could probably name half the North Timber side. It's funny, those two boys over on the left edge for Norse seem like they've had... Uh, had oh. Seem like they've had a big day. Um, and uh, when you look at it, the other, the two boys on the other edge, I can't even remember them touching the ball much. So. Yeah, look, you know, for, for Cootie, you know, I think Chris Vidler's been outstanding. Benny Williams has been outstanding. I thought Zachy Hatch has been very, very strong. Um, Geordie and, and, and uh, Sammy Taylor taking injuries into the game of tried hard. Kyle, Kyle's been in and out of the game, but again, he's been very strong with what he's done. We've gone the short kick off again. I think with Cootie, from Jack um, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a weapon like Kyle sit out in the centres, to be honest, like be, coming from an outside back, you need your you need your halves to be a little bit braver and set him up a bit, like go to the line. And I don't think he's got any quality ball today. And um, yeah, they're gonna try and get him into the game. Good tackle, Geordie Sharp. Good solid under the ribs, driving back tackle. That's um. Now Shane Lee Wadwell has another hitter, goes short to Josh, back in behind the right. Josh offloads to Richard Clegg, standing in the tackle again. Geordie Sharp comes in to help his Benny Williams and Jack Anderson in the tackle. It's uh, all tangled up again, legs and everything. Careful there, legs. There you go, Chinny out to Kieran Fisher, out to Scott Blance. He'll go to Jake McManus, run around, kind of Chris Hunt again. Good solid run from Chrissy Hunt. Him and Moods look like they're doing a bit of rotating on that wing centre spot. Mitch Sheridan, the dummy half. Benny Jarvis, bustling run. Is that an intercept from Cutie? No, sorry, I couldn't quite see. Good tackle by Jack Anderson. Oh, sorry, Jack. Rums, we've got, he's got himself caught at marker. Probably not ideal for a fullback. He comes out the back to Blanche, out to Kieran, and a knock on. Good pressure from Cameron McDonald. Yeah. Good pressure from Cameron McDonald. Yeah, I'm not sure why he was looking at taking his jumper off then, but 
He was uh, cutie. Trying to take his jumper off, but no, there was a uh, good pressure from Cameron. Got out on Scotty Blanche. Good defensive, yeah. good defensive set by Cutie, and they've just made a simple mistake, and they're going to turn it over on tackle one. So very unfortunate there. Ball just got tangled up in Jordan Sharp's legs. As we hear the North supporters go wild underneath. Riley Taylor's trying to get in a change deal. I think Chinny might have got away with a sneaky little one there on Paul Zaki. Maybe, uh, when it's not your day, it's not your day, is it? No. Nah. Even little things go wrong. Oh, we've got a differential penalty here. Something's been said in, in the scrum to the referee, perhaps. Something Obviously, something was said to Brownie by someone. He's, uh, he's not happy, James. Uh, I've got about nine and a half minutes to go, probably under less. Shane Lee Wadwell will uh, take the hit up, has an offload out to Ryan Ingram, he gets it off to Josh Moodle, then out to Benny Jarvis. Footwork by Jake McManus, but good tackle by Will Saunders. And Mitch Sheridan comes in a dummy half, Benny Jarvis will take drive back into the middle. Good low tackle, Zach Hatch over the top, Cameron McDonald. About eight metres from the uh, Katingle try line, Chinny as uh, one of his customary little jinky runs. Good tackle by Jack Rumsby and Liam Hatch. Ryan Ingram out the back to Kieran Fisher. Turns back no, dummied inside, went nowhere. Good tackle again by Cameron McDonald and Liam Hatch. Getting through a load of work in the last few minutes. All tied up again there. Shane Lee Wadwell goes for a drive himself. <laughs> Well, we were talking about Shane Lee being man of the match. That may have confirmed it. That's a great jinking run. On the cake. Probably not, not a more deserving player than than Chinny to score a try in the grand final. He has he is a big man, but he moves well sideways, and he he barely got a hand touched on him then. What's uh, got a bit of a discussion here between two uh, two players from opposing teams, but they've settled that down and walked yeah. back to their mark. Like, uh, I think there's somebody saying something they yeah. probably shouldn't be. Yeah, Cootie, you just got to keep their heads here. It, it's hard when you're down by this much. We've we've all been there, you know. You, you <laughs> it's just pride yes. you're fighting for. You got to just, you just got to keep it's, your uh, head. It looks like James Brown's just told Dean Irvine to go back to the bench. It's, um, for me, I think Shane Lee Wadwell's my man of the match. You want picking one? I think uh, he's been very good. He was good in that. that Early period, but he's been exceptional since he's come back on. Had, uh, well, we have got to agree to, there, Michael. He's run through the middle of the ruck, and even his offloads have been fantastic. Number 10, Shane Modwell, very successful by number 12, Jake McManus. It's the score to North Tamworth. Right, so North Tamworth now, I think that uh, jumps it out to 40-0 to in the 2019 grand final. Sam Taylor goes for another short kickoff. Keep our eyes on the football. Kieran Fisher takes it on the 40-metre line. Sorry, on the 30-metre line. And uh, now we've got tackled 40 metres from uh, their own try line, North Tamworth. Shane Lee Wadwell gets the ball, a bit of a scrappy pass, ball bounces around. Jake McManus has picked up, uh, sets his sight for the uh, for the try line. Good solid tackle by Kyle Cochran. It's a little bit of hot potato footy now. And uh, here they go again, North Tamworth. I'm not sure who. Uh, it's just hit the ground and bounced out there. Then. It's, um, I think uh, Chrissy was a little bit late on the ball on that one. But, um, well, Michael, we've had some good games today, haven't we? Yeah. We started with you and I here for the girls' league tag, and the guy sitting next to me here, Luke Taylor, was the unfortunately the losing coach, but he should be proud of the way the girls played. We started off with a uh, Golden Times thriller. Yeah, like I said to Tubby earlier, you know, that side's only lost one game in two years, and he took them to extra time in the grand final, so you've got to be very proud of that effort. I'm very, very proud of him. Yeah, and the under 18s, was, it wasn't a bad game either. It was, um, and, and footy reserve grade was an exciting game. Reserve this game, grade went down to the wire too, didn't it? Only I know, one try in it. Sorry, Jeffrey, I know this game's jumped out to 40-0, but I think Cootie's been better than what that score suggests. It's just North Tamworth have capitalised on all the opportunities they've got. Oh, I think you're right there, Michael. They just showed their class in the end. 
Kuti went with them for a long period of time, but uh, just the amount of quality players that the Bears have got, it's just so hard to hold back. You know, if you contain one, you look up and there's someone else ready to take their spot and do something special. I think we need to put into perspective a little bit that remember that Kuti got elevated from second division into first division last year. Uh, last year's minor premiers. They've gone on now to make a grand final, so still a great effort and at different stages, you know, you know, they're probably one side that's pushed north at different stages of the year. So, you know, they've still got. I know the, you know, the score line certainly won't be what they wanted, but they've been good. Look, I think they've run out of a little, run out of a little bit of gas in the second half. Obviously, def- the amount of defence they done in the first half, and it was a credit to them. They defended quite well in that first half, keeping it at twelve nil. Um, but I think, I think what it comes back to is a little bit of the Katinga's game management in the first half when they had the breeze. The kicking game was, I suppose you'd say it was horrible. Yeah, um, look, all it took that. them 60 minutes to have a good kick, yeah. you know. It wasn't about, they got to plenty of the kicks, they completed their sets, they got the kicks, they, but the, just, the kicks just, yeah. you know, they were terrible when they had that big breeze behind them. The kicks well, yeah. I just think all, right that, ones. All, all that defence in the first half was, was told here in the second half, maybe. Yeah. They got one turn over off a kick in the first half, and I just think they needed to go back to the well. They just didn't do it enough. Here's a crossfield kick for the winger. He's going to score. Willie Saunders. Uh, well done, Willie Saunders. Nice Grand kick. final try. Nice kick by Sam Taylor. Yeah, try's been awarded. Good reward. You know, it's nice to see them get on the board, so Absolutely. it's not a lot loss. But um, you know, it was a very, very good kick from, from Sammy Taylor across field. Good catch from Willie, uh, Willie Saunders. Uh, his, his younger brother Andy's here today watching, so he'll be happy. I was talking to Andy earlier. He, he yeah, sides right. now out of the, uh, the semi final. So no, good on you, Will. He's, uh, he's deserved that. Uh, as I said, playing not in a position that he's not quite used to, but he was in the right That's spot there to pick up on a really nice kick. I didn't see who did the kick, but it was spot on. Well, North Timbers are starting to shake hands on the sideline, so I reckon uh, my three minutes to go is probably less than that. Okay. Less than a minute to go to a full time. So this will be six in a row for the Bears? Six in a row, and this should be, from my knowledge, will be a Clayton's Cup. Yeah, that's a massive Clayton's Cup. Best team in country, New South Wales. Yeah, the only undefeated side uh, at this moment is uh, other than North Tamworth is going, but because they've only got four team competition, they are not deemed eligible to win a Clayton's Cup. So okay. From my knowledge, I could be wrong, so please don't quote me on it. But um, I, I think I'm fairly confident in my knowledge on that. So it's good, uh, good reward for the QD side. They have tried hard, and at different stages they've been very, very good today. But I think that first half has, has took a lot of gas out of them. Big deep kick from uh, Jake McManus, caught on the 10 metre line. Chris Vidler, and probably what will be one of the last charges of the game, runs past Jake McManus. Sorry, uh, there goes the siren. That is full time. Well done to uh, both teams. A uh, bit of a runaway. Okay, guys, that's uh, that's full time. Uh, before we uh, before we go and, and talk about, we'll just thank our sponsors quickly so we don't forget them. Head on over to the presentation area. We'll hand over to Ray for the final. Uh, just having a look at James Cooper and Chrissy Ridley here at the moment. Chris is on his haunches and unconsolable at the moment. So you can see just there how much the game meant to him. Pretty clean, please. I dare say he tried his heart out. Yeah, I dare say that might be his retirement game, and I, I can understand at the moment he's uh, a little bit upset. So, well done, Chrissy Vidler, if it is your retirement game, mate. Thanks from Group 4. You, you've been a, a great stalwart of the game, and everybody's loved watching and enjoying your play of football, mate. So, uh, unfortunately, you didn't get to go out the way you wanted, but mate, hold your head high. You've been very, very good for Group 4 Rugby League, so thank you for your time. Um, back to our sponsors, Tui's. Uh, Wayne Cabin Financial and Insurance Group and today's game sponsors in uh, the Bland family and AMPS thank you much uh, men of the match guys, who's, uh, who's your picks? Yeah, look I, I can't go past Chinny, I think he's just dominant through the middle, offloaded at will just too strong and scored that nice try near the post near the end. Yeah look I'll, I'll be I'll be surprised if it's not Chinny I think especially his, his second 20 minutes um, was just absolutely fantastic but well, I'm not sure, because everybody else from North Tamworth probably contributed fairly well. And 
Oh, look, it's a nice moment here. I think a lot of the boys, Chini and Josh, Vids, they're, they're all the same age and come through a lot of the junior reps together. Played a lot of and Josh and Chini. Uh, jo Josh and Vids played in uh, Aberdeen together and just having a nice moment there, the boys. No, Looks I think uh, it'd have to be Chini, I would say. Um, and second on the list, I would go with... Uh, those boys out on that edge, Scotty, Scotty Blanche or Chrissy Hunt or, or Andrew Moody, they were all good out that side. So, uh, but I think Chinny probably got through a bit more work in the middle and, uh, yeah, I think it'd have to go to him. Yeah, look, I'd be surprised if it's not him. But um, any final thoughts? What was the double? Uh, <laughs> two, uh, two for the away. And two for home. I don't know, for the away, Cootie, Willie Saunders. Willie Saunders. It'd be two and two. Who scored for you? Chris Hunt. Yeah, two and two. Well, there you go, two and two. There we go. Yeah. All Thought, right, thanks. Final thoughts. Great year by North Town with Dominant all year. Yeah, look uh, at that. Congratulations yeah. to Cootie. Big day for them and the club. Two teams in the grand final. Put up a strong effort. Uh, love footy. Great it's, day. Um, yeah, we, we can't take away from North Town with the year they've had. Um, we had to... To get six in a row is a big effort, and, and to get the six one uh, undefeated and should be the Clayton's Cup. So well done to them. Six in a row is a great effort. I think what um, the last fifteen years they've been in fifteen grand finals. It's a fit. Oh, no, one ten anyway. They've been in a few. Anyway, one we'll ten. leave you with that. We're babbling a little bit now, but thanks everybody, and hopefully our commentary wasn't too boring or too terrible. We we tried our best, and and thank you, and we'll. Uh, hopefully do it all again next year and we might even have a bit of a prize and have a, a, a some uh, raffle out maybe or, or win a, a commentary session in the box with the boys next year we'll see how we go but thanks everybody thanks jeff Rowe. Thank thanks you. Luke. Get both sides over for the presentation. Norris, if you could make your way over to the presentation area, please. Plenty of time for photos. Guys, just make your way over to the presentation area, please. Thank you, Wayne, for the please. Fantastic. Plenty of time for some photos.
firstly, uh, thank you to all participants and all, everyone this afternoon that's come to support uh, Group 4 Rugby League. Big thank you to our sponsors, Tui's. Um, just get their tinkle, run us up, uh, Captain Jordan Sharp, come up and say a few words to thank his teammates for the year. Jordan. This region now shares a, a partnership with that uh, NRL club. Uh, Craig's here today, so twofold uh, with the uh, Man of the Match award. It also includes a uh, prize to attend a uh, corporate package at uh, a Bulldogs home game next year. So the winner of that is uh, number 10, Shane Rodman. <laughs>
Amit Sir. Lucy Han. Richard Clegg. Andrew Moody. Jeremy Young. Kieran Fisher. Alec Coffey. Ryan Ingram. Shane Rodwell. Josh Smeadle. Saka. Jacob Menace. Nick Dobson. Father Tor. James Cooper. Oh, that's not connected to the board. Froggy Wood. Benny Jarvis. Jack Patterson. Boogie Fisher. Zach Nigro. Rich Ingram. Spitter. Four boys. Ah. <laughs> Shane Mod. Penny Allen. The cup. Nice